What's up? What you got for me? Hey, how's it going? Okay, first of all, I've only seen a couple of your videos. Sure. I'm super new to all this. Okay. Uh, I oh sorry. Hmm? Oh yeah. So I've watched a couple of your videos. I'm I'm super down with everything you've said so far and everything I've read. I haven't watched the initial debate yet because okay. it's super long. I haven't had the chance. But I read the <laughs> I read the manifesto. Uh, I don't agree with any of it. But I yeah. watched a little of the Scrub Kings. Um, uh stream because he's streaming at six i think mm -hmm. or, or right now yeah um it just seems like he i think he agrees with you on the issues but has like solutions that are based around what a young cis person or a cis dude might think would be good solutions like okay. i only saw the little bit he was talking about like comp like men need compliments and therefore people should give compliments personally like I, I i identify as like as close to not being cis you can be while still being cis uh okay. and so like for sure yeah be, being Just a brown passing dude i think sucks. is the term that people use you know you might not necessarily yeah. be cis but you know you pass it for most to most people the, the experience you're going to have with most of the world is being cis is that, is that yeah accurate? i don't know I think so. I think I, I think I'm comfortable being cis, but I also don't like being cis. That's kind of how I yeah. identify. <laughs> oh, yeah. It sounds a little non-binary, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I'm into it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like, I, I don't know. Like, again, uh, I think that like the the mischaracterization of everything I've said has been so blatant and obvious over the last couple days that it's actually laughable. Like, people say like they won't even get the basic thing. Like, they accuse me of calling him an incel. I didn't fucking call him an incel. Um, at least not in the beginning, not, at least not at the point that they said they did. I might have at the end of the conversation once we got really heated, but I definitely didn't at the, at earlier on. And then also I didn't title the video anything about mandatory girlfriends. It was literally about mandatory compliments. I also didn't even in the title, uh, even in the joke title, uh, I didn't even uh, say that he said that. Um, so I don't know. It's just been a whole pile of lies and no one is actually willing to engage on the issue on any of the issues that were discussed and case in point was the last person who just came on who wanted to try and accuse me of like some id poll gotcha when it's like do you really think you have any evidence other like that i was being racist other than just your feeling about the conversation and they had nothing oh well, the vod is evidence okay well the vod is evidence of you being racist there you go like it's just a nonsense conversation yeah 100 percent. and i i think like you you've discussed this before i think and a lot of people do it's this whole weird culture of like we're just gonna throw down and and fight about things it's like why uh, like i don't think the scrub king should have released a manifesto i don't think destiny should have released different manifestos either um yeah i i think it's really really shitty well, in and, general and for the record like, like just so that we are all so just so that we're like really clear on this like i have uh disagreed with destiny and the scrub king I thought some of the Scrub King's arguments were bad, but even in the follow-up to the debate, keep in mind this blew up like a day and a half after – or two days after the actual debate happened. Um, after the original debate, I'm like, guys, I don't think like the Scrub King is a bad person. I literally did a whole segment talking about how I like the Scrub King. I've made content with the Scrub King in the past before. We've been on panels together. I don't think he's a bad person. I just disagree with his take, but they, it's not enough. You have to fucking – you have to fucking line up with them or they will go on this shit. And like it is. It is unique to DGG. Um, I've never had this experience with any other content creator. None. Only Destiny. I've, I've, I've fucking gotten mad at Nazis with, with infuriated. Con Actually, there's one other con content creator I've had a similar cre uh, experience with, and that was Ariel Scarcella. Ariel Scarcella is the only other person whose community has just hate bombed all my videos. So. And they're a huge transphobe, right? Like, yeah, massive yeah, turf transphobe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's those, those are the two people. Like there is literally there have been like twenty. Um, hate threads on me and one thread that was posted on dgg that was mildly in support of me they they downvoted to hell the echo chamber is unbelievable and people just deny it they just deny it and it's it's like it's like maddening i'm like you you all are just so not connected to reality you won't even look at the evidence even there destiny had me on last night and i had multiple people um, who like multiple people tell me they didn't think destiny was in bad faith last night when he had me on invited me onto his show to scream over me for eight minutes and then tell his following that i am a harm and a danger an active threat or sorry what do you say i am actively harming trans people i am actively harming women i am actively harming every left sjw cause you can imagine what a garbage piece of shit disgusting bad faith human being and they will say that destiny was being bad faith out of that interaction or, I mean, uh, good faith. That yeah, good that, faith. I, yeah, that he was the good faith actor in that. It is delusion. 
it's delusion is what it is. Yeah. yeah, and if this is what online politics is, it's like this is why I, I do I do a little bit of sorry. In, go ahead. In person organizing, yeah, yeah, I do a lot of in person organizing, and like mm. I've been trying to do more of this stuff for just because like uh, I, I do have a lot of shit to say mm. <laughs> generally. So I figured streaming and YouTube might be a good spot to do it. But it it's so much easier to just do in not easier, but it it's actually easier to just be online and do the online work aside from the many issues with the online stuff mm. that come with it, like the harassment and the the Twitter and all that. But yeah. in general, it's such a more comfortable environment to just like talk and deal with your issues in person instead of this like hyper. And this, this also is a patriarchy thing, right? Mm. People get hyper, hyper toxic masculine on the internet to prove their, their bro points. And it, it's not needed. We could just have some conversations about issues we disagree with Heck and yeah. not get all fucked up about fighting each other all the time yeah, about I, everything. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. And here's the thing. Like, um, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I popped up to say I disagree at the beginning there, but the only thing I, I want to just make clear, I do have something to say about that, which is that I don't think that this is like, this characterizes most of online politics. I've been in on, I've been in the Twitch and online politics sphere for a year now. I've streamed like almost like 800 hours in the year of 2020 in the politics community and 90% of my engagements have been super positive and the ones that haven't have been exclusively with two super personality cult factions of the internet tanky Twitter and DGG those are the two groups where it becomes like this where it becomes a, a battle of personalities where there's just fucking like uh, uh, harassment on all sides, a fuckload of transphobia, and trust me, my mods have my mods can tell you. Any one of member of my mods team can tell you just how much disgusting transphobia and hate comes in only after we engage with DGG. I had an argument against Redneck, who is a hyper hyper transphobe, and his community who backs him up is like a bunch of proud boys. They didn't even harass me as bad as this. It's actually absurd, and so. I think that there that online politics has the potential to be a really fucking cool place with good faith engagements, but there are some people who really aren't engaging. And it's interesting that the people who have the most influence over the narrative use it exclusively to um, wash their hands of the things that they do. Destiny spends all of his time online fucking workshopping his image and selling himself as the most rational person who's ever existed meanwhile anybody disagrees with him and he goes fucking off the handle do you know how many people who used to be fans of him who then disagree with him once who now his entire community hates you know i don't even have great positive feelings about book smarts for example but that's book smarts book smarts was a big dgg -er, and then he disagreed with destiny and now they fucking hate his guts oh book smarts fell out too yeah. that's so funny damn oh yeah, and I think another thing that I noticed is I think this is a misinterpretation of intersectionality. Like, even with the last guy, like, he, mm -hmm. or the last individual, uh, sorry if I'm misgendering uh, synth, sorry for in that. Um, uh, I, 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 I think, yeah. like, yeah. I know it said any and all, but just in case. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, like, I, it, the idea, well, the only thing I could get out of this idea of, like, you being racist is like you were talking to a black man as a white person mm -hmm. or like as a white passing person but like that's a real misunderstanding of intersectionality yeah. like people yeah. with different identities can talk and like you said there's inherent uh, uh racism sexism transphobia that we all have yeah uh, but like you can work to oh, at least not bring those uh biases into your your conversations and like Again, I need to go back and watch. This only happened a day and a half ago, so I didn't get to watch the actual debate. But I, I, there's nuance and there's conversations that can be had. You can call out somebody and it not be uh, based on their race or sex or gender. Like intersectionality, the whole point of it is to see the nuance but not, uh, not engage in those behaviors. And people work on that. And I, it sounds like you've done a lot of work to try and avoid those kinds of behaviors. I do a fuckload as, of work. And, and, and yeah. I appreciate somebody acknowledging that a little bit because I put a fuckload of work into how I engage with and talk with other people. And um, it's really funny to me that this, is, that this person who came in was def defending destiny over the N-word Andy saga and, what, and wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't, realize, wouldn't realize that the N-word Andy fucking destiny is the, is, is the fucking guy who's trying to accuse me of being racist for having a conversation in which I disagreed with Describe King. Do you know how many black people Destiny has screamed over? Do you remember, does anybody remember his panel appearance with like, uh. oh my God, like what with Nina and where he was just, oh God, like he does ironic, like ironic edge racism all the time. I didn't do any of that. Not 
even close. So there's no evidence that says that my implicit biases, which I do have, as all people do, including black people in our audience, all people in our racist society have those implicit biases. But there's no evidence of me of it impeding my ability to have a good conversation with the Scrub King. I just disagreed with the Scrub King. Um, I just uh, disagreed with the, the Scrub King and Destiny told his fans that I'm a harm to people. And so now they're all rushing in and finding any justification they can to come to that conclusion. So, yeah. 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 I would love to talk to Destiny, too, just because, like, uh, I, I loved old Destiny and, like, I still love Destiny as a person because of – personally, my opinion on Destiny is, like, Destiny's gone through some fucked up shit and that still it impacts how he engages with folks. Uh, and I hold nuance there, too, but you, there's some stuff that is indefensible, depending on your values and your morals, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm not I'm never going to be like, yeah, strategic, tactical use of the N-word for Vosh or Destiny or any other streamer is mm -hmm. good. I'm not going to defend that. Yeah. I can still hold nuance for those folks, and I think people should. But that doesn't mean, like, I, I watched that three-minute video of him, are you mad? Like, that wasn't – that's not the Destiny that I, I've seen, and I don't know where that comes from. And uh, – I wish he wouldn't do those kinds of things. I, yeah, he has whatever right to do whatever he wants. But uh, well, I know also, did you defend that anymore, uh, did you know like, like did you know that like an hour prior to that something I didn't see? Um, Destiny told his audience that he was like he just said I am going to engage in bad faith, and still they will say that he is in good faith, even though he explicitly mm -hmm. said he explicitly said yeah I don't think there's any reason why I should engage in good faith with Demon Mama. If I ever have her on again, I'm going to scream over her and insult her to her face. He said no, that. that sucks. Yeah, so I, I just think that. I think Destiny has lost his touch. I don't think he knows what made like I think he's lost sight of what made him a, a like popular online, and I think it's gonna come back to bite him. And also, I think it already has because he's burned bridges with damn near every creator in the space, and he's being surpassed by those creators. So yeah, yeah. true. Yep. But um, yeah. I mean, I do think there were some like I think there were some areas. Um, of the conversation where, like, I like I think I was spicy, but I don't think I was any more spicy than the Scrub King. I think people could, if people wanted to, I think it would be very easy for people to actually go and have a look at my discussion um, and come up with critiques of the way that I approached it. In fact, um, I think uh, I just, you know, there might be a, a stream in the future in which I do that with Vosh. Um, that'd be great. Um, I would love that. I have taken uh, critique all the time, but I just don't think that's what's happening here. I think what's happening here is a fucking hate mob that wants to convince themselves that I'm the worst person that's ever exist. That's a threat to women and trans people, and I think it's really silly. Absolutely. It's like that's not <laughs> – women and trans people are not worried about a trans person expressing themselves or, or anybody expressing themselves in solidarity with trans folks and, and, and femmes in general. That's not, mm -hmm. that's not what people need to worry about. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I appreciate your clarity on that. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, and again, I don't, I don't actually think, from what I've read so far, that you said anything that uh, is is going to hurt trans folks or or fans or anybody. You you're doing nuance, and I, I think that's really important. Um, and again, a lot of the views you were talking about, it's like, yeah, sure, women and femmes can get co opted and like support patriarchy, quote unquote, mm -hmm. uh, in that they might uh, work in 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 ways that benefit the patriarchy. But that doesn't mean that they're not still oppressed by that patriarchy just because or even positive stereotypes, positive stereotypes are not something that benefit people. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like, yeah, it's like you can point to things that some women and some femmes might benefit from by being co-opted by patriarchy. But that doesn't mean that there's they're not still being co-opted by this like oppressive system. Yeah, it's funny, too, because um, we could have had that conversation. I could have had that conversation with the um I could have had that conversation with the scrub king but he just didn't want to have it like I tried multiple times in going back and looking at him like wait I tried multiple times for us to have the conversation about like okay well are we going to talk about like how um women like certain types of women can can benefit and also uphold the patriarchy 100% do you think like trad wives don't help up uphold <laughs> patriarchy like are are you kidding me like b you think that Abby Shapiro doesn't purposely play into patriarchy because she sees it as a justified system come on this is obvious I talk about this all the time it's just that was not the conversation that Describe King was interested in having and it seemed like throughout the conversation despite my accusations of, of like having a preconceived notion what it seemed like is that he wanted to push everything off onto women and then when asked otherwise he didn't even have he hadn't even done the thinking on whether or not that was the case I don't know this whole thing has become such a goddamn mess and and very few people have actually come to me with like meaningful critiques mostly just calling me a bad faith dangerous person and all that shit so 
Um, did you have any other like critiques you wanted to levy at me or whatever? Because I know Dario wants to get on here too. So I want to give everybody I'll jump a little time to have their. Hundred percent. Thanks yeah. for thanks for having me on for so long. The only thing I'd say that I think is not a criticism of you, but that I think cis men in the crowd who might be watching should hear. It's not up to women and femmes to support cis men just because cis men are feeling sad. We got to do that work ourselves. So if cis men want to create like spaces to support other cis men to help build through all the, the 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 issues of patriarchy that we're dealing with, we can do that. We have the ability to do that. So if you want to build on that, you can talk to me and I'll help. I, I'm a I'm a cis dude who had to work through a ton of crap. I'll help all the you young cis dudes, and maybe you'll realize you're not that cis. But Hey, Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your your engaging in 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 uh, in really good faith, and uh, I appreciate that. Anytime. Work. Yeah. Thanks. One hundred percent. I'll be stopping to you. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Bye. All right. Let's get uh, Dario on. Hello, Dario. Hello, Dario. Can you hear me? I cannot hear you. Here, let me. You have creator you have creator content, yeah. Here, hang on a second. What the fuck? How do you not have the imp roll? Dario, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Dario, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, you didn't have the imp roll. You didn't agree to the rules, Dario. Goodness. Oh really? Yeah, it's okay. It's all good. I understand you you're 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 an anarchist, you don't like rules. I get it. True. You know, anarchy is when there's less rules and the less rule rules there are, um you know, the more anarchy it is, right? Anarchy is when you go into a Discord and you don't read the rules section. Yeah. Uh, d uh, what pronouns do you prefer? Uh, they or he. They or he? Sorry. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. So what can I do for you today? <sighs> do you want to be on video, by the way? I can put you up on video if you want. Sure. We can do that. Okay. You should, be able, to do I you should be able to just click the video button. I gave you content creator role, so you should be able to. Hello. Does this work? Yeah, nice soft lighting. Looks cozy. Thanks. I, yeah. I'm gonna make it even better. You have ro remote controlled lights? Hell yeah. It's been Look a long this. time since we last talked, Dario. Oof. Hey. Oh, you got a little. Now you got yellow and blue. What is uh, this movie poster? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, sick. Um. No, so um, I don't know. Uh, I was a, uh, I was a bit, uh, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm a bit annoyed by like the the whole like drama thing. Um, but you said, hey, if anybody wants to talk in like good faith or whatever, yeah, yeah. Um, then you'd want to. And I Absolutely. thought, well, yeah. Because first I was like, I actually I want to stay out of it. But at the end, I was like, ah, fuck it. Um, if you want to talk, we can like talk a little bit about like the VOD. Sure. Because I managed to watch all of it actually. Okay. Um, cool. And yeah, and I and um, since I'm talking to you, and I'm gonna offer the same to Scrub King as well. Um, I have some points um from like the like the whole discussion in terms of what I think you could have done better. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, if you want to hear that, absolutely, um, and, I would love to hear that. Sure. And obviously, um, just to preempt it, I, I'm not gonna talk much about like what Scrub King did or like how he did. Um, because obviously he's not here. Um, mm -hmm. so it's going to mostly be like feedback to you. Um, sure. So, so there's three major points that I sort of wrote down, um, as I watched it. Uh, I think the first one is sort of, uh, I think that, I think Scrubbing also wrote a little bit about it in his manifesto or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like a granting, like obvious things. And it seemed like. Um, and it's may maybe not something that most people think about, but it's like when somebody asks you something that's like very obvious that like everybody should agree on. Mm -hmm. um, if you sound like you're not willing to grant that as easily or like you sound like very vague when you grant that, it comes off very like bad faith. It's like then it, it's it sets like the tone of the conversation very bad. OK, so like what's um, an example of that? Just just so I was sure. Yeah, I've got some examples. Sure. So um We've gotten one very specific example. Uh, it was like the, like very like very early on, uh, where it was something like, uh, racism has gotten uh, better for black people, uh -huh. and you were like, and you were like, has it? Has it really? Like has it? It's like, I mean, it's very obvious that I mean, I would hope that you know as well. Like, uh, I mean, obviously it's gotten better. Like, but that doesn't mean it's it's good. 
right? I mean, uh, you yeah. would think that like, I mean, it's gotten better than slavery. It's got like, I mean, it's it's a very obvious like thing you you should be able to grant. And maybe you can, if you want, you can make qualifiers, but it didn't seem like like a, I don't know, an important point. Sure. And I mean, other, I think other... it was a matter of when. And uh, if I recall correctly, in that context, it was like in recent. I think he said in like recent decades. And um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like we've ha- we're at like a local low. Like I actually think we've had a bit of a swing back in the last few years under Trump. I think that's an important thing. Uh, yeah. And that was I think if I recall sure. correctly, I could be misremembering, but I'm pretty sure that was the context. So now of course um, if we're talking that... about since slavery, obviously. But like I believe yeah, if I'm, I remember I, I, correctly, I, I, the context was over the last few years. I, I feel like the context uh, or the context that that I w- had the impression at least, and I, I think when if that was like the if that was what you thought, then I would just ask like a clarifying question, sure. um, because then you were talking about different things. The, the, the context that I had the impression was that he was talking about like um, like the uh, women's like uh, oppression or like women's uh, place in society that that had improved like over the past like decades, like maybe like the past 50, 40, 30 years or whatever. Sure. And like drawing an analogy to like black rights as well, because I'm, I hope you would agree that it's better than like maybe probably 50 years ago, right? Oh, it's gotten course. better and Undeniably. then maybe it's gotten, yeah, yeah then absolutely. maybe it's gotten maybe worse like in the past year or two or something. Yeah, I don't I, know. I would say that like in the past four to five years, basically all civil rights have taken a plunge downwards. I think that we're in like a local low. And I would argue that, like, depending on which group you're talking about, some worse than others. Like, I think, for example, and I've talked about this extensively even on other panels, um, like, trans rights were at, like, an all-time high under Obama. Now, they weren't good, but they were at an all-time high. Um, And then Trump came in and literally undid everything that Obama did and added things that didn't even exist before Obama got in. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I do think that the context matters, but I recognize that, like— I don't know. To me, it feels like a charitable person. Like would, it, it would might, yeah, sure. It might have been, and again, like this. Again, I'm only critiquing you. That's so fine. it might have, like, many of these things could probably have been solved with either like clarifications or like quick, uh, or like I guess, um, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But that was like the first one. It's like, uh, and and oftentimes when he would post things that I also thought were obvious, like you wouldn't you wouldn't oppose it, but you would do like the you would say to a certain degree or you would say yeah you know you know the thing things that you do sometimes like it's it's like a rhetorical thing um is it? and <laughs> is it well no i'm, I'm like, uh, like like certain things are like when i say like yeah like sometimes it's just me thinking like is it possible so, like sure i feel like some it might be it might be everything as like every single no thing no I, yeah. it might be like it might be right it might be just sure. something that you do right uh-huh. some way you do when you think it but like i'm telling you like how it came off to me as well uh, to me and maybe to scrub king as well right maybe that's something uh-huh. you should think about For or sure. like how you phrase things absolutely um yeah um, and again, like when I when I make these, I'm I'm just giving feedback. I'm not making accusations, right? Because because it might just be that it's like a it's like a an an optics thing, right? Yeah. That some some people might get an impression and then For sure. people get annoyed or whatever. Um, but that was that was the first thing. The second was uh, the second one was something that annoyed me personally because that's something that happens a lot. I don't know how Scrub King feels about this, mm-hmm. um, but it's like addressing sort of issues very specifically. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like you weren't as keen on doing that specific, like in in at first at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I agree. Like uh, so so in terms of like when you're discussing sort of these issues or like the tweet specifically, mm-hmm. it can be good to add some context or like to sometimes talk about sort of the surrounding material conditions in society and like how people will understand these things or talk about the intersectionality with the, like the patriarchy and how things might fit into a bigger context mm-hmm. but i don't necessarily think you should sort of preempt the conversation with that and i felt like you did that like i i think i was like looking at the volume it was like maybe 45 minutes or something until you actually talked about the tweet um oh, no and we talked about it right at the yeah beginning. something like we talked about it right at the beginning well, yeah we talked about it for like 20 it. minutes right at the beginning yeah Mm, yeah, I'm when not he came sure. on, that, we talked about it right at the beginning. Well, it depends. Maybe, maybe we, might, we might have disagreements on like what it means to like talk about it. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I, that's at least how I felt uh, when, when watching. I, I felt like you would, um, and and like I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, okay. but I don't necessarily think it's is 
it, it comes off because because this is something that would happen to me oftentimes when I would be on a panel or when I would talk to somebody, we would talk about something like very relatively obvious, like like something like this, like a very relatively easy like leftist issue or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then instead of discussing the issue, they would be lecturing me about something that's very obvious that probably everybody knows and we would waste time on that. Okay. And it, it would seem sometimes to me that even though they're not telling me that I don't know these things, but by them spending so much time explaining, I get the feeling that they're trying to portray it as that I don't know these things. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So so like, and, and I think that might have like you might have given off that impression to scrubbing that's at least how i felt is oh. that when you spend so much time talking about sort of the patriarchy or or like the like how women are in society today and stuff like yeah. that it came off as you sort of at least insinuate and i did this like in like a mischievous way or whatever but it came off as like you insinuating that scrubbing and aware of these things or like how women like sort of interact in society or feminism or like these things yeah. and i mean knowing scrub king and like looking at what he was saying and stuff yeah. it seemed pretty obvious that he knew about these things and you could move on to like the crux of the issue well part of part of that section was i wanted to make sure that we were on the same page with certain things like for example i was very meticulous in laying out that he does believe in the patriarchy that he does believe that uh you know women have been systemically oppressed historically in the united states and that a lot of it is still going on so there was a segment in which i was sort of meticulously going through that because i wanted to very clearly and i, I and if you if you go and watch the very beginning of it you'll notice that at the very beginning we come in and we start talking about the meme right away and i say yeah my my chat had various mixed feelings it looks like people on twitter have really really mixed feelings about it um and then i said um i think maybe it's just a sem semantic thing but if you don't mind do you mind if we like like dig in a little bit and try to figure out what some of the underlying stuff so that was my actual goal in going into it was trying to address some of the assumptions that may be going into a tweet like that and i did literally say that's what i wanted to do with the conversation and he seemed okay with it for a while but then it seemed like it started to get like a little defensive and dunky and then i and yeah and then it got heated later on but that happens you know that happens i don't think like I don't feel like I was uh, intentionally lecturing him at all. Maybe it came off as that, but I think the entire point of that, of me laying that out, was so that we could be clear that we agreed on some basic pre preconceptions. And I don't generally sure. like to assume with people that I haven't like had extensive debates with what some of their beliefs are. So I don't know. It's very possible he doesn't. Sure. Like, yeah, he doesn't believe in that. Like I don't know what his views are on patriarchy. I wanted to so, make sure so we this... had similar views. So this is um and, and this might just be like a like how you do things mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh sure. but but I think for the future or maybe when you're I don't know, when you're discussing with certain people, mm -hmm. I, I think it's better to assume that they know and if something comes up that sort of gives you the impression that they don't or that you have a disagreement, then you could like talk about and go into depth and be like, Oh, well, maybe uh, if if he talks about like oh well women uh, are like the predominant like if he if we went into like uh, oh women have all the power in society then you could be like oh well don't you believe in like the patriarchy and you, yeah. you know well, what I mean I, I do feel like there were certain parts where that happened but the timeline the exact timeline I will acknowledge that uh, perhaps uh, I was uh, too willing to lay out my positions in order for us to equal like to agree on them and I should have assumed like a basic as a basic gesture that he was a feminist or whatever but i don't know to me that feels like um that feels like kind of like a um like an inter lefty slight um in that like it's like i don't know i mean you know sure i mean the, the, the i would say that depends on like the people i mean you talking to the scrub king right before uh, right uh, on yeah but not on, fe not on feminism we've just talked about other things yeah sure Right. Sure. We've had disagreements in the past. Like I just I don't recall everything he believes in. And like the, the fact of the matter is, like there are people who don't believe in patriarchy. Like there's a lot well, I engage with sure. a lot of those. I just I don't feel like I was being now I've been accused but of, I, again, I, I, I recognize you're not doing this. Like I recognize you're not doing this. I know you're not accusing me of being in bad faith. What I'm just trying to say is like I, I'm trying to clear to you that I was not doing that in bad faith. It wasn't because I like assumed that he was X thing or not. I just wanted to make sure we were in agreement over certain things as we went on in the conversation. And I do feel yeah. like that was kind of important later on because um, there were certain arguments that uh, were made where I feel like uh, 
he wasn't acknowledging the things that he agreed to previously. But anyway, regardless. Can you do you have an example on, on that? Yeah, I'm just uh, curious. Yeah, an example for me is um like uh ex- recognizing that like um here here's a great example and this is one that i know he's gonna get mad about he doesn't agree with me on this we don't agree on this whatever but this is my perspective um and if you want me to look it up okay so here's an example if you conclude that the patriarchy exists and you and you conclude that uh the patriarchy existing means that women have lived in a societally disadvantaged position as a class not necessarily as every individual but as a class then it seems to me to um to follow that you should be able to pretty easily recognize that most of the problem definitionally cannot lean on women. And he said in multiple cases that that was the case, that this is on women mostly. And then we had a back and forth about whether it was blame or not. I feel like that was very much semantics. But regardless, if we're talking about from the perspective of a solution of how we solve it, his, his outlook seemed to very much fly in the face of the conclusion that women have been disadvantaged and therefore and yet it seems odd to me that women would then have a lar- a a a um what's the right word a disproportionately large amount of responsibility in solving the problems that they've been put under do you see what i mean i see what you mean but it's very interesting because that's not the impression i got at all when listening well, to the conversation fine. Well, I mean that's fine. Um, yeah, but, but I mean, like. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying. I'm just. Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I think that it's interesting, sort of how we can have we can come from that conversation to have two fundamental, like different um, understandings on like some of the things that happened, right? Because because to me, uh-huh. like having watched that, I, I felt like, like honestly, like watching that entire thing. How long was it? like two, two hours, hours or something? I know it was really long. Yeah. And it and it felt like to me it felt like during that entire discussion. I was having a really hard time actually understanding what you disagreed on. Uh, I, just me like, too. like as a, yeah, I, but, I, but that's I, the issue, right? But, and no, I, and but I, think, I tried I think, though. That's the thing. This is now, look, now we're getting off onto like analyzing the actual thing, but for two sure. hours, I tried my best to try and understand what his position were at certain points. And there were points where I would ask a clarifying question and he would mock me and go for a dunk. And that didn't happen the other way around. Like one of the best examples. I, I one of the best examples was when he blew up over like this like threat versus aggressor when i was literally asking for clarification on how it actually connected to what we were talking about and he was spinning around a chair going oh my god you really just can't think can you and like that's an example of a part where i was literally asking for clarification of what he was trying to say and then he took that as like a dunk on me so and there's right now there's people in chat who are saying they felt that the the scrub king's position was unclear as well and i felt that as well Well, and i tried to get clarity and i couldn't get it and that's why i started to get annoyed and i also got annoyed at a couple of other previous parts but again um there was a recurring yeah i I mean i mean obvious i mean obviously it's gonna be i mean uh, you know this like pretty like obviously people in your chat and in your community are gonna agree with you and people in, in his chat and like his community or whatever are going to agree with him but you don't I have mean, to that's, agree that's with me really... to feel that to feel that this was unclear like that's not a matter of agreement well, like, I, like i sh- thought it was unclear too uh, i mean like do you think sure. people are just gonna say like it was like i don't know <sighs> like i don't know I mean, this it, is the it, thing the charitability and and in this conversation like it, it is a little frustrating but uh, of course part okay. of this is because of the destiny effect like such a huge amount of people have come in that are, are primed to agree with the scrub king because he's a member of dgg and all that that, that there, there's going to be a charity imbalance but there was no ch- charitability and there has been no charitability even by destiny given to me that perhaps maybe he wasn't communicating his point all that well either like i do agree that we got lost well, pretty no. hard at that part but i don't think that was all on me no 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 i mean I, I i don't think it was all on you but i definitely think that you like from my perspective i think that you played a big part in that like and like at least at the very least just as big as him right and 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 one of the things that i think sort of um and this is not like again this is not me like say, telling you how to do things because obviously like what you're doing is working right and yeah. and like like For yeah the most I mean, part minus a few engagements yeah sure um but but like at least at least for me like just trying to figure out like what you're talking about and like how you're discussing these things Mm -hmm. it was very hard to follow because it felt like felt like there was no real structure to to the conversation and i think it would be way better if you sort of laid out your points or your specific disagreements and like a 
like okay this is like the one point that i disagree with this is the second point and this is the third point just like the three best points mm -hmm. and you just go over those because it felt like the discussion was going like in all directions all the time and like suddenly we're talking about racism and yeah. and bringing in like all these sure. things and it's just like well, i i would i would say i agree with you on that one and i will say and this is my personal opinion and you can disagree with this if you want to but i felt like the scrub king pivoted a lot I felt like he tried to jump to different issues sure. multiple times, and that contributed to why it was so out of control. When basically what all that I wanted to do in that conversation was try to um, get the Scrub King to understand why there are a lot of people that would walk away from that meme feeling like it was um, not communicating what he said that he thought it was. And there were a lot of people. I was not – like I'm not the uh, – like the old reason why I asked well, him – I mean there is always – There was a sure, but there's always going to be a – Shit, there's always going to be a lot of people who think a lot of things, right? Well, of that's course. not really. See, but like I'm not a... saying there's like, like, like. I, what does that mean? That's like kind of a, a equivocation. No, right? no, but I'm, I, yeah, but I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm if, saying like. There... If a lot of people are walking away from a meme with one interpretation, and and including myself, and I have a reasoned reason for why I come away with that, and I try to make it clear to someone, and they um, don't take that, I mean, there's going to be a disagreement. You know, I mean, that's just the sure. nature of disagreement, right? But I just don't think I think like I've been fran since then since then sure, by, but I, well well since then by Discrub King by Destiny and by a lot of other people I have been framed as like uh, I've been described as like again doing active harm being extremely bad faith and I don't think that's an accurate representation of what happened like I do think there were mistakes made in my communication absolutely I mean I literally had Vosh okay, but, but, but yeah 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 but I'm again what I'm what I'm saying what I'm saying is that I I'm not here to discuss like what they did sure. or like how they handle it I'm here to discuss specific, like specifically talk about like how I think you handle it okay. and how I think you can improve and I think even if you feel um even if you personally feel the other person is being uncharitable or the other person is jumping around like I think it's your job as like a communicator mm -hmm. even if they're being uncharitable or they're you feel like they're being uncharitable or bad faith or whatever that you should go above and beyond to sort of like reel it back and like stay on focus. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I will say, I think I did that for the most, for the first half of the conversation, but I did stop towards the end because I was running out of patience, but yes, uh, I agree with you. And I think that's a fair critique and I will be doing better in the future to do my best. Although I can't offer that to everyone. I'm not going to give that exact, I'm not going to give an incredible amount of charitability to like, a nazi i just can't that would make every conversation with them imp impossible um but yeah i don't think that that the scrub king is in that position uh and perhaps i gave him uh like a few minutes too short of patience in my opinion but i do agree i do agree that i think that there are ways that i could have avoided the conversation getting derailed um but yeah so uh okay so I this think was actually and, and and this was actually my third point. So okay, I'm glad that you point. sort of thought about no, but that you you went into it yourself, and I'm mm -hmm. glad that you sort of thought about this or yeah. or had some self reflection. I I do feel like as the conversation moved on, it felt like you were losing your patience more and more, yeah. um and and I think it and, and just like from a I guess from an entertainment perspective, it was getting more and more entertaining. Probably like your viewership probably grew because like it was getting heated and people were like you know saying things back and forth and you weren't really sticking to the topic but just from a like i guess from an interest perspective or like interested in the discussion it wasn't like it, it was pretty obvious like what was happening like yeah nobody was being charitable like everything anything was like yeah yeah i mean and i agree with you like again i think that's i think it's fair to say that like the last half of the conversation wasn't particularly charitable um, and I will say, it, I literally said this in the VOD, so I don't really think that, like, I, I feel like people are, uh, people um, will say, like, bad faith or whatever, even when somebody ex openly expresses what they're, what they're feeling and how they're engaging with the situation. But there was a point, there were two separate points in which he completely, he asked me a question and then completely ignored the answer while, like, typing into the microphone. Like, I could hear him going, and I could see, like, him inter interacting with his chat. And to me, that was, like, that was indeed very frustrating. I find that to be like super, uh, super disrespectful. Like when you ask someone a question and for a com for like a complex answer, and I give the complex answer and they don't even listen. And I can I can uh, forgive that a few times, but like it starts to get really like I feel like I'm justified in getting kind of annoyed with that. And then after that, like when I was like, okay, are we gonna do the dunk thing? And then he decided to go for some dunks. And then it's like, okay, all right, 
we're doing this. This is going to be a little blood sportsy then. And I don't know. Like, I don't think I'm, like, way out of left. I, I, this is the one area where I feel like there's been the most uncharitability, which is that if I – it's, like, it's like blood sports for thee but not but, – or for me but not for thee. Like, if, if he wants to, like, be rude and disrespectful but then I decide to do a little bit back, it's like, oh, well, Demon Mom is the bad faith actor. And there's a – I don't know. I know you're not doing that. But this is my experience with the – um with yeah. the the discourse around this and i do i will agree of course like i mean i literally said it in the conversation i've never contested this to any person who's brought this up to me i did get very annoyed in the second half of the conversation for good reason i was I straight up two separate times where i was asked a direct question about a complex issue tried to give an answer and then was completely ignored and had to restate it and then i was told very shortly after that that i'm some like uh, like unthinking dumb fuck because of uh, because oh you, you just literally can't think of it like okay like that's gonna be annoying that's gonna put me into like all right fine i see where this conversation's going and uh like that part is this is probably the one critique i'll push back the most on which is just like i don't know if somebody wants to engage like that with me they're gonna get a little back and they should be able to deal with that it's part of the debate sphere you and i have had that you and i have had spice and we're, we're fine we're able to have a talk but now the scrub king is well, telling me that i should not i should be no platformed and that like i'm like an active harm to trans people and women that's ridiculous uh dude come on that is uh, ridiculous you have to be, be willing to admit that's ridiculous i mean i think a lot of things that are happening around twitch and like around all of this is extremely ridiculous so not... it seems like everybody i'm just i'm just saying it seems like everybody all the time is just looking for escalation it's, it's just like because it seems like from my perspective and again i'm not critiquing you or, or him specifically here but just like generally it seems like on streamer like culture right now it seems like escalation is what people want and it's just like as 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 soon as you possibly like as soon as anybody possibly can it's just like pulling everything up to like level 10 and then you're like oh now we need to de-platform but i didn't do that just... but i didn't do that and they did and destiny did and now the scrub king is i didn't do that when i had i finished my conversation with the scrub king and the first thing i said was oh like i that was kind of some like i felt like i was like ah some of those arguments i felt were kind of insulty but i liked the scrub king and i literally somebody asked me about it the next day before the drama started and i literally you can go watch my vod on my vod i literally I'm like oh, i like the scrub king people like i don't think he's an incel i don't think he's a bad person i just disagree with them on this point and then then destiny and then the next thing that even talked about the entire conversation was destiny freaking out and telling ten thousand people that i'm a, like that i'm a, a harm to them i never did that i never did sure. that escalation yes did i have a conversation with uh, the King? of course but that's not the same thing those are two completely yeah, different actions and i just yeah, and i just, know it feels like you're playing a little uh, bit of an enlightened centrist just a tiny well, bit well well, I I will just reiterate what I said at first, right? I'm here to specifically talk about like what what I think my opinion is on like your performance and like True, how you but, could have done things differently. But end. don't you think it's a little unfair for when you're reviewing my performance to say that like oh well everybody did this when I didn't do that thing? I didn't do the escalation. I just had a conversation with him well, and then it blew up into this. Well, I mean, so different things can be escalating to different degrees, right? Oh, okay. So, so I mean, I mean, I I can grant you like sure. right away. I mean, that's that's not a that's not a hard thing to grant for me. That I think calling for you to be deplatformed or whatever, like those things, I th I think that's silly. Like it's it's fucking it was a fucking drama Twitch debate kind of thing that got heated or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's silly. I've been um, in a hundred of them. Sure, um, but I mean, th this is just like this is just like the entertainment of like the the Twitch thing, right? This, this is what the people want generally. Yeah. Um, but 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 I mean, I, I don't think that's like interesting for me to talk about or address, right? Sure. I'm not I'm not here to address like the the drama part. Fair. I'm just here to address like the the rhetoric or like the discussion part. Yeah. Well, and okay. and I think one 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 thing that people um, that I've seen people react the most. Uh, like the strongest too and and i didn't at first react like i didn't at first get it like understand uh -huh. it this way but i can kind of see where people were coming from sure. once i sort of checked out the beginning more is mm -hmm. that i can sort of like at first i wasn't sure like what people meant um when they when they said that you were calling him an incel or, or things like that uh -huh. um but i can sort of see where they're getting uh, that from when i sort of reviewed it uh, a little bit again i didn't watch the whole thing twice but like the first half i watched twice and it i think it sort of it sort of goes into it or gets into it when you sort of um you you never directly call him like an insult or whatever but yeah but but at least like in the in the 
debate or whatever. Uh -huh. um, but but like but the way that you phrase things and the way you bring things up, um, or or like the the way you're trying to sort of like the, the educating him on certain things, you're sort of insinuating that he's making like incel arguments or like that he is being an incel mm -hmm. or, or or not being an incel, but like making incel y arguments or like that type of argument where I felt like it was pretty clear that he wasn't. Like okay. to most people watching, and I think yeah. that's maybe where that comes from. And if, if again, and whether or not you're doing that, if he, whether or not you're doing that, if he gets the feeling uh -huh. that you're doing that, then the conversation is gonna be yeah. started off on a bad point, right? Well, I mean, I did, I did do my absolute best in the beginning to try and not like, um, because I didn't like. I mean, I don't know. People can accuse me of whatever they want, but I literally went into that conversation with no assumptions like the only thing i had was like i i i literally said this before i was like oh man this meme is a little weird you want to have want to talk to him about it? i want to see what it's all about that's it that's all i said and i genuinely wanted to get to the bottom of it and i think people um i think a lot of people like assume i'm in bad faith for whatever reason i mean i have my theories on that but um i don't i don't know like i i yeah i guess uh i i, I do think that at that point when i said like i feel like that's a little bit like an incel talking point um, that was probably yeah, exactly. more inflammatory than I even intended. Um, but I do, I do think that like, like, again, I do I think mean, there's, but, but you, there's some credence to that too still. Like but, I, I, at the same time, like, I do think a lot of his arguments ultimately, <laughs> what, what? No, I, I, I disagree, but that doesn't matter. Okay. Um, but, but you, but you do, but you do realize that like, there's, there, there is like a huge thing about like, um. I guess I believe Irrelevant talks about this quite a lot where like black guys uh like specifically like young black guys are very like uh, prone to like the insult culture like that's a big meme that like a lot of younger black guys are incels it, it's not like there's a disproportionate amount of black uh people uh, black guys who are incels like mm -hmm. of, of like the like per, you know what I mean like the yeah, per yeah. capita or whatever yeah I, yeah I didn't know that that particular stat but that's interesting oh sure yeah um so 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 i mean uh, i i can see how that would rub him like the wrong way um sure. uh, i mean a lot of things have definitely uh rubbed me the wrong way <laughs> since then but yes sure. i do agree yeah and i think maybe yeah it's a... poc in general but like yeah. I, I think yeah yeah no yeah I, there's a lot of racism in it yeah, yeah exactly. i have no problem about that we, we could have even talked about that if we wanted to but i, I just feel like that's not what sure was interested in happening and then after after a certain point it did become like uh like a dunk off and like okay like the thing is like that's the only like i think that's one of the things that some people um again I and mean, this is not a direct response to to your critiques again i have been actually very happy to hear your critiques and i appreciate them a lot um and i think they're very sure. useful um I, I just i i do think there's this uh, tendency especially in the circle of dgg in the greater dgg community <laughs> of um of uh of assuming the absolute worst out of everybody who disagrees with me with them but particularly women who disagree with them and assuming that i'm always calling them an incel or whatever when in reality i'm like i just feel like all i was trying to say is like i feel like that take is a little bit kind of sounds like what incels say it's not me calling i was very careful with my wording in there and no, i probably yeah, could have but, been careful er but yeah and i i understand like like if you if you were sort of if you spend as much time clarifying that as you spent on like <laughs> talking about patriarchy or whatever, then I think the conversation would have gone in a very different direction Tried because to at that point, but, yeah. I don't know. sure. Yeah, but like, enough. but I, I think, I think a lot of disagreement or like a lot of the hostility in sort of these conversations come from sort of um, uh, people feeling that other people um, like the, the opposing part has done something or like crossed the line or said something that you yourself didn't necessarily feel mm -hmm. right so i so i think um for for the scrub king it probably came very early when he felt that you were like painting him out to be an incel and again i'm saying yeah. i'm not saying you are necessarily trying to do that i'm but but like if he feels that that's what's happening then that's going to color the conversation unless there's some clarification there yeah, yeah. and i think it came for you um, sort of in the middle way, like middle part or like the last, let's say like last 40% of the conversation yeah. where you felt that now it was becoming a dunk off. So you sort of switched gears a little bit. A hundred percent. And, and yeah. I, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, and that's, I think what the big, like the, the reason why it got so heated or like the, because at the end of the day, like, 
I, I think this is true. Like, I don't think you actually disagree on that much. If you like, if you if you had a moderated conversation with, with like a third party who would just like like take what each person said and then rephrase it a little bit, then I think it would be like a fifteen minute conversation of you agreeing, basically. Yeah, but I mean, but, but I mean, but because I'm but because there it. was like a lot of. Sure, but like it felt like there was a lot of miscommunication happening, and I'm not putting blame on either side. This is just what happens when we talk, right? Like when we talk, like we're just making sounds with our mouth, and we hope that the other person in their brain understands what we're saying, right? Yeah, but I, and I mean that's part of the thing, right? Like I mean, again, like I agree with you. Uh, I do think there was mi- miscommunications in this conversation, a hundred percent. I one hundred percent agree with you, and I do believe that some of those miscommunications were on my part as well. I don't believe I have some like perfect capability of uh, of interpreting things, um, but I will say that like. Um, resolving miscommunications requires uh, a meta skill of being able to like, uh, like course, put, put yeah. things aside, and that is definitely not happening. Yeah, I literally had him on again, and that was one of the most unpleasant discussions I've ever had with anybody. Like, and then also it was immediately after the screaming fest from Destiny, which was I think was just straight straight up uh, like abusive. But but yeah. Um, sure. I'm not gonna comment yeah, no, on like, you don't whatever. Need to. I, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm yeah. just ex- explaining my position on it and responding to your critiques. Did you have um, sure. any yeah. further critiques? No, I think that was that was like most of it. And and I think and for me personally, and this is just like you don't have to like agree or disagree with this or whatever. But like for me, it also feels like whenever like things get brought into like the streaming medium, like mm-hmm. everything gets worse, right? Because I know, like, from my, like, real-life conversations, like, these are things that happen in real life as well. Like, when I just talk to people in real life, sometimes we'll just talk past each other and we'll have disagreements when there's actually not a disagreement. Like, this happens with my girlfriend sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, it's just like, but but online, when you're streaming in front of an audience, it's it's way harder to grant things or, like, or, like, or like just take a step back and be like hey maybe we're actually talking past each other or or is this what you meant or like some like it it kind of get harder I agree and, yeah. I, I think it's a skill like I think there's a spectrum too I think there are some some people who are very good at it and also there's individual situations sometimes you just do a, like you just miss the the thing and then you you get lost in the moment and sometimes you get raided by destiny and and then you're like oh shit this is my opportunity I got to shine and you know so I do think there's like different uh, I do think there's like varying scales of of how much you can get lost in the sauce um so to say. Um but at the same time like this is this is also the sphere that a lot of people are in. The Scrub King, myself, Destiny, Vosh, all you even I don't know if you do it as much anymore. I haven't seen you on panels as much and stuff. But um, I'm trying very hard not to. <laughs> I've, right. I've honestly gotten I've gotten very tired of like the that that's a discussion for another sure, time. Sure, sure, yeah. but like, but like, this is a space where there's lots of contention, there's lots of political disagreement, yeah. and I think that um, I think those meta skills, like, I mean, again, I had just about the most like negative blowout with Endernax you can possibly imagine. Endernax and I were like this close from being like legitimate rivals, and we sat down, had a fantastic conversation, and ironed out basically all of our differences, and haven't had a single major like blow up since then. There's tons of people that I've done that with just didn't happen here and in fact it happened quite the opposite here but i do agree with you i think that like we have to be very careful as as streamers who are engaged in political debate to not get lost in the sauce yeah i actually i actually did a tweet about that i i, I spent a lot of thinking about like i was i was watching um because i sort of had this like i I don't know what's I think it what spurred this was actually I watched a debate that Vosh had with, mm-hmm. with somebody. I don't remember who it was, but it was pretty recent. It was like a relatively long one. Yeah. Um, and I think it was like maybe with a conservative. And like during that debate, I was like, holy shit, I know what's like I know what's going wrong here. And it's just it's just people, uh, and I'm not necessarily Vosh, but like mostly like the other guy, uh, was just like he was having a very hard time which is the basic conversational skills mm-hmm. just like just like understanding like letting the other person speak like like step 1 like step 1 of conversation is like making a point coherently right yeah. step 2 is when somebody else make a point coherently 
you understanding like understanding completely what they said and addressing that and i think it seems like a lot of disagreement online it's just like people are doing debates and fucking trying to to sort of own and like talk about very complicated issues when it seems like most people just have a very hard time just talking to people like just normally like talking in a calm manner understanding what the other person is saying um like responding to that like it's just i don't know it, it's yeah. no it, i agree with you i do think that's a huge problem like i think that's a huge problem especially on twitter i think it does exist um to varying degrees on twitch as well it's very bad on twitter i think it's the worst on twitter yeah i, mean, I literally came up with the imps code for that reason to change the way that i engage with and and try to help other people engage in a different way i mean i don't even i don't even consider twitter conversation to be fair yeah I no I, <laughs> literally neither do i like i i the way that i look at twitter is it's a promotional site that's good for memes and occasional like thoughts that might be somewhat insightful it's not a place for discourse um at all um but yeah i mean i do agree with you and i think it's something we can improve on um a lot like not just like any individual streamers but but people who are engaging online in general i think we like all need to like be more aware of the structural uh limitations to the type of communication we're doing like for example um i think like uh i, I think like um, communicating via letter is very different than communicating over the phone. Likewise, communicating over the internet is very different than communicating in person. Um, but I mean, again, that's that. There is a two-way street to that. Nonetheless, we are all content creators on here, so we got to be able to engage in it and engage in it in a good way. And I think there are ways to do that. There are ways to do that that are outliers uh, and bad, uh, like like particularly bad, and outliers that are like particularly good. And then there's kind of the average in the middle sure. that most people are engaged in. So yeah. Okay. Before I go, can I just can I just do something before I go? What type of thing? What are we talking about? Swamp. What? <laughs> I want to. I want to do the meme. You this one. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What? <laughs> here, let's here. Hold on, watch. I'll take everything off the screen, and we can get a double picture. We need a little double picture of us. Ready? Here we go. Go for it. <laughs> what? what? There we go. <laughs> there. Now, now people can screenshot that and turn that into their own version of the meme. Dario, it was wonderful speaking with you again. Um, we've had many disagreements in the past, but I always love talking with you. Um, thanks for coming on and. Uh, Hopefully I'll talk to you again in the future, yeah? Yeah. See ya. Have fun. Bye. Look at that. That was a great conversation. All right, let's bring next you person ready, on. Flex? All right, let's do it. Hello, Flex. Flex, 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 Flex. Are you there? Testing, testing, testing. I'm here. Hello. All right. And uh, hey, what are your pronouns? Uh, he, him. Okay. I'm a guy. All right. All right. Um, uh, this might be a short convo, so sure, sure, sure. I do apologize, but no, no, no. I just you don't need to apologize for anything. It's all good. I just wanted to, I guess, maybe get some clarifications here. So yeah. I saw a little bit of what you said earlier in the stream, and just for, I guess, clarification, I'm not really a Destiny fanboy. Okay. I'm just, I just enjoy the drama. So you know, I'm just keeping up with this, and I saw this going down here. So I saw. Earlier in the stream, you said Destiny fans are obsessive because they call uh, him Steven by his first name. Um, and and you said a lot of other stuff. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. was that just, like, performative, or do you really think, like, all of his fans are kind of, like, fucking weirdos? Um, okay, yeah, if you want me to get my, like, like there was a little bit of, like, me going off in that conversation. Um, but I would stand by okay. most of what I said. Um, I have actually had a a really it's a really weird experience i've had a fuckload of his fans call him steven in my comments and i find that very weird like if people were talking about me on the internet using my first name um but they were talking about me as a content creator i would find that very awkward um but that's not even the extent of it i do think that um destiny's community is like very parasocial and don't know it and um, I think his community stands out as, like, a standout example of this. Um, and I can give you some examples of this. Like, for example, Destiny lives his entire life on stream. In the segment that we've been talking about today where he was screaming at me and calling me a piece of garbage, his kid's head is literally visible in the corner of the stream. Him going, 
and <laughs> jumping around. And, and that's very parasocial. That gives people the impression they're living in his family's house. Like he's there with his mom and his partner. Like, and, and, they, and people start to – I've met a lot of people who start to treat him like he's their personal friend. And I'll be talking to them like Destiny and I had this, you know, professional – and I mean professional for streamers, which is like hilarious. Like streamers aren't that professional. But I mean we had a professional engagement, right. a disagreement as streamers. And um, – but he tells his audience, nothing I do is performative. Everything is completely honest and nothing is hyperbolic, even though he also other times says that he's hyperbolic. But then he'll contradict himself and say, I never do any hyperbole, blah, blah, blah. He says these mixed messages, and it's very parasocial. And he doesn't – I don't see him call out parasociality in his community at all, like almost ever. It's something I talk about all the time, and I'm a tiny con content creator. I think it's important. Because um, I think parasociality can lead to some really unhealthy things. Like, for example, what we're seeing right now, which is um, w my tweet. A lot of people got really mad at my tweet saying that my my primary experience with Destiny and the DGG community has been transphobia and hatred. That is 100% true. My primary experience with his his community has been horrible. It has been the worst of any, any creator I've ever engaged with, including some of the most virulent. Literally, I've had engagements with a proud boys community that weren't as obsessive and parasocial and invested in defending their favorite content creators um like personal like they believe that like he's their friend and i find that very strange um and i think that he do you think that he encourages that kind of stuff like not just the parasocial thing but the, the thing that you just said yes yes i do and i have a couple of reasons for why i would stand by this one um i think he's smart enough first of all i think destiny is smart enough to know what he most of the time what he's doing on stream like i don't think he's oblivious i think he knows that eating on stream and having personal drama and like having fallouts with his partners and his best friends um is really good for drama and that he will keep getting lots of donations while he does that now for me i am like and you know not try to being like holier thou than thou but i find that disgusting personally like i can't imagine um making my like a breakup with a partner um a, a breakup with a partner like a matter of public record i can't imagine like i don't know like streaming like me hanging out with my kid or whatever like that seems very very across the line or like all this sort of like very very personal shit that he gets involved in and i do know i know he's smart enough to know that that gets him a lot of donations he makes he's one of the richest streamers he makes a load of money off of this and the stream the donos flow in when he's uh i don't know having an argument with his mom on stream and like uh, i think he does a lot of that deliberately and i think there's worse examples too like a great example of that is in my first debate i had with destiny um he said how he believes that um if uh that like if somebody like i think the example he was specifically referring to there was cyber witch lexi who um he has mischaracterized the shit out of her but he said like he believed that like people like cyber witch lexi um, should be like harassed off of platforms like he's perfectly fine if that happens and it's and he's perfectly fine if that happens as a result of him blowing them up to his audience um so he knows he acknowledges that his audience will do that and he's okay with it he's giving them a license to do that and it gets even worse when he does something like what he did to me last night which is where he finishes off his debate by explicitly in no unequivocal like in no misunderstandable terms states that i am a harm to trans people a harm to women a harm to leftist causes online um and that in my opinion is basically saying um it is your duty as my personal friends um to go save you know to go save the world by taking out this person that is ultimately what his 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 words translate to when you put the things that he messages to his audience all the time and i don't do anything like that never i would i don't even tell my audience that like you guys got to go defend me online and he does that all the fucking time i mean yeah you don't do that but you tell him to like your streams and stuff like well, that yeah I mean, but liking a I, well but that's but some yeah. of this is there's again there's a spectrum of level of like what's the word like clout vampirism i don't know what the word is right. like you have to youtube makes you do that you can't succeed yeah. as a streamer if you don't ask for likes that's fair. and i will yeah. agree that like a lot of platforms like twitch and youtube do um um incentivize parasociality but like there's a lot of net negative incentives in the world and we have to learn as individuals to balance those and i do not think destiny even cares the way that he engages with his community um is like if i'm completely frank i think that the way that he engages with his community is that he sees them as like 
uh, an army he can dispatch to do basically whatever he wants. And guess what? They do it. They do it. Every time. Yeah, sure, but I, I think you could say that about a lot of people um, yeah, as far as I, how they handle their their fans. But yeah. I think it's a little unfair to say that uh, Destiny engages and encourages uh, parasocial relationships when, you know, he's been known in the past to be pretty aggressive against his own fans and, you know, <laughs> lash out at them for wait, differing opinions. Well, wait, but that's not – that doesn't mean that – um that's not an argument against parasociality. So are cult leaders. Did you know that it's literally a part of a cult? Like – and I'm, I'm not trying to say that Destiny is a cult. I do think he has a little bit of a personality cult, but it's literally a, a signifier of a cult that, um, that the cult leader will often um, make strange and sudden uh, changes towards the members of that cult. Like, for an example, um, uh, cult leaders will often, like, issue a command with that's seemingly irrational. And if people don't listen to it, or if they do listen to it, they might be punished. And the point is that you uh, become dependent emotionally on that person. You're willing to do anything without question because you just listen. And I think that that's a, a like this this sort of irrational like sometimes abuse, sometimes love is not is not an argument against the parasociality. You can be incredibly parasocially socially negative towards people in basically making them into simp's. I mean, in fact, people make fun of that. They make fun of simp's who will take abuse from like a fin dom or something like that who treats them like shit, and they keep giving nonetheless. I don't think that's an argument against parasociality. It just means that sometimes he's abusive towards his audience, and I do think he's abusive towards his audience. I think he's abusive towards other creators as well. I mean, I was, I was going to say more, but sure, I, go I'm ahead. not really that. Well, I, I'm, I'm not really interested in defending Destiny, to be honest. So. I mean, I, I have strong opinions but, about this, but I've also done a lot of thought about it. You know, I don't, I'm yeah, not coming out of nowhere with these. It was just, yeah. I, I, I was just kind of lost on, you know, you're saying he's like eating on camera and talking with his son and stuff like that while he's doing live streams. And I know that he kind of takes his streaming really seriously, which is weird for people. Like, he, th he says, like, this is my job. Um, but like, it, I mean, he, that's what he thinks. So I don't think that that's like something, I don't know. Maybe I just disagree that that's like, he engages in parasocial activity. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's just, we disagree on that, but maybe. I mean, it's also, it could just be like, I mean, just think about it and come to your own conclusion. You don't have to accept my position completely, but I think it's worth like weighing it. Right. Like, I mean, I do this, like what I eat, I've eaten on, I eat on stream. I have my dog on stream to sing and those things are a little parasocial. I admit that. Like, I know that. I'm also very aware of how parasocial they are. And every single stream of mine, every stream you watch of mine, I remind people, like, I say, this is how I send off my streams every single time. Love you all very much. No parasocial. You are my community. I love you as a community. Um, but thank you so much for supporting me. And uh, I'm happy to be able to share that communal love with you. I say something along those lines, explicitly reminding people, like, I don't love you personally. I can't. That's impossible. I don't – I'm broadcasting to a camera in my room. You know what I mean? And um, that is not oh. something that Destiny does. Destiny does not seem to care or have any awareness to the degree. And this is a much higher degree than me or any other – I don't know of any other content creator besides like – actually, no. I can think of a few. Hassan is another person who has, I think, a lot of parasociality with his audience. Now, I don't think he's a bad person. And I don't think he does a whole lot of bad stuff with that parasociality. But nonetheless, I do think he's very parasocial. Hassan spends half of every single day of his life online with thousands of people watching him. And those people often listen for 12 hours. He, be he becomes a voice that they hear in every minute of their lives. That is inherently parasocial. And I think, I believe very strongly that broadcasters have a responsibility to try and um, keep that tempered. Because while it is a, na a natural product of the current structure of the internet, um, it has the, the, the potential to do a lot of serious harm. Um, and we've seen this in the past. I mean, um, parasociality as a term was originally invented um, in the 1950s to refer to people who became who fell in love with star TV stars that didn't know them, that didn't even know they existed. And they had fallen in love with a TV star and were convinced that they loved a, a, somebody who was on their TV. That's where the term parasociality originated. It was invented, I believe, in like late 1950s. Um, and so, uh, we know that this happens and we know that streaming is a particularly potent, has particular potential, potential for parasociality. And personally, like I've actually built structures into my, um, into the way that I stream and the way that I build my community to try and t again, temper that deliberately. Like, for example, I encourage people to go join like my discord where they can meet other people and actually socialize with people who are not me. They can make real friends. 
um, through the internet that aren't just me, the broadcaster. I encourage people to fi to be passionate about my content. Yes, of course, I'm passionate about my content, but don't become attached to me as though I'm your friend. I'm, I can't be everyone's friend, it's impossible. And there are some people in my audience who are also my friends, but I'm very clear with them. Like for example, I can give you an example of this. One of my mods, I am very close with. And I said, hey, I literally had a conversation with them where I said, hey, listen, I feel like we're friends. Are you comfortable with being a friend with me? And they said, yeah, I'm comfortable with that. And I said, thank you, because I feel um, like I care about you. And so we had a conversation like that. And the reason for that is because these mediums have an incredible, incredible vulnerability towards becoming unhealthily um, parasocial. And I think we need to be very careful about that. And I personally, genuinely, and I'm telling you this very honestly, uh, take this very seriously. I don't want to harm people because of the parasociality of this medium. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Uh, and then my last thing I wanted to ask you was about the um, – you didn't explicitly state this, I'll admit, but um, yeah. it, it kind of comes across that you're – I don't want to say insinuating, but for lack of a better term here, that maybe there might be some kind of issue with the majority of Destiny's uh, fan base or DGG fan base with transphobia. Do you Do you believe that is the case? I never said that. Um, people read my okay. comment as that. Uh, I don't – I think that's – no. I don't think that the majority of people in Destiny's audience are transphobic. I don't think that matters. Um, like, I think there is a, a, a notable amount of transphobia in his community, and I am not even close to the, to the um, only person who said this. I have had closed doors conversations with multiple um, creators. I have ha had uh, panel discussions with women who have, who have come across, also misogyny, by the way. Misogyny and transphobia are both things I think that run very strong in the DGG community that Destiny and the DGG mods haven't quite acknowledged to the same degree. And I think they need to take a proactive approach. My server has a very proactive approach against this. Again, I'm not the only person whose server is like this. I know a lot of others and there are varying degrees of proactivity that you can take. I think DGG has not done and I think Destiny has not done a good idea or a good job of actually weeding that out of their community. And my experience with his community has been an embl has been emblematic of that. The moment he disagreed with me on Twitter, I had had I was just having my normal Twitter experience. The moment he disagreed with me on Twitter, I immediately got uh, five or six different people telling me that I should die or hang myself for being trans explicitly. And those people only came in as a result of his interaction. So even if he doesn't encourage that explicitly, the fact that he's fostering that in his community and that it has happened every single time DGG has moved its eye onto me and to other trans and female creators in the space uh, means that there's it's a big enough problem that I think it should be taken seriously. And the funny thing is, if you bring that up, they will get mad at you and accuse you of bad faith and, I, and all this shit. And it's like, no, I'm trying to tell you very explicitly there are problems. And also, just so you know, uh, people were freaking out and accusing me of not being willing to improve D DGG as if I owed sh anything to DGG after the way they treated me, but I did. I have actually reached out and sent a huge collection of photographs um, to his mods, including one of a, of a yeah. thread on his Reddit that was on the front page of his Reddit that said, how, how to deal with the demon mama question, which is, by the way, that is a direct reference to the Jewish question, which is the Holocaust. That was the answer to the Jewish question, just so you know. I feel like that is an obvious example of his community, and that was front page, and the mods didn't do fucking shit about it. Now, maybe they have now, but I feel like that would never fly in my community, ever. Not even once. It would not even exist. My mod team is good enough that if anything like that was to ever show up, we would get it like that, proactively. We wouldn't even have to wait for the content creator to go find that. We would have that taken care of. And in fact, I know it because there was exactly one time where hate speech um, in the last three days where hate speech was directed against uh, somebody who was on my show. And I literally pers they are, I found out their account was, had been created 30 seconds, pr less than 30 seconds prior. They had never been in my community before. And I personally IP banned them. And people can go and look at that and see me doing that. I did it live on stream. I literally typed in IP ban this person. Bam. Myself. That's how seriously I take the modding of my community. And I don't think Destiny does that at all. So, yeah, I just um, – I, I don't think the majority of his audience – I think the majority of his audience don't even, like, plug into most politics. I mean, he has 10,000 viewers. Like, that's a lot of people. But 
you can't just say like, oh, well, it's not just about the majority. It only takes a minority of people to be spewing virulent hate to make that place unsafe for people. If there were transphobes lurking in my audience all the time, my space would not be safe for trans people. And I don't even run like a, like a quote unquote safe space. My server um, is a place for contention and disagreement. However, there are, there are very specific lines that are crossed because this place has to be usable by uh, anyone. I want women, I want trans people, I want fucking non-binary people, furries, I want people, whatever you are, I want you to be able to use this space effectively. And if people, and if, if like, if, if people are rampantly dropping hate all over the place, um, oh, the thread is still there. Nice. Nice. I'm glad that I have a, a, a JQ reference talking about me and the Holocaust being referenced on the, on the, on Destiny's site, even after reporting it to the mods. This is what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's basically my thoughts on it. I don't think, I think there's a lot of fucking amazing people in DGG, and I know they'll never admit this, but a lot of them have come over and joined my audience since then, and I know more will. But, um, but, you know, the, um, the, I think the, their approach to, um, modding it and to, um, ensuring, I don't think it's a safe space to, um, to most people. I don't think most trans people find it a safe space. I certainly don't. And I have a bit, I have a, a fan base that'll, you know, back me up to a certain degree. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, my last thing, uh, uh, the uh, you kind of in in this conversation that you just said that you you compared your community and how you run it to Destiny's. Mm. Do you feel like you could do a better job um, than him if, let's say, the roles were reversed and um, that you had the size of his community? I mean, do you think it's fair for somebody to be like, you know, I, I, it's not fair that you know that was even that shit you're talking about that was on a subreddit the um, Jewish question thing that was going on uh, in reference to you. Not fair at all, but do you think it's fair to critique them for the time frame it's taking them to take some of this stuff down when, you know, as we know with a lot of people online and just in, in America in general, they're not very uh, welcoming towards the LGBTQ plus community in general, especially the transgender community. Um, I would imagine this is um, going on in more than just Destiny's community. I'm sure Vosh gets this a lot. <laughs> I see Vosh get comments that he's transphobic and oh, stuff like yeah, that, sure. but um how how do you think how fair do you think it is to to critique somebody when they do have a lot of rules set up and they've they've put themselves in a position to be seen as um uh i guess an ally of the trans community i don't know how he i don't know what he calls himself exactly you know but he's he's defended the transgender community and lgbtq plus rights before but uh, it is. I think it's fair to say that he doesn't do enough. But what do you think he could do that's better? As, uh, besides, well, maybe. Well, um, do you want me to answer the first one? The first question about like, do you think I could do better if the roles were reversed? Uh sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. One hundred percent. I am one. I am so confident in that. And in fact, maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll see in a year or two or five years. Maybe we'll see if I can. But I'm quite sure I could. In fact, I know that's the I, and here's the reasons why I know that because Destiny not only has a legal team, he has, as far as I understand, a paid mod team. He has um like a fuckload of tools at his behavior at his um at his fingertips. He has a an an absolutely huge amount of money and and volunteer support. He 100% could on on my um server. We have like I have a I set up very early a lead mod who I can trust. Um, even if we have some disagreements, even if there's some bumps, we had one earlier, but that's fine. You know, it's resolved very quickly. It was resolved within 10 seconds. I have a lead mod that I can trust. I have a team of mods that I can trust. Um, and if I ever get that big, I will be paying my mods. My mods will be paid to take care of this shit. I can't do it now because I don't even make close to enough because that's just the way it works. But Destiny definitely does, and I'm quite sure he has a paid mod team, and I know he has a paid legal team. So if he can do all that, he can absolutely do better. Again, you do you really think that like a front page j joke referencing me, the Demon Mama question, as a reference to the um, to the Jewish question? Do you really think that that's like um, do you really think that that's like uh, like like m too much to ask? And this happens all the time. Again. Like, I don't expect, uh, I mean, he, he, there was multiple attempts in my first conversation with Destiny to frame me. Like, I was, like, trying to ask him to, like, have the most purest community. And I explicitly stated multiple times, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's reasonable to hold um, a uh, content creator responsible for every bad thing that could come from their community or every asshole who's lurking around. But there's a line, right? There's got to be a spectrum. We have to recognize, like, there's different ways of handling this, and I know that I could do that. I know for a fact that I could I could moderate that more. And guess what? There are other creators who do. 
there are um, huge content creators who are like 10 times Destiny's size who have way better moderation teams. They just don't, they're just not in politics. If you go and look at other people, like, fuck, if you go and hang out in the chats of, like, some professional gamers who have advertisers where they can't have, like, any, they can't even come close to having fucking hate speech in their chat, these people will have the snappiest mod teams you can possibly imagine. You know what I mean? These people will get on this shit, and they'll be, they'll be, um, because there's money on the line. There's advertisers on the line. They care about it, and they're invested in their community. Destiny just isn't. And it seems, in some ways, that he actually makes a lot of money by allowing quite a lot of pretty angry and um hateful people to mill about in his community and not take a proactive approach so yeah i i think he could do a better job and i know i could do a better job and guess what i know other people who are similar size to him who do a better job vosh is one such exam example vosh's community are there people who are like dumb assholes who will go and swarm yeah it's in that's that part is inevitable but vosh does a very very proactive job at keeping his community clean and safe and he has a massive mod team that he pays a lot of attention to including um vermin who's amazing and has given me feedback on how to make my community better so there's other th people are already doing a better job destiny just right now like and he doesn't take any critique from anybody he just sits there and thinks he's the, the best that's ever been and even though other people are doing things better, he's not willing to learn from them because he thinks, again, I have a feeling that he has kind of concluded that he's the peak and nobody else could possibly be doing anything better than him. And I think that's a little arrogant. But yeah, yeah. Okay. There, that, I hope that answers your question. I, I'm sorry if uh, I didn't answer yeah. all of it. No, you did. I, th I think you did. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I'd have to agree with that. I didn't know that he paid his mods. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I Maybe definitely agree with not, you there. I, I would hope so. I sure hope he does. Like, I, I intend to pay my mods. As soon as I make enough money to pay my mods, I will be paying my mods. At least, I will be paying at least a core mod team of, like, lieutenants who will be paid to keep my community good. My community is my life. You know what I mean? It's my living. And I don't want... I, and this comes down... At the end of the day, it comes down to... Um, to principle because if you want to you can have a keemstar like community where keemstar's community is just full of fucking horrific monsters and he makes a lot of money as a result of it but it's a horrible place to be for most people and um man, you can have you can do it that way i don't believe in that i believe in communities that actually that don't like malignantly ruin other people's lives and farm uh, small people and like bully people like i mean the whole etica thing like holy shit like like i would argue that like people like keemstar whose communities are that out of control like arguably have blood on their hands um well keemstar yeah. is way worse than uh, oh, destiny worse not that not that destiny's bad but, but yeah. again but again there's a spectrum and i yeah. think that destiny is as far as um as far as our spaces go i think he has one of the worst communities in the politics space like easily in fact yeah. i think he has even worse nazis what's that even well, even like nazis they don't have like community uh. i mean like 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 for example uh nick fuentes nick fuentes has been isolated to d live like his community is horrible and toxic but they've been banned off of every platform because interestingly those platforms have taken uh, you know an aggressive stance but yeah i mean as far as a local as far as locally like as far as the creators that are in this space yeah i think destiny's community is incredibly toxic and and again that's from that's just from my own personal experience and you could talk to other com co content creators and see if they think similarly if you want to like get to the bottom of that or if you think that my perspective might be um might be warped but all i can tell you is that the no amount of hate i've gotten is fucking unbelievable unfucking believable how much hate i've gotten from that community and it's ne it doesn't happen any i mean I, d I do get passive hate i'm trans like i get passive hate but the the volume is like it goes from like maybe i get like one hate thing a day to the second destiny involves with me i've got fucking 20 i've got fucking 100 i've got people fucking writing an essay about how i'm a, a subhuman person i mean literally you can watch the vod of my conversation with destiny and you can see right afterwards uh not the actual not the little recording that i did but if you go watch the actual original vod afterwards i got like five or ten accounts that came in that were called like uh, demon mama one was like demon mama is a racist trans people are subhuman and these people came in and were using the t-slur against me only after destiny ended his stream and yelled about how bad of a person i am none of that was in my chat before those people made an account specifically after he told me i was a piece of shit that shouldn't be on the internet and whatever and then bam that's what happens mm. so yeah yeah okay yeah okay and i'm sorry if i'm taking up your time no, one last been question a great conversation. Yeah. um you said destiny is directing people to deplatform me mm -hmm. um what what do you mean by that exactly 
Uh, yeah, I think I can give you a couple examples. Um, like Destiny said uh, multiple times, like people should not engage with this. Uh, I don't have his exact words here. We can go find the um, the various clips. But he's like, yeah. People... I'll take your word for it. What's that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm being a little bit uh, like, par you know, uh, what's the word? Um, paraphrasing here. But Destiny and yeah. the Scrub King have both said, you should not engage with Demon Mama. Y like literally just saying you should not engage with Demon Mama. She is an unhinged person. Um, who is doing active harm to women, that is the definition of canceling someone. Like, being like, this person is a danger to women, they must be stopped. That is, like, as far as you can go besides being like, this person is a danger to children. Which is like, okay, okay. You're, you're just straight up, that is straight up canceling. They are trying to cancel yeah. me. That's why I, I titled this. So, I don't think I'm lying about it at all. That's, yeah, so. Yeah, if I could, uh, I guess, ask a little clarification on that um, as far as oh. the canceling thing. Uh, sorry, so, one second. Um, Mythaldu, yeah. uh, who is the admin for um, for Vosh's uh, website, um, one of the admins for Vosh's website, Destiny literally told his chat to attack the site servers of another streamer, and they had to spend 12 hours cleaning up and monitoring after that. Like, oh, is that in is that in reference to um the the Vosh thing when they had yeah, a falling out? The, uh, yeah, the, I remember seeing yeah, that. It's pretty yeah. bad. He's done this on <laughs> and, and keep up. in mind, this is what we know of. We don't know what he actually says behind closed doors, but gauging by what he says in public, um, and what I've talked to other again, I am nobody has given me permission to talk about this, but I've talked to other major streamers in our space who've said they've had very serious things. I've literally been cautioned to like be careful around dgg because of how aggressive they get and how hard they will go for your income they've destroyed i know that a lot of people don't know this because it's like ancient history at this point but they've destroyed other people's communities they've put people back like a year in actually being able to build a streaming community because of how much damage they've done like they are very aggressive so yeah, yeah i i think I, just... that, I think that directly labeling somebody a threat to women a threat to trans people a threat to the left and all social justice values which is what he said about me and that wasn't a joke that was explicit he's very explicit about that um like i think that that is an a absolutely fits every de definition of an invitation to try and deplatform, especially when you say no i will never engage with the person no one should be engaging with this person she is doing harm that is trying to kill my career whether they like it or not destiny's just a huge hypocrite when it comes to that sort of that thing yeah, and uh, just for clarification, chat, I am not a fan of Destiny, so I, I am not defending anything. Just yeah, a reminder. It's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, no, he's a fucked up dude. Uh, and I disagree with a lot of his shit, um, especially like that Kyle Rittenhouse take and all that. But, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people disagreed with that, but yeah. The, the thing I was going to ask before, cancel culture. Now, my interpretation was that cancel culture was like people coming after you to try and deplatform you as in like get you um, taken off of like let's say YouTube and like go to YouTube and be like this person should be on there. But you, you seem to define it differently. Do I have the wrong uh, definition here or um, uh, could sorry, you clarify could, that? Could you restate your definition again? I'm sorry. I, I, I just received a DM that was very rude of me, but uh, I, I got pulled away. Somebody wanted to come on. I told them I'd have them on, but um, go ahead. Please, please, please restate that again. I'm very sorry. Uh, no worries. Uh, so as I – I interpreted cancel culture as uh, – now, excuse me. I'm a little bit of a boomer, so I don't know all these terms. Sure. But uh, – I thought cancel culture was when people would go out towards like the specific services like YouTube or stuff like that and tell them, you know, literally deplatform like, hey, why do you have this person on your platform? Like, for example, um, like Nick Fuentes on whatever it was that he got canceled off and now he yeah, uses yeah. something else. But you're you're de you're defining it as something different. Do I have a wrong interpretation or um, w w could you clarify that? No, me? um, I think the term like cancel culture is incredibly vague. I actually have um, I've actually done a segment on this where I talk about how like I think the term cancel culture is really vague and I usually don't um, like it um in general but i do think that like there are some examples of this like for example i did a, a stream about um contra points and how i feel like if there's an example of con of like cancel culture contra points is probably the one of the better examples of somebody who's been the victim of cancel culture like cancel culture in my mind like is this sort of again it's a vague concept of people getting really offended and trying to silence someone um through various means i mean even again some people like i think like uh republicans and right-wingers tend to have like an incredibly loose version of it where if you disagree with them at all it's cancel culture or if they're like literally spewing hate speech and violent speech and they get silent they get like taken off of a website because they're a liability that that's cancel culture um i feel like that's really vague but at the end of the day like the most like sort of the best distillation of cancel culture that i feel like i can come to is that it's when uh you try to shut down someone's ability to continue to do something usually their work 
because you disagreed with something they said. That is like the broadest definition of it. It doesn't necessarily immediately only refer to like getting reported off of YouTube, although that can certainly be a part of it. I would say that like um, labeling, uh, first of all, giving your followers regularly, giving your followers license to harass people that you disagree with, and then also labeling someone as somebody who's doing active harm to a number of things that you know your audience and also the person that you're talking to care about. Um, like is an example of cancel culture. It's saying this person is doing a great amount of harm. They need to stop doing that harm and you all have the license to do it. Whether that means, you know, it's, it's, it's plausible deniability because you let them do the thinking as to what they need to do. But it absolutely is, in my opinion, an example of cancel culture. Um, but again, I think that cancel culture as a concept is really complicated and I've had like a number of conversations about it. Uh, I usually don't think that the, the term is super, super useful, um, but there are a few occasions where I think that are outliers that fit, that live up to the, the general definition of cancel culture pretty well. Um, and I think this is one of them. I think the way that like Merrick DeVille was treated on Twitter is another one. I think the way that ContraPoints was treated is another one. I think uh, another example of this, uh, the right engages in cancel culture all the time, by the way. They, they've always done that. Um, yeah. Like uh, I've talked, I talked about this always. I say like they engage in the most raw form of cancel culture you can imagine. Like, I mean, when Ellen DeGeneres was on an ad for, uh, I think it was JC Penney. That like a, a fuckload of Christian right wing organizations straight up boycotted J C Penney until uh, to try and make it so that she wouldn't appear on that ad. They literally want her to be canceled from the public eye because they are offended by her existing as a lesbian. That's like the rawest form of cancel culture. Of course, there's a million different ways that people will use it, um, but yeah, yeah, it's fair. So. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I got to play uh, Overwatch with my broski here. So I'm just hey. going to say thank you for having me. And your chat was very nice. So I oh, appreciate Flex. it. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you asking me these questions. And also, uh, I think it was a great conversation. Um, I hope you've been enjoying your day. And I hope you have a great time playing some Overwatch. Thank you. You too. All yeah, right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. All right. GTD. What are your pronouns? Okay. I'm just he, him. Okay, just what do you mean? Just everyone's everyone's important. Listen, he hymns <laughs> he hymns <laughs> he hymns are important too. All right, listen. I, very I wasn't right? okay. <laughs> um, okay, just so we're clear. Um, how generally I like to do this is basically that like, if you say something that I disagree with, I'm going to stop you and interrupt you only because there's no point in you continuing on with the argument if I disagree. Does that make sense? Um, no. I don't really think that's super cool. I would appreciate if you would let me um, actually finish uh, sentences and arguments. Um, even if you disagree with them, you can then contest them afterwards. That's how most, um, you know, most charitable conversations, you allow one another to finish their thought before you interrupt them, bef you know, because you assume they're dumb or whatever. Well, it's not because I assume you're dumb. I'm just saying, like, what if I disagree and then, like, you make a whole lot of propositions that I then disagree with? It seems kind of like a waste of time, but we can do that. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, um, would, I would prefer, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. And then, do you think, like, would it would it be easier just so no one goes, oh, oh, I was interrupting, this person was interrupting, we just say if we've finished talking? I mean, sure. Then, like, I mean, the thing is, yeah. like, I don't have that type of conversation with most people. Um, it's usually just really obnoxious and um, and like er like aggressive people who I have that type of conversation with. I think yeah, well, we can. I'm... I would like to assume that we can just have a conversation like normal people. And like, of of course, an occasional interruption is fine. Like that happens in any discussion. But like, I don't know. If you want, if you want to be, if you want to do it like, uh, like you know, military style, like over. <laughs> yeah, Roger that. You know, we can do that if you want to. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, like, I just want this to be chill. Like, yeah, right. I'm a Destiny fan. I'll be upfront okay. about it. Sure. Whatever. But yeah, I'm just trying to have a chill, good faith discussion. Like, I promise. Okay. I want to hopefully show you that not everyone from DGG is like a piece of shit. I don't think everyone from DGG is a piece of shit. I, I feel like I've okay. said that many times. Yeah. I just do think. Yeah, no, I just um, heard yeah. you say that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. saying, like, yeah. just reinforcing that. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, chat rushed me, so I've only got like three things. Okay. I would have made more, but yeah. Sure, sure. So, I was just curious on this point. Do you think the space? This isn't really like an argument. I was just curious. Do you think the space would be better if Destiny was like deplatformed? No. Like, do you, no. Like, you think it would be? You, you agree with me then that it would be worse and like, because he does do like a lot of good and stuff. 
I mean, I don't know if it would be like worse, but I don't generally just dis- agree with deplatforming um people. Like uh, ex- there's extreme examples. Like I think um, for example, my opinion would be like uh like nazis um and people who are like genocide advocates those people i do think should be deplatformed um in many cases um because mm-hmm. they tend to make spaces unusable um but no i don't think destiny needs to be deplatformed i just think he should be criticized and he should learn to take some criticism on the chin i think he does though i i don't argue this point because we have no way to tangibly argue this but like i think he take he does take criticism a lot of the time in in good faith and he does a lesson i mean and he like call me crazy or whatever i am a serial destiny watcher and he's mentioned multiple times like things he's changed his opinion on people that changed his mind like criticisms he's been given and taken in and changed so yeah. well i mean that sounds like, but... i can't speak for his entire life i don't know him like i'm not i was not a destiny fan in the past i've just i've seen some of his i've seen some of his best like his like best content that he's ever done. I've watched some of his stuff and, and then I have my interactions with him. And in my experience, he's been incredibly resistant to that. And again, a lot of people I think I it's, know like that, but yeah. I think it's unfortunate because and you probably heard this, like mm. you spoke to him like like at the time like after he was like, you know, departed on Twitch, like mm. and like he's basically like had a lot of conversations with like left people that you know, in my and even like Vosh's opinion, like he would agree is like completely like bad faith. Um, so I think he's just lost a lot of patience, unfortunately. I'm not saying that's like okay, but yeah, but I mean yeah. that's the thing. Like when when here's the thing. Like that's that's charitable. You're granting him charitability, and that's fine. But like it's also po- like, you know, you gotta be oh. willing to engage in charitability to other people as well. And I do agree. Like personally, on a personal level, I think some of the people he's talked to have indeed been bad faith. I mean. I've made my personal feelings and my personal thoughts about Peter Coffin, for example, pretty clear. I've been pretty harsh mm-hmm. to, to Peter Coffin and Mike from PA. For in fact, I had a huge drama with Mike from PA. In fact, um, but uh, yeah. but but like I I don't I mean but but I don't I don't know. I've had lots. I of wasn't things. trying to lend him charitability. I was yeah, just yeah. understanding like why he is the way he's at. Kind sure, of thing. sure. Like I'm a huge like I'm very like <laughs> people will disagree or whatever, but like I'm a very empathetic person like to an extreme degree and i really think about what leads people places because i think that's the only way we're actually going to solve like any issue in this world mm-hmm. like even if you hate someone or you think they've made like a really terrible mistake like you have to understand why that happens yeah. not just like what they've caused so, and i, I agree I mean. with you and i i think i can understand uh i think i don't know i feel like i have a decent understanding of the way that destiny engages with a lot of lefties um but mm-hmm. just just to, to provide some context as far as like my engagement with Destiny, Destiny's engagement with with me was, in my opinion, the definition of bad faith. Um, when he had me on, like we had had a friendly conversation, like like very short but friendly conversation off stream, and then I went to go get on my stream. I was like, all right, yeah, sure, give me twenty minutes, I'll come on your show. I just got to get my camera up and get my stream going because it was on an off day. I wasn't planning. Is this the first time you spoke, right? First time about... I ever spoke to Destiny. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I um, yeah. and I went online to see that his stream title was um Minecraft or I think it was Mo- Call of Duty with Mooten and talking to some crazy person from Twitter. Yeah. And I, I was remember, like, I, I see. And so yeah. then when I realized that he was not engaging in good faith, I named my stream. This was de- de- demonstrably created afterwards. I named it um, Fallen Titan and Pseudo Gamer Gator Destiny Challenges Demon Mama. Because, okay, if yeah, we're going to go for the clicks, that, we're going to yeah. go for the clicks. I think that's fair. Um, I th- and I think that was one of the things. In our, yeah, in our I didn't discussion, care about the title. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in our discussion, though, like, I mean, like, I feel like um, he was we – were, we were equally aggressive. Um, and I think that he afterwards got very, 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 um, um, angry with like the fact that I kept up with him and Bants, even though like he drew first blood, like he was the one who drew the comparison of me to like being a Vosh clone to being like a clone of him. He even explicitly lied about his and my website. And like, I find that like throwing shots at each other. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. But I mean, again, like, you know, it's just, yeah. But but the thing is when we, the the problem that I have is like in a lot of these engagements, like um, DGG and and a lot of people from DGG and people who engage with me, who are favorable to destiny, who are friends with destiny, will just overlook the things that he does. They'll just ignore it. And it's like, wait, he was, destiny's got made a whole career out of being a dunk meister. And then he's going to be like, okay, two things. I agree with you, of course, but like, 
every community, every community, and every fan base is exactly the same. They will mm. always overlook the person that they mostly like or mostly watch. Like mm. you have to agree with that. I disagree. I just, yeah, I, I, I completely I, disagree with that. But, well, that's fine. Yeah. You could disagree. Like, but but the fact of the matter is that I don't think all um, fan bases are created equal. I do think there's a certain favorability that's present in all fan bases by the nature. Like, obviously, people are choosing to come watch my stream instead of watching somebody else's or whatever but there is not there is not an equivalence between um destiny's community dgg like as a uh, as a whole and in the way they engage with other people is totally is is starkly different in mine and in many other people's experience than most other communities the community i've i've uh, like engagement i've had with like random people even even random people i've completely disagreed with and and really don't like um, has not even been close to as toxic as as the engagement I've had with DGG. I do think that I, there are there are communities that are worse than others. I think that like um, the like shoulder shrugging going oh, all communities are are bad is just um, I feel like that's a false equivalence, and I think it's a lazy way of like sidestepping not of you personally, oh, no, no, not no, of no, you. I, no. But yeah. I agree that it, I agree that I would say it's like a spectrum. Of course, like there's you know there's worse there's worse communities and there's better communities, um, but also like. I don't know what these communities are that you're talking about that are good or whatever, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you have like a massive community, so it's really like possibly unfair to compare like a much, no offense, but a much smaller community compared I mean, do you to, want like, me to give a, a much bigger community. Do you want me to give some I mean, examples? Because I can. I, you can, but I probably won't. I just won't know them, so okay. I wouldn't. I mean, that's fine. Well, here's, I mean, here's the thing. Um, this is my, I guess, my small challenge to you as a Destiny fan. Maybe it's worth, um, trying to understand what other communities are like because you might discover that oh actually i've been here in dgg and this is the community i know most but actually it is actually worse than a lot of these other communities because the fact of the matter i think it is and i think it's not hard to tell if you go and hang out in a couple of other big politics streamers communities none of them are nearly as toxic um or as uh, single-minded of an echo chamber as dgg and I think a lot of DGGers don't know that because they've never existed in another community online. And so they just assume all other communities are exactly like theirs. Yeah, like Hassan's uh, community. I mean, community that's wrong is... in my case. I've been in Hassan's community. Yeah, I mean, Hassan's um, community I've... is high energy, but they're, they never, like, I've never seen Hassan uh, viewers fucking brigade another content creator besides literally with Destiny, where that was a bloody interaction between those two content creators. But the way that Hassan interacts with all kinds of other content creators, no such tech toxicity from Hassan's community. Um, Same goes for Vosh. Vosh's community is pretty spicy as far as communities go, but still notably, notably less um, so than um, DGG. Like his community is actually really chill. And in fact, I have people in my community um, who are mod, who who have modded for Vosh, who have been a, who have like been witness to Vosh's community and are willing to attest in their own experience that it's a significantly better community than other communities they've existed in online. Like that, it just gets. Bam. Like, there's a lot of contention in the server, but fucking outright hate and crossing the line gets punished right away. Um, okay. I would say, because I've been in Vosh's community too, like, I've watched them, them a lot. Um, I'd say that I agree. Like, I would say that personally, most of Destiny and Vosh's chat is, like, chill and cool, but then there's obviously, like, some people that are assholes and say things like, kill yourself, and, and I... In DGG, I call that shit out. I think it's super wrong. I hate it when people say shit like that. I will call that out in the DGG chat when I'm there. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, would agree, I would agree. Hang on, hang on. Sure, sure, sure. Go um, ahead. I would agree with you that probably the margins are probably bigger mm -hmm. in Destiny's chat because he tends to be more, like, combative. But I want to say this, like, I agree with you that Destiny tends to be, like, more aggressive or competitive or whatever, but, like, part of his appeal and why he's actually able to bring like people more to the left or whatever is because like he's entertaining so it's like he has to find this balance like right or wrongly of kind of like being a little bit of like an asshole but then like still having like decent conversations because the bit and you know this too right you do you, you can be like not insulting but you know what i mean like where you just go at someone and it's like entertaining yeah. Oh. Um. I. I That's regularly. Like, yeah. I regularly tell people that I'm a spicy bitch. I also tell people like. I mean. I. I literally. My branding when I was back on Twitch was uh the demon of the Twitch community, um of the Twitch yeah. politics community. But um, there's a big difference. There's a huge difference in the way that I engage with that and the way that Destiny engages with that. Which is that, 
um, I'm very honest about it. And Destiny tells his fans he's never performative, which is a lie. That is a lie. And anybody who believes, anybody who believes, I don't want. Th- hold on. Well, like, well, gotta let, gotta let me finish this one. Um, like, uh, like anybody who believes that Destiny isn't performative is, is wrong. You are definitively performative. The moment you switch on a camera and set up your lighting and 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 frame conversations and pr- and and like I'm just honest about that. And so is Vosh, yeah. by the way. And so yeah. is um and so is um I don't know actually has how much Hassan I, talks about it, but yeah. I think there was a bit of a misunderstanding. I don't want to. I I didn't timestamp this, so I don't remember. But sure, like, sure. I think there was a bit of a misunderstanding because I think he meant that his perfor- his opinions weren't performative, not that. His behavior on stream wasn't performative. I mean, well, I would have to go back and check. But yeah, I mean, there was I even a that joke. Was, that was what I got from it. But. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible that that's the thing, but to me, that seems like a little bit of a sleight of hand um, on his part, and it is it is in his benefit because if his followers believe that he's always telling the truth, well, then they trust him. They're more willing to give him money. They think he's like saving the world instead of just being a streamer. And I'm I never lie about just being a streamer. At the end of the day, these are my opinions. I'm a political edutainer and I brand myself that way because I don't want people to think I'm like some kind of cult leader. I'm not trying to build a cult. I just want to have a nice community and do some good shit in the world. And yeah, if I can go fucking big, I'll go fucking big, but I'm not going to lie to people about it. Um, I think he's said multiple times that he's just a streamer. Like this is uh, like maybe. one for him and he does stuff for his own satisfaction, not necessarily that he's going to like save the world. Like he says this lots of times. Maybe, but I mean, at the same time, like uh, I just, I, I have a, a, a clip of Hassan in here um, talking about a reference to, this was from like a couple of days ago. Hassan made a reference to Destiny telling Hassan, nothing I do is performative. And there's a clip from him from the N- N-Word Andy saga of him selling the exact, saying the exact same thing, insisting nothing I do is performative. And that's just a lie. It is a, it is a, a bald-faced I'd, lie. I'd have to yeah. give the context of the clip, but I just sure. can't speak to yeah, those clips. Fine. I mean, I just recommend um, looking into it, especially if you're a big fan of Destiny. I think it's important to have, like, I think it's perfectly fine to be a fan of Destiny. I know a lot of them. I know a lot of people who are fans of Destiny. Well, that's I why I'm here. Yeah, 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 of course. I've been watching you for like oh, last week. I'm not here just to hate. Like, <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean, yeah. appreciate you watching me. I yeah. do go into other people's communities. I've been into Bosch's community. I've been into Hassan's. I've been into, like, yeah, I'll go into a community. And if I feel that it's not like a horrible place to be, I'll stay there. Okay. Or, yeah, the, yeah. Commu- the creator isn't like a piece of shit or whatever. Um, um, one quick question I have for you um, before we go on to your next question or, or next point yeah. or whatever. Um, you, yeah, we're like <laughs> well, this is just a clarifying, like, like not even a clarifying question, just something. I just want to get about. through them all before you like kick me off. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna kick you off. Don't worry. I mean, we have okay. like I, we have still another 20 minutes. So, um, okay. but but okay, yeah. well, we haven't even got to like yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, all I was gonna say is just try to consider that um, even if a, a community is comfortable for you, it might not be comfortable for other people. Um, like for example, yeah. um, well. I mean, there's a lot of things like this. Like, for example, um, a community that is, um, like, full of people who hate Jewish people is probably not even going to be necessarily that bad for people who aren't Jewish. But if you're Jewish, that community will be intolerable to you. And likewise, um, and, and, and even if there was a couple of people, like, if you were Jewish and there was a couple of Nazis that regularly hung out in your friend group and were talking about exterminating you— those people might make your life it might make it impossible for you to enjoy a space and i do think that a lot of um a lot of uh places like that um like a lot of places like dg for example dgg for example in my opinion um foster too much negativity and make it toxic for other people hey ronnie um hey you got some you got some love real quick yeah i saw that yeah thank you ivy i don't want to sound like I don't sound weaselly, but like generally, like I just generally think the size of his community it makes that really hard, and I think he does do a really good job. I like he does constantly like will ban transphobia, any of that shit in his chat all of the fucking time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot like, to get to he, though. He, he does, I, don't, I, don't, I can't speak for his Reddit. I don't know how much. I don't think he has any involvement in the Reddit. I don't know, but like with the DGG chat and his Twitch chat and his YouTube chat, like it's mm-hmm. really heavily like modded. Also. Yeah. Um. So I, I think he does a pretty good job of making sure that the community is mostly welcoming. Um, and I'm there all the time. So. Yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, and I think I think... I'm reasonable. I'm not like an asshole. Yeah, so I don't I think you're an asshole. If I disagree, so. sure. I I just think that like uh again, I think there are varying degrees, and in my experience with it, and again, it's not just mine, but 
I can speak most to my own. In my experience, I have gotten a lot of very explicit transphobia as a result of interacting with them. And I think that they could probably do a better job cleaning that out and making sure that's completely unacceptable. Um, I, I, yeah, I agree. So, yeah. I'll completely concede to you that all of the transphobia you see was completely unacceptable, and I saw it on Twitter, and I was very upset about that. Um, I th I think they are doing good, but I agree with you; they could be doing better. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, do you want to have another point? Yeah, I've got a few okay, here. Go for um, it. So, I think you kind of talked about that earlier, but like, what? What is your, like, I think you have possibly more ex extreme deplatforming, like, lines than Destiny does. Like, because you would agree that, like, Nazis should be deplatformed, or, like, people that are, like, um, disseminating, like, fake news. Like, where's your line, basically? Um, I'm sorry, can you clarify that? Like, you said that you think I have different views about cancel, about, like, uh, deplatforming people? Yeah, a deplatforming or canceling them or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, like well, a content creator or, or just a if, yeah. Yeah, both both Destiny and I agreed during the conversation um, that like um, we agreed during our first conversation that like we we could both agree that like Nazis are like we're but we both think are like sort of acceptable to get off of a platform. And my logic behind that is that I think that there are some um, highly manipulative and highly violent ideologies that will ruin any space that they're involved in and so that because and while i would prefer while i do prefer free speech um as much as uh possible um i think that that in the name of actually having functional spaces that aren't just cesspits for most people especially marginalized people um yeah. it's like uh like i think that like we have to be willing to say okay these people like can't um like can't yeah, exist in spaces yeah. I'm and, just and, sorry. I just like they're easy ones though. I'm just, yeah, I'm just sure. I want well, you to get to like the harder ones that are like the more gray lines. Okay, so give me an I'm example, and I'll try and, and tell you my thoughts. Like, I don't know if I want to get to an example. Like, if if Destiny believed uh -huh. that, um, I mean, I can bring up the example that you talked about in the discussion, but I just don't know how useful that is. But sure. like, and I don't necessarily want to talk about. Um, but like, if there was someone that Destiny believed was disseminating fake news or just completely like misappropriating arguments mm -hmm. or being like really like harassing and abusive mm -hmm. it would make sense that it was okay for them to be driven off platforms right um i mean and they were really harmful or yeah do you, but, just but have more extreme like yeah i mean i think he could come to that conclusion i think there are some people i can think of that are like that um but like um, but you have to have evidence for that, and you have to be able to um, like illustrate that claim and make sense of it, in my opinion. And I don't think he's done that. I don't think he's ever done that. I don't think he did a good job. Um, I, yeah, we can I, talk about specific examples. Like, I mean, I know he talked okay. about we like if we want to talk about like from my conversation, he talked about Cyber Witch Lexi. He sent me um, his evidence, which was three copies of the same image, um, all of which were, in my opinion, totally fair twitter critiques some of them were a little mean but nothing was like nothing was like talking about destiny having to be d platforms it was just her opinions on him and like yeah some of them were a little mean i will agree but that's not this doesn't represent like an example of like over the top harassment not even close and like and then you can you can literally find even worse examples of him engaging in really really bad rhetoric that i think that he also admitted um was bigoted which i think that we both agree that we don't like bigoted hate speech because of the because of the outcomes it has in our society and also keep in mind i never advocated for destiny to be deplatformed ever but he did advocate yeah, no. he did advocate for the people that he was critiquing to be deplatformed i think destiny is um has ex has very extreme um standards for who he thinks should be deplatformed but the standard that most matters in my experience and in my analysis of him from all the evidence i can find the one that matters most is whether he likes them or they agreed with him or not and i feel he goes really far on anybody who disagrees with him and as far as like if he if they piss him off he's willing to destroy them even if they haven't actually done anything to harm him like he did with me um, and i, I do believe he's a really good example that, like he just strongly agreed with wash he's never said that he needs to be deplatformed like he's constantly said that like <laughs> even now after like they had that whole falling out he still said that he thinks that wash is a good like influence uh, I mean, the back end, space. the back end com um, comments, in my opinion, are are 
um, and that's that was one that was available publicly. I think that um, that like yeah I, saw that. yeah, I think that that is deplatforming. I think that if you are directly, if you're like um, encouraging or even strongly insinuating that your um, that your followers go after somebody's light livelihood, and you could even go so far as to say like, I mean, did actual harm to um, uh, did actual harm to like the team that actually puts a lot of effort into keeping that website going. I think that's a perfectly, that's a perfectly fair and reasonable falls within the, the like falls within the definition of deplatforming in my opinion. So I do think he's engaged in it and he clearly, uh, clearly engaged in it with a lot of people online. I mean, he said that Lexi should be now he's saying that I should be. So yeah, I think um, he does it all the time. I, and I think in the, case of, him, yeah. in the case of Lexi, um, I think like there was a lot more evidence that he didn't show. Um, that she's been pretty bad. I just don't want to get into the. I just don't have all the receipts. Yeah. I, I just don't want to talk about that. I've seen the receipts, and I just don't agree. And that's the thing. Like, there was a lot more than just that, though. Well, but we again, can... like this is just a pointless discussion because it's just like he said she's. Sure, but I mean, at the, but that's the thing, right? Like, if you're gonna, um, I believe that the standard that the um evidence for arguing that someone should be displat deplatformed is very high. Like for example, um, like, and I think that even Destiny would agree with this. In fact, he did in the conversation we had when I said you could agree that even you know even if we're, we're we're like let's say we step out of the prison abolitionist lens, you know, because I know that's the thing that we tried to get to, but we can agree that there are probably some people that, given our current society, need to be imprisoned, like a serial killer, right? But we have an incredibly complex process by which we try to determine whether that person is actually guilty before we slam them in prison. I would argue mm -hmm. that that's a good thing, that we should have those standards. And what I also argue is that Destiny doesn't uphold those standards, and he does it very um, selectively based on how angry he personally feels at that person. And he's willing to lower the threshold for what determines somebody's right to be uh, – what, what, when determines somebody should be deplatformed in a way that I strongly disagree with. Um, I think if like you had given him time to – when you go into the, that stuff, I think he would have given you a better argument. I think it was just kind of on the fly, and I was like, "Oh, here's some tweets." Mm, he but I don't want to get into that though. too much. He in didn't. terms of the like wash stuff, yeah. like I don't really like what he did there. But like, I don't know. Like yeah. he just been like deep partnered. Like obviously he was super angry and upset. But here's the other thing. make it okay. But like, Sorry. yeah, no. does make it okay. He was obviously really angry and upset, and I think even he now would probably admit, yeah, that wasn't. Right. Um, did I, can I, can I comment on this whole, like, on my thoughts on this, the, the deplatforming thing with Destiny? Like, um, first of all, uh, like, he's been damaged for sure. Um, and by the way, mostly not by, I, I would say that, like, again, and I said this in the conversation, I don't think he has even close to the evidence to try to allege, like, a conspiracy from, from, like, Vosh and Vosh's friends. Um, especially because I have like literally receipts because I was really frustrated about the way that argument went and I had people who were able to help me find the receipts. Um, like Zay Squirrel is somebody who's like way, way, way more obsessed with Destiny and I would argue actually does push for him to be deplatformed. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, even with that in mind, Destiny has been a partner with Twitch for 10 years. They've given him a lot of leeway and he crossed a line. And I don't think I wish that it hadn't happened that way. But do I think that Twitch is out of their rights to to say like we can't do this anymore? No. No, Destiny like, was he that. is at the end of the day, he is responsible for his own, um, for his own rhetoric. And he says this about everybody else. He holds everyone to the standard. It sucks. It sucks. He got departnered. But Twitch was in their rights. And it's not yeah, like he... it's not like it was like he was crucified or anything like that. He said something that is like t that is completely toxic to a lot of people and i talk about this in my um my drama mama dsa destiny which i went into that conversation being as absolutely good faith as i possibly could be with regard to destiny and i said like whether we think he's right or wrong or anything it is a fact that if um like a republican oppo group found that clip which they have they could use that to, to damage democratic candidates and he has to acknowledge that Co politics is dirty and if you put out a clip in which um you know uh in which you've said something that could be used very badly against you and you're going to try and enter into actual politics cutthroat politics against republicans you got you have to be careful you have to and sometimes it's going to mean that there's some people who won't be able to work with you um i've i have yeah. i have a friend who's i have friends who are politicians and they've said, listen, um, no, no hard feelings, but like, 
I can't always I can't always vouch I for you. With yeah, you. I can't yeah, associate I with you because you're talking about you talk about anarchy, and I'm like, okay, I get it. I think he he said that he was never angry that Twitch like it wasn't ang like obviously he's upset that he got departed, but he wasn't angry with Twitch thinking they were out of their right. I think he was just angry because like mm. I don't want to get to I guess rightly or wrongly. He felt like it came from someone that he saw as a friend or whatever sure. or it yeah. was, or was mean, in a community of someone that he saw as like a friend yeah and then that um, part becomes whether he's right or wrong and if we like that's a big conversation we could have um i think he's wrong i think he doesn't have the evidence to try and frame people for it or to then justify the way he treated them afterwards um i just don't um uh, yeah. i think he had i think i think I, this isn't really an evidence thing it just goes back to the xanol conversation like i just think he has the I just think he can say that he was upset that like Vosh didn't do enough to really like stop people taking what Destiny was saying like the worst like faith version. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Well, um, I mean, he can express those feelings, what he but he saying. did a lot more than express those feelings. Like, I mean, he didn't just express feelings. He, like, denounced Vosh. He accused them of being the main, like, thrust behind it. He made a lot of accusations. He made a lot of accusations even in the conversation I had. And, again, I don't think, I think he think... said Vosh. He said community, and he yeah. said, like, the... I mean, he the, said Kanye. Uh, girlfriend, and, like, and, yeah. yeah Kanye but, but I mean, like, Vermin has talked about this many times and, like, doesn't involve, like, doesn't involve themselves in the, um in the, the the discourse at the current moment but like um like this has been discussed like again i just don't think the evidence exists for him to make the claims that he's making his claims are very big and they require evidence when you make big claims you need to have the evidence to make those claims yeah so anyway um we're running a little tight on time okay. did you have another thing you wanted to bring up yeah sure <sighs> like this is just okay i was gonna ask you a question you've been asked a million times but did you ever call to scrub king and stuff um, yeah, I did call him an, I think, actually, I don't know if I called him an incel directly. I definitely strongly implied that he was an incel after our conversation. Um, actually, it was not after the first conversation. It was after the second conversation. Um, after the first conversation, people ex di direct directly asked me whether I thought he was an incel. I said, no, I just think he had some incel-y kind of takes. Um, and I don't agree with them, but I think he's a fine person. In fact, again, you can go watch the stream that I did um, right after that, like where somebody asked yeah. me. You can find so it. So this like, is this yeah. is the problem because I did and like, like I'm not here to like whatever, but like at six hours, twenty one minutes and fifty seconds, like you literally said something like, "Oh, like I didn't before, but like now I literally think he's a little incel or whatever." Like, so you did call him an yeah, incel. Yeah, wasn't that after and the like, second conversation we had? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I like I just said, like I just said, after the second conversation, yeah. Like, oh, and, and like, by you the way. You said you were implying that he was an incel, not that you did. Oh, no, no, I, I, let me, I let don't me finish. Let me okay, finish. okay, go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. And I, like, this is just the critique I would say, like, maybe you're saying, like, because like, when Dari said, like, oh, did you call me an incel? You just said no. And maybe your defense would be, like, oh, well, I just went after the first conversation. But, like, the impression when you ask someone, like, Oh, like, did you say this? It's not like, oh, did you say this at a specific point? It's like, did you call him this at any point, right? Well, and I mean, fair. wait, wait, wait. When, when, uh, when, when you asked me that, like, I feel like I was very honest. I said, yeah, I feel like I did, and then I said, actually, I don't know if I directly did or if I didn't, but I was very, I did, I did very much ride on the insult thing after the second conversation. Absolutely, I don't fucking care. After the second conversation, he was so fucking rude to me. He held up a fucking clock. To the screen like fuck that yeah that's incel so shit. Like, yeah absolutely so when i hear when i hear like dario ask you and then you say no do you no because we were but wait 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 but we were talking specifically with dario the context of the conversation was very specifically the first conversation and i did not call him an incel in that conversation so uh, i don't know i was listening and i didn't feel like it was all about the first conversation it was i mean it was gonna say that we were explicitly okay. talking about the first conversation I, I mean, that's the whole thing. His his three critiques were based off the first conversation with, with Dario. He said he didn't watch the second conversation. I think that's important. Okay. Like, I, I think that's an important thing. Like, t establishing a timeline if we're going to levy accusations against people is, like, really important to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you still think he is an incel? <laughs> do I think he's... Okay, let's see. If I'm going to be completely honest, do I think he's an incel? Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, incel is, a, is, like, it's kind of an insult. Like... 
I don't know. Like, yeah. no, like, I don't think you... he hangs on an incel forums, but I think some of his arguments are, um, like, are very immature and also very um, patriarchal. I do believe that. I do think some of them are. I don't think he's like, I don't know. I don't know if he's like fucking really he, an incel or anything like that. But he recognizes that the word incel like holds a lot of weight there. But like, I, I mean, guess. like, there's, I mean, there's being hyperbolic, but then calling sure, someone sure, like, but incel, like, so like, does it holds a lot of like. Yeah, but do you weight? think? Do you think that me calling him like an incel as like an insult ha carries as much weight as both him and Destiny, um, literally telling thousands of people that I'm that in no uncertain terms i'm actively harming trans people and actively harming women i'm sorry but that is a double standard if i've ever heard of one i don't know i'm not i'm not talking about destiny though i didn't hear him say that in that stream when I, Wait, when he, he said that in his tweet in his the literal first tweet he made about me today a massive oh, thread that's getting tons that. of attention so okay, yeah i haven't seen that but sorry okay. yeah i don't think i'm sorry but like this again this is where Twitter, yeah this is where i get this is where i get a little bit like i'm gonna be uh, i'm gonna defend myself a little bit because um i think the double standard is massive that if i'm just like yeah dude that was kind of fucking incelly then he's gonna go on a giant freak out and then like be like i was destroying his character while simultaneously they literally are telling their fans with no uncertainty that i am harming women and harming trans people that is so like those that's such a double standard like i i like a one throwaway insult oh, i think he's stupid or whatever like i think he's an insult whatever like and then and, like no i this is just i feel like this is like but like when i ask the question and then you like mm -hmm. when i ask you like do you think it's unfair and then you kind of go to destiny it's kind of a bit like uh -huh. what about them and it's like no, well i'm asking you like him. directly like do you think that it would you know you can be hyperbolic but then using a term like that that holds a lot of weight i think that that's like but. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm m my mental jury is out on how much weight the term incel should have. Um, but I guess if I, it, I can it, tell you that it has a lot of weight, like I know I'm a fucking straight white male, whatever. But like I can tell you that like mentally, like it's not fun to be called an incel. Well, it doesn't it's not make fun you to be feel good at all either. And I was called a dumb fuck. I'm, it's not. You don't want to know what one of the most insulting things that anyone has ever done to me is? Is fucking imply that I'm. I've, I've, I'm not kidding you. Like I know, I heard you talk about. It. I know, I know. Yeah. But, but like, come on, but like, like come on. You gotta, you gotta realize like, this is a double standard. I know, but it, like having it's a double whether it's a double standard or not doesn't equate to like whether it's like a wrong action. Oh wait, like, do you think it was so, wrong of me to insult him for being an incel? Like, is that what you're asking me? Um. Yeah. Like, I think like dumb fuck is like doesn't really hold that weight like it doesn't really mean anything it's just like oh you're dumb people don't really think that much about it but then like incel or a racist or these hold like a lot more weight to them right like maybe i don't think i don't put incel on the same level as those so maybe that's just a different it, personal difference i don't like, personally think i did anything wrong by after that well, second a lot of people see incel as like a woman hating like okay. ridiculous like you know, like literally, like the worst, like piece of woman hating scum on the universe. Like that's what incel is like yeah. seen as. I mean, that's not the way I look at it. But if that's the way some people look at it, that's fine. Um, that's I, the way I, most I, people look at sure. it. Sure. Well, I don't think you have the information to make that assertion. Assertion. I don't think you actually have the data to make that claim. But if you think that's the case, that's fine. I don't think that's how most people look at it. I don't think most people see it as like um the worst thing you could ever call somebody. I think it's just another term like oh you're you're being a fucking weird neckbeard or whatever. Like I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. Uh, so no, if you're asking my opinion on whether I think I did anything wrong after that horrible, like bad faith second conversation, call it being like, yeah, I actually do think he's kind of an incel. Um, no, nah, I don't think I did anything wrong there. I don't think I did anything wrong at all. Like I think at that point, the it had been very, it was very clear. Uh, keep in mind that he had that second conversation after watching Destiny scream at me and and say and say those things. So and Destiny raided into him, told him that he was raiding into him. And his chat at that time was um like literally screaming. He, he raided into Big Boss Bose. Oh just well. Not true. Uh, okay, so yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe he didn't physically raid in, but he literally said, "You all can go watch the Scrub King if you want to." To me, that's like a soft raid. I can't raid on my site. I can suggest people to go watch someone, and I can host. I feel like that's the same thing. I think that a like a like a pseudo raid where you say, "Go watch this person if you want to go see the thing that I was just screaming about." Like I think that's a pseudo raid. Sorry. I if he wanted to, then he would have just raided them directly, right? I don't know. I, I'm not talking about Destiny, I mean, but like whatever. This but, um, feels like a lot of charitability. He he sent Destiny directly sent a ton of people. He explicitly told a lot of his fans to go watch the the Discrub King afterwards, and they did. Like Discrub well, King literally talked about it on Twitter about how many more views he got after Destiny shouted him out. 
Yeah, of course. But like, so here's why I don't he... think I'm being super charitable because I will literally come on her and tell you, okay? okay. Like, Destiny absolutely was bad faith to you when he spoke to you. Okay. And this, like, I thought it was hilarious. It was amazing content. It was really funny. But obviously, he was super bad faith. And I'm actually, I'm disapp I am a little bit disappointed because when he levied those accusations at you, I would have really liked to hear, like, why he thought that you were, like, harm to all these spaces he doesn't like, he's I, I, lying honestly, he's just being he's just trying to get people to get mad well, at actually me. i hope you two have a conversation and like he calms down you actually have a conversation back because i think that if you can actually both come at it without being too heated at each other it would actually be like a, a an interesting conversation yeah, but, yeah sure i mean i think maybe he should come and apologize to me and and after he's done apologizing for labeling me um a danger to the community i care about most in this world aka trans mm -hmm. people um, then maybe we'll have a talk. I'm not gonna fucking like, grovel uh, to someone who's disagree. a like, I know you're gonna dis Sorry, I know you're gonna like disagree with like the incel word, but it's kind of a similar thing where it's like, oh, maybe he got super mad and he said something, but he doesn't really mean it. But it's kind of the same as you calling disrupting an incel. That is not saying, the same. Oh, well. I'm sorry. That is not the same. That is like, I don't agree that that's the same at all. Not even close. I'm sorry. Okay. Strong disagree I mean, with you. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But do you think I made some fair points? Yeah, I mean, I think you brought up some things. I don't really... Um, yeah, I, I mean, we had a great conversation. I think this has been a good conversation. I don't agree with a lot of... I, I think you grant a lot of charitability to the, the, the streamer that you like the most, and I understand that to a certain degree. I think, uh, personally, the weakest point was this last one. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, and I think I'm pretty level-headed. So yeah, I you don't are. You are pretty level-headed. a super amount of, like charitability to Destiny. No, so. no, I think this was a good... Con um, listen, GTD, for what it's worth, I think this was a great conversation and I've enjoyed talking with you. Um, I don't always... I don't agree with you on everything, but this is a perfectly good faith conversation and, uh, you know, maybe we'll talk again in the future. All right? I gotta okay, go talk cool. to some other content creators who I told I was gonna have on. Yeah, I'm um, sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Uh, again, thank you for coming on and thank you for being willing to lay out your points and your critiques in front of my audience. I really appreciate that. And it was a, did I lay it out in a good way? Like, yeah, I think I, I talked very well. But... Yeah, I think you did perfectly okay. fine. See, we had a really nice fucking conversation. It was good. All right? Yeah. All right. All right. You okay. have a good day, GTD. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, I'll come back if I have anything else to talk about, I guess. All right. See ya. Yeah. Hi, oh. how's it going? Good. All right, hold on. I got to get your Twitch handles up on here. And do you both want to be on camera? Or, like, are you cool with being on camera? Yeah, here. Okay, that'd be really turn great. Off my camera I... on my end. Okay, so hold on. Okay, so twitch.tv forward slash sansol and sansol your you, uh, pronouns again sorry ref refresh me i have bad memory uh i'm sorry say that again uh pronouns oh, again? My, oh yeah uh, he him he him okay uh and shark uh the same as well okay he him okay all right and let's see i just gotta make sure i get your twitch your twitch link correct it's twitch uh shark 300 like yep. o is in the letter o Three, oh, zero. There we go. Okay. It, it's saying that in. I don't have permissions to. Oh, oh yes, use I can fix camera. that. Give me yeah, one yeah. second. Yeah, sorry. I, I have to make sure you have the um, content creator role. And sometimes I miss people who are content creators just because I don't notice when they join. And then. No, I see how it is. I'm not. I'm yeah, not. Yeah, I'm not I don't have enough internet clout yeah, to get oh, the role. Sure, it's fine. For sure. Even though you've been on my <laughs> show like three times now. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Brit Mouse. Uh, I'm occasionally going to be thanking um, Donos. Because uh, as I just announced, all of the donos for the rest of today and from retroactively to the beginning of today are going to be split among my mod team. All of the people who are active um, and working today and, you know, over the last few days. So, yeah. Um, there you go, everybody. All right. Let's, uh, let's, have a, let's have a chat. Let's have a chat, shall we? Oh, yeah. God. Oh, this is – oh, God. Oh, no. Why is – oh, no. Hold on. This is I, my my chat box is destroying our ability to see anything. Here we go. We gotta make chat small. Okay. Oh no, the text. Oh God, why do I do this to myself? Holy shit. Um, I'm very sorry about this. I'm just trying to make. No, it you're so totally it's, fine. It's it's visible and here we go. We'll do this right here. Yes, that will make it very readable. And then I need to put up the other text from this. Here we go. Um. Mod day. Oh my god. Oh my god. Streamlabs is a pain. Yeah, well, I'm using OBS, but it's also, mm. it, yeah, it applies. All donos today split between mods. Let's shrink this and put this right here. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, sick. All right, all right. Everything has been fixed. 
uh, like like sanity and and order has been restored to the stream. All right, what are we talking about? Hit me up. So for me, when I I, I watched finally um, the the first half of the first debate, and then sure. I watched everything from Destiny hopping in yesterday with an incredibly um, the the most embarrassing display I've ever seen out of him. That was really fucking weird. Um, uh, from there through the end of your second conversation with the Scrub King, mm -hmm. um, I feel like the drama is pretty useless in my opinion. Sure. I think that it's uh, I don't see much use in talking about that too much. But I, I feel like there were some things missed on both your part and his part throughout that conversation. Me and Shark have been talking about it um, mm -hmm. since I started streaming. Sure. Um, and I just kind of like want to go over that in general. Okay. Um, sure. So. Um, when, uh, I, Shark, I don't know if you want to say anything really quick. No, go ahead, buddy. You're the leader now. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm in charge. Um, so when we're, when we're talking about, um, like the, the meme itself, I can agree. The meme, um, is pretty poorly worded and leaves a lot of room over for in interpretation is um using guys as friends does that mean like you're leading them on does that just mean like being friends with guys can men and women be friends um uh like it is equivalent like in emotional damage to um using a woman for sex right mm -hmm. i think that i would generally agree with that if we change it from using guys as friends to leading guys on mm -hmm. um and and that's like the the first big thing, and we can kind of jump off from there. Um, there are a couple of things that I'm sure that will just kind of naturally get there from that. Okay. But would you agree on that uh, at that baseline, like at that um, like edit to the meme? Would you agree oh, with that? That it's like oh, like psych, like like leading people on or whatever is, is um, bad. I, I would say spe specifically men in this case. Okay, yeah. I mean, um, if, we're, I mean if we want to keep it in the same frame as the original one, which yeah. is painfully heteronormative, then yes, that's perfectly yes. fine. We can do that. We can stick within that. Um, and yeah, uh, if you'll recall, we actually agreed on that at the very beginning of the VOD. Um, like, I said, like, oh, okay, I assumed you meant it this way, but I, I think you can, you know, and then, and then uh, I said it's probably mostly a semantic thing, but I think that there are some, like, there are some reasons why people are like correctly like are are like not necessarily correctly but are understandably misunderstanding the joke especially with the wording and especially with like the fact that you were willing to say nuclear take i 100 percent agree with the op and all this stuff um uh yeah but we we, we talked about that in the original vod and then we kind of said yeah. and then after that i was like well let's you want do you mind if we dig in a little deeper and try to find some of the like underlying beliefs here and see what we can figure out like um yeah so yeah i i, I did yeah. Already, yeah i would say i would agree with that by and large yeah okay cool yeah. so like that's something out of baseline because i feel like at some point um it, it it turned into this um uh compulsory uh contrarianism where um it would go into um yes we both agree men have this issue but like also on the other side women have this issue and then like people would like both of you would agree and like then it would go down this whole rabbit hole the thing that i would um mostly take issue with is the um the reframing um and also to start this off also i i agree with almost everything both of you guys said but the way that it um it went down and the uh the way that the conversation went was really really um unproductive um oh, and really yeah me. and the there were some things that i do disagree with and shark if you can help me i'm i'm forgetting like the the specific things here that i was talking about just like 10 minutes ago um so we were so we were talking about um like bringing like talking about like a specific issue that uh, pertains to men and then like bring and then like dragging uh like the women's side of the issue into it which is true that happens and i but the thing is for me i talk a lot about men's men's rights and men's issues like mm -hmm. in particular and i've seen this a whole lot with a lot of people who and i'm not saying like you in particular i, I have no i i don't i don't know you enough to even uh, make that a uh, assumption yeah, this is the first time i've ever talked to you besides the dm i sent you after you called me a lib 
But yeah, yeah screw Lib, Lib Mama. Yeah, um, nice. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> no, it's all right. Was like, it's all right. No, it's all right. We can have that one next if you want to. <laughs> oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, so uh, that's something that I see from a lot of people who mm -hmm. kind of just kind of brush away a lot of men's issues mm -hmm. when when we're talking about a specific issue. I feel like I don't know. I feel like a lot of people would jump down someone's throat if I, if someone, if especially me, who I've been I've been in Louisville, I've been to the Breonna Taylor like protests and everything. If I was talking about like black issues, mm -hmm. and then someone brought up like even like Native American issues as well. I, I mean, those problems are, are real and uh, they need, they need, I think, uh, and they need to be talked about, but always like, hey, what about this? And then bring it over to that. When we're talking about this specific issue, it comes off as uh, invalidating mm -hmm. to me. I'm sorry, what was your point with that? No offense, I don't know what you mean. What are you referring to? Did I do that at any point ever? Well, I don't think I, I ever remember, did. In fact, I would argue he did that. He did that. Well, yeah, I remember like I multiple remember times. I remember specifically yeah. when um, I may have lost it. Oh, sorry. Here, let me. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. Wait, let me see if I can. Because <laughs> uh, I don't, I haven't watched it in like a second. But I do remember. Yeah. I do remember this. I do remember this specifically that um, that when uh, that when like men's rights are uh, are sometimes being brought up. Mm -hmm. that the uh th that the other side of the coin is uh, did i do that is as well i believe you did okay well i didn't and um i would urge you mm -hmm. to please rewatch it again um, sure no problem yeah you will discover that that is not the case so um listen i uh, listen i don't i don't know you at all but sansal i really like you but do you guys actually like have anything to talk about i've been i've been getting no, reamed, no, I, i've been getting I... reamed over this for like for like 24 hours now and like with if if we're just gonna like i don't know if it's just gonna be like things that i didn't say I'm, I'm it might annoy me just a little bit like i'm pretty exhausted about the topic but like if you have actual critiques that i actually said or anything that i actually did i would really love right. that as opposed to like i don't know what this has been so far okay well i i guess um i i don't want to take up your time if if you think that this is um a, a not useful critique or anything mostly what my my problem with um the the actual like content of the debate was mm -hmm. um the uh the kind of um contrarianism and at, at a certain point it got to a point where um you guys would both say that you agree but you would be disagreeing on like so for instance the the part where it was um the emotional response of the of uh, a guy being having the perception of being led on to like racism and stuff there was like agreement and then you would say something along the lines of um like but it's like uh it, it's not exactly the same right and like kind of like bring it all the way back i mostly have critiques about rhetoric and stuff like that if you want to talk about that at some later time um I understand the uh, uh, exhaustion that can happen from. No, I'm just. Just like, like you being attacked and stuff. That's that's really bad. Yeah, I, but I, I, I just, I just attacked. like, like you brought up something no, I, I, I didn't do, and then, and then Shark brought up something I didn't do, and then now I don't exactly know what you're referring to here. A lot of these just feel like very, um, like I don't know, like they're a little vague, and I'm not trying to be defensive. It's just like uh, right. No, okay, well, like I'm just, um, I'm just. Used right now like so what's the problem what did i do wrong like i had a debate with just scrub king and then following that i've had just nothing but a wave of abuse including um destiny and and to scrub king now both um urging for my deplatforming and also explicitly saying that i'm harmful to trans people and women online and like i'm supposed to like yeah. am, I, am i in the wrong there like just because i had an argument with the guy like i mean we all have arguments we have panels every single day people arguing and you know, even if even if you think I was a stupid dumbass and all of my arguments were wrong, like how does any of this like like apply to what's happening now? Right. Okay. Well, th this is. Uh, I don't think either okay. of us defending like any of any of those attacks. Huh? Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not defending. Okay. Well, I'm not defending no, anything from like BPG or like Scrub. I don't. Yeah, I didn't really say you did. I'm just asking. I'm right, saying right. that is what's no, happening. No. 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 Yeah. So. Uh. Yeah. This is. Um. I. I don't know what the like level of like attacking has been i don't want to be um it's really bad i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah i i can imagine um i i was mostly just looking for like a, a chill conversation about this but i i don't want to like 
over like min like emotionally exhaust you from the um the level of uh hate that you're getting right now so, i mean you're um, not like you don't have to kitty glove me it's just like i would no I'm, i just no. i just like i I'm, I'm on stream i'm i'm right right, right. i'm working okay, so, i'm doing stuff you know i got other I content to, to do i want to have if we're going to have a conversation where people are going to critique me just critique me get the critiques out let's do it let's talk about it i want to ask one thing i remember you guys were talking about um domestic uh domestic abuse in, uh -huh. in particular sure and scrub king had um had a he had a weird thing to say uh -huh. about how he like understood why men were uh uh where he said it was bad that men were um like taken as the aggressor there uh -huh. um or like the, the the most dangerous one yeah. or something if there's sure. like a if you like hear a screaming match or something uh -huh. along those lines yeah. and then he said he said he understood why that happened but he said it was bad and then you had a disagreement and you said that um his point actually defended uh taking uh taking the uh, the men up in that scenario because he brought up the the fact that men uh in in this uh in this instance, if that was going to be happening, obviously it was like a woman and a man um, yeah. in a room and there's yelling or something, the cops get called. Um, the, uh, the man would have the ability to do more damage, even though he can't be more, even though there's a, uh, the possibility that he can't be more threatening. Uh, and I said that his, I said, I think that his argument that like the police target the man first would support my argument about patriarchy being used to harm both women and men. The assumption that men are always the aggressor, that men are the people who do things, and that women are the people who have things done to them, aka, this is the objectivity, the objectification of women, that is a very basic, like, feminist concept and critique, is that women are seen as people who have things done to them, and that men are the people who do things. Um, we never got to even talk about this because he was trying to get a gotcha on me about Rittenhouse or something. But this was my point that never even got to be talked about. The fact of the matter is his arguments, his arguments of saying that, oh, well, women like 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 if a woman ever says anything to a man and the man responds and is justified by thinking that that's like a flirting, that this this all builds up to the idea. It builds into this the idea that men are the people who do things and women are the people who are. Um, have things done to them and that women always have to be in a position of subservience and objectification in comparison to men and we never actually discussed about that because he literally the definition of a pivot pivoted to talking about a knife and a gun which i said was confusing to me and um i really 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 wanted to um i really wanted to understand it but at that point in the conversation, he was full on in dunk mode. And no matter how many times I tried to communicate to him that I don't understand where he was going with the analogy, with the pivot, that never happened. So I don't know, like people were calling me a complete dumb fuck over that point. Like literally, that was one of the parts that a lot of people fixated on, called me a dumb fuck and whatever. I just didn't understand what the fuck he was talking about. Because in my, the way that I understand it, and again, this is my understanding of feminism as well. I didn't like, I didn't just like pull this out of my ass. Like this is something feminists have talked about. Well-respected uh, feminist theor the uh, theor uh, theorists, that's the word. Theorists have literally talked about how the, um, the, way, the way that patriarchy is constructed, assuming that women are objects and men are, a are agents, um, puts actually does have some circumstances in which it really harms men. And one of those is that they will be assumed to always be the aggressor. So... He did our, He did ultimately agree with me. He just didn't want to admit that I had a point about the way that patriarchy is constructed. At least that's what it felt like. Or maybe he was just too concerned with something else. Maybe he does believe that. We never got to it. I tried multiple times. Even in the follow-up, I tried to reset the conversation so we could actually talk about that, and he didn't want to. He held up a fucking timer to me and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Do you, do you, get, that, do you get the analogy now? What analogy? Wait, which analogy? To, to Carl Rittenhouse right I don't know. I, I don't. I don't want to get into the Kyle Rittenhouse thing. Oh, okay. But like the like the gun and the knife thing. The gun and the knife thing. No, I still don't understand what he was going for with that. Um, because like to me, um, that is not even like really a parallel situation. Um, and when you're thinking about who is a th like like I said this. Uh, I don't remember who I. Oh, fuck, I can't remember who I talked to about this. But when we're talking about like um threat versus aggressor, like there is another question that has to be answered for you to make sense of that which is to whom um the person with the knife is the aggressor and the threat to the person with the gun because they are being charged by a knife and as it turns out a gun isn't an automatic win if that guy with the knife gets up to you he could kill you but to the police who are coming in after 
the guy with the knife might also still be the threat. Imagine if, um, like here, let me give you another uh, example of this. Let's say the guy with the knife succeeds. The guy with the gun tries to shoot at the guy with the knife and misses, and the guy with the knife stabs him in the chest, and, and he's down on the ground, and the police rush in, and they're like, oh, shit, and the guy turns with the knife, and he's holding a knife with dripping blood on it, and the dead guy on the floor, and is looking at the cops. The guy with the gun is not the bigger threat, nor is he the aggressor. So the, the analogy makes no sense to me. It never did, and it still doesn't. Well, I think, well, I'll, well, I think, I'll, I mean, like, if if the if the dude's dead already, I, I don't think that applies. But what I would be just bleeding think, on the ground. Uh, like, this, see, these are the things. Like, the in an analysis of aggressor and threat, both of those are things that you have to ask to whom. Yeah, but then you have to like flesh it out before you even get there. But yeah, but right? he wouldn't before... do that. He refused to do that. Sure, but okay, but could I? Sure, go for it. Sure. So what what I was thinking when I heard it, right, mm -hmm. is sure. if there's two people, let's say nobody's gotten each other yet, every everybody's fighting or right. something, it'd be the same way that there'd be like a like a, a bigger dude or something, and someone with a knife, uh, uh, uh in a house fighting, you know, it just it sounds like a Looney Tunes type thing, but okay, okay. um, but you know, if if neither person has hit each other in like an apartment, obviously it's it, it's but but it's an analogy. Um, so if, if that was the case, and then someone's just coming up to it if they have to like stop someone um or uh, assess who can do more damage mm -hmm. um i think if some i think for some lot for, i think for lots of people actually if they look at just the situation like in a vacuum mm -hmm. um then it, then they could be like oh yeah the person with the gun they could do more damage um you actually have to get up to someone with the knife you have to uh, you know be be hit them in the right place to actually kill somebody mm -hmm. if you're shooting at someone with a gun you can hit other people you can hit you know other things you can miss you can you know, obviously hit hit somebody you can hit them from across the room something along those lines sure so in that case it makes more sense to me if someone has more uh, uh power in the situation I, I, I would i would say that a gun probably is more powerful than the knife Ob i mean obviously okay. at some at some distance probably okay. so in 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 this scenario i mean it seems flawed yeah. but in this scenario it seems like if that was to happen, then uh, then he can he can see why, and then then you can like uh, bring over like how men are usually seen as more aggressive or whatever. Right. You can see why it it would make sense. And but I but I would agree but, that but probably that, but again it like more. okay, um yeah I can see why um some cops might conclude or like there might be a a societal standard for cops to target men because they are um. I mean, statistically, they are more likely to be the aggressor, and that I think that is still incorrect, and that that shouldn't necessarily weigh into it. Um, but also that they are, you know, likely to be the the greater physical threat. Um, but again, that agrees with my point. That is that is a large part an assumption based on our preconceived notions of gender. So where is the analogy, and how does this actually argue? Like. He was being the one who was being very, um, in my opinion, very contrarian there, and I was trying to understand what he was asking, and it just doesn't the hy the hypothetical doesn't make sense to me. Like, I mean, what was what's the point? What is he actually saying? Oh, that like people are wrong in making this accusation, and the patriarchy reinforces that. It does. That's what I was saying. He was trying to say the opposite, but he didn't make an argument for the opposite. He made an argument in I, favor of my position. Okay, I think that the 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 big meme here is that. Um, watching the the debate and watching the the aftermath or i, I say the aftermath the mm -hmm. the second day um what my my thing was is that i couldn't like quite grasp what um either of you guys's points were and what my my kind of uh thought coming into this was going to be just take it from the ground level and talk about the the meme and then go from there because i don't um like ultimately my thing is i don't think that any of us like disagree except for on some very minute things on the meme itself mm. right i mean and, i don't know um, the... uh i think that the scrub king and i do have genuine disagreements i just think he wasn't willing to discuss them because he was personally afraid that i was gonna like like that he was gonna be accused of being an incel um or something like that and it's just like oh well like perhaps just, just spine up yeah. to your own positions just if you believe these things like the thing is like i think that he um puts an undo I, like my assessment after all of this is that like i think that he basically like his position appears to me to be basically doing everything 
possible to pretzel himself into a position where women have to do most everything and that men just kind of have to ponder about the complexity of society well women have to need to to like need to start uh complimenting men right away to fix the problem and i even offered him an out in the conversation where i said well don't you think that like maybe like men paying other men um compliments would be a really good way to start this process to like start breaking down that toxic masculinity by the way that is again not another thing that i brought out of my ass like that is a thing that has been suggested by feminist theorists for decades that men have really toxic relationships with one another and it leads to them because women are seen societally as the objects that men abusing one another ultimately ends up projecting onto their wives and their children and their friends and their sisters and this is been well discussed this is not like new gender theory what do you think about women feeling well what do you think about men uh seeing as uh women as uh being alien um like really different for me personally um i've been in a lot of men's spaces and i thought this was it's always something that's been really interesting um and i kind of i think i think it may play into this a little bit um in the sense that women have always been seen well women are just like seen as this thing that they're, they're like different right they're like, i mean i just um, they're like they're like built different. They um uh, they 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 uh, we communicate in a, in a different way, and they're they're seen as really alien, and you don't know really how to talk to them as well. I think obviously toxic masculinity plays plays into that as well. Not really trying to be emotionally connected to yourself and trying to uh, trying to understand people on an interpersonal level. Sure. Um, so if that's the case, um, um, and I'm I, and I'm not gonna say like oh women just need to start walking up to random men and just. Got, start giving them compliments obviously that opens yourself up to a whole lot of harass and harassment and maybe even assault um yeah. uh, in, in some cases uh that's true but how far do you think that um uh that just like uh the men complimenting men would would be and what steps does that have to take and also i want to ask like what do women do to play into toxic masculinity oh yeah i mean th- i had a conversation with um fuck i can't remember who i talked about this with about some things i think about the way that there are there are some women there are many women who do play into toxic masculinity absolutely um i mean fuck uh i can think of an example from my own life here i'll give you a little anecdote that i think illustrates this very well um uh in my own family my mom was the most organized um and like and proactive person in the house she was by all means the most equipped to be the leader of the house but because we lived in a um we lived in a we grew up in like i I was a part of a cult and that cult taught her that she needed to be submissive to her husband it actually ruined their marriage because she was like why aren't you doing this because he just wasn't that way and he also felt like he should be entitled to all these things and that understanding the idea that she felt like he should be doing all of the things that she was good at and she couldn't do the things that she was good at because she's not supposed to do that as a woman tore their marriage apart so that is a way that a woman who believes in a very toxic the most toxic form of patriarchy i can imagine can harm themselves and um and yeah there's a ton of examples of this i think like trad wife culture like for example abby shapiro is like the biggest stand for the patriarchy and i can imagine in fact i've done multiple videos on her and how she just makes apologies for a system that ultimately harms her and limits her and limits the men in her life um i'm a gender abolitionist so like when it comes to talking about like whether men and women are aliens and whatever like um to me i'm just like yo i'm trans like like i recognize that like men and women are way more um similar to one another than they think and it's mostly socialization and the preconceptions that people have that leads to these weird fucked up relationships but um also like this is something i tried to talk about in the conversation but it got like completely ignored like utterly like uh this was actually and also turned into like a dunking point where i was talking about specifically that i think that there are men who receive a lot of positive attention um and then you know um it's not all men but it's a handful of men receive a lot of positive attention and i don't think it's just attractive men or like super super i mean i don't mean just attractive men i mean super attractive men like obviously somebody like hassan who's just fucking crazy hot is going to get a ton of positive attention like literally a model but there are also all kinds of men there are like all of the men in my life all the men i know get a lot of positive attention from me i'm not interested in them at all i just give them that because they're kind to me because i know they're safe And the fact of the matter is that most women do not feel safe around men because our society has, as we established in that conversation, um, centuries upon millennia of 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 this the abject suppression of women and seeing women as objects. 
And so, yeah, yeah, um, yeah I think there's a lot of shit like that. But uh, that conversation was impossible to have in the original ones. We can have that now if you are interested. I mean, no, I can see that. So for me, for me personally, um, growing up in like, uh, the black community, I've seen a lot of. Um, I, me- I remember this was a, a topic of um, debate a little bit in um, in your discussion with Scrub King, where it was like um, some groups holding up a system that 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 could hurt them as well. And obviously, you explained like your your mom there. I think you brought up. Um, uh, uh, black people um, holding up so uh, hold, holding not socialism holding up um, uh, racism. Yeah. If I if I me- remember that correctly. Yeah, I think there are there are, I think there are some black people who hold, who who up who uphold racism, but that doesn't mean that like um, racism is only on the shoulders of 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 like like it doesn't mean that we should have a message of like bootstrapping that if only the black people would be less easy to be racist to, then we would fix the racism problem. No, the fact of the matter is we need to identify who is most responsible for perpetuating racism and the people most responsible for perpetuating racism are certainly not the victims of that although there are some who can contribute there are also trans people who contribute to transphobia blair white is a fantastic example of this i would argue that candace owens is a great example of somebody who um is black is black herself and also contributes to supporting and and denying the existence of systemic racism i don't think this is i think i think the idea is a little bit so i I feel like what may what may also uh, have been happening is like a level of degree there. So it's so it could have been like all only if black people were less easy to be racist to, and black people played like oh like very very minute roles at at the fringes of yeah. this like whole structure that yeah. is systemic racism. Sure. For me personally, I think they actually play a very big role in it. Absolutely, because I uh, for me personally in my family, I have absolutely seen a whole lot of racism even against black people uh-huh. in the community. So for one yeah, thing, colorism, remember, right? Colorism is like a big thing that gets brought up. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I remember this yeah. study in particular uh, for, uh, from a random, random jury, always the, the light skinned black people get similar, uh, similar sentences mm-hmm. uh, to, to white people and the dark skinned black people get like disparate sentences. Yeah. And this even persists in all black juries with all black um, judges as well. Sure, but that we also have a spec like we have a different term for that because it functions differently. Colorism ha- um, unfolds in our society different than racism does, and that's why we have a special a, a, a separate term for it. Like um, colorism is not the same thing as racism. Is it tied to race? Is it informed by white supremacy? Yes, but it's not the same thing as race, and we have a distinct term for it because it has different nuances. Likewise. We have different terms for, you know, uh, patriarchy and and things when patriarchy doesn't go so well for men. And like, I think there are a lot of men who suffer under patriarchy. For example, um, one of the ty- like, I think there, I think for example, trans women suffer really bad under patriarchy, um, especially uh, well both before and after transition. Um, like for example, when you're if you're uh, like a tr- like a trans person and you don't know you're trans and you're like everybody's identifying you as male and you're trying to live and fit in in trans spaces, it is a almost universal experience that um, trans people pre-transition um, have horrible horrible experiences with bullying and trauma in those male spaces, even though technically they uh, they are identified as as male passing and belonging in those spaces. There is something different that they that makes it so that they can't fit to those roles as easily and therefore are punished for it. I think that's true. Also, gay men are also the victims of patriarchy. Also, men who just femboys are the victims of patriarchy. In fact, in the gay community, there's a huge, a fucking huge ongoing, and they're always this has been around for a while of like like um like fem 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 men get mistreated really badly on dating sites in comparison to mask men. Like, yeah, there are all these different nuances for sure. Um, but again, in that conversation, we never talked about these. We could have, um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, for me, for me, it just seems like it just seems like degree. Um, yeah. yeah. They're they're different, um, but I think they can play into like the same systems. And for me, I think uh, for for lots of men, mm-hmm. um, and you probably know this as well, they like revolve. One of the things is like even though they objectify women, they revolve their lives around kind of what women would want, if if you know what I mean. You mean like uh like they constantly think about how to win women over and 
like yeah like how to lure women, women how to appeal to women how to yeah, talk, yeah. like how to talk to women like the whole like even even like uh, uh what, what's it called uh, uh like pickup like the whole like pickup culture came out of that i mean me like me personally trying to find the masculinity i watched like alpha m but i, I didn't watch like any of the other guys but i, I did like watch things like alpha m and that plays mm-hmm. that plays into a lot of it mm-hmm. and um i feel like um obviously the the onus to like change the system isn't on women but the role that women play in changing patriarchy um, is, I think, is a, a, like very substantial. Because yeah. even right now, one thing yeah, that's and, happening yeah. is a lot of uh, change from uh, women what they want in men, like the like the typical, like stereotypical mm-hmm. sort of like traditional and tr- uh, tr- traditional like masculine man is still you know desired and maybe even like seen as still pinnacle. But there are other like ideas of men um, that are being put up that are even like probably being like pushed. Pushed by, I'm not like saying like the women change what they want and then the men change afterwards. Obvious, like obviously, but there's like a degree there, like a portion that see like women changing what they want and then change, um, in that way that could that could also help. Okay, I mean, I I've never never once did I disagree with the idea that women have a part in in um in fighting patriarchy. Not even close, and I don't. I have recently. Oh, I don't. I don't. I don't know if that if that sounded like I I said that you. You don't believe yeah. that women have I, I do, and like, I tried to make it clear. I just think it's, like, really substantial. Like, I think – here's the thing. I think there is a um, – a there's this uh, – okay, there's this weird back and forth that happens a lot of times, which is that um, – and, you know, part of this is because of the MRA red pill incel push um, that have pushed this idea that, like, oh, like – See, Stacys, they're the ones who perpetuate this toxic masculinity. If we just didn't have the Stacys, if there was just, you know, if these fucking Stacys would just, you know, were, didn't just want to go after all the, the, the like, hunk, like, Chad men, then we would have no problems with this. You know, if we were just, you know, like, in the most extreme case, issued girlfriends, there wouldn't be any problems. They blame patriarchy on the victim, on the primary victims of pra- patriarchy. And my pushback was saying that, like, hey, this happens all the time. This isn't just an insult thing. This is a part of society that the responsibility to fix things gets pushed onto women. This is discussed in in book in like the concept of emotional labor, um, in relationships, in in all kinds of ways that this is discussed about. And I felt like that was something that was happening over and over again in the conversation, especially at the very end when all I was asking was, okay, you've been very clear with what you believe women need to do to fix this problem. What do you think men need to do? And the answer was. Oh, I don't know. Society and men could probably foster more positive spaces. Like, okay, but yeah, but you have a direct thing. You know what women got to do right off the bat. Let's talk about what are the other things. Don't you think that it's a little weird that you have like right and ready to go? Bam, exactly what women need to do to make you happier, to make you and your faction happier. But despite the fact that you belong to the class, um, like belong to the class that is ultimately the perpetrators of par- patriarchy. That doesn't mean every individual is like is is guilt person this is just systemic analysis don't you think that it would make sense to like i don't know maybe have a couple of those on hand as well and when you don't doesn't it seem very much so like you're making the argument that ultimately women have to not only be the the primary victims of patriarchy but also be the primary actors in fixing patriarchy uh i i feel like when we we talk about this and maybe i'm i'm missing something with Uh add brain um like i i feel like the the thing that comes across is that um, the his, his main point was that it's it's all on women and not on men, and then it's the opposite for you, mm-hmm. right? And I I, I feel like um, and I could be pushed on this pretty easily. I feel like it, it's almost equal parts because men can't break out of that sort of thing themselves if that's all that they know, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, like what. To what degree do you think that women um, should be engaging in trying to um, bring down patriarchy? Because um, I mean, I live in I live in the deep South, right? And uh, a lot of the the women here uh, engage in like toxic masculinity as well. Oh, well, you're not a real man if you don't do this. Right, right. That you know that sort of thing. Huh? And so like. The, uh, the the sort of thing that I want to I, I would ask you is sure. to to what extent is um is there a responsibility for women to do this right oh of, of, I would agree like, oh, that there's, like there's yeah. plenty yeah like I mean if again 
I talk about gender abolitionism all the time. And the reason why I talk about gender abolitionism is because I do think that gender abolitionism is probably the most holistic way of solving a lot of these entrenched problems. And what that means is that we stop making us making assumptions to the best of our ability based on people's genders, that we stop assuming that men have to be um you know masculine or that men have to be into these things and we really try to not impugn people for being different for being slightly different for men who are softer or quieter that we don't engage in this like like um like fucking hum like 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 jumping on men being like oh like you're you're you what are you gonna what are you crying you think that's so manly like i don't like that toxic masculinity stuff and i don't engage in it um except for very rarely like occasionally i'll call like destiny like a bitch or something like that when he's when he just went off on a huge thing there's probably some small ways in which i've even engaged in this but i mean in really severe ways um like fuck i mean i like again my own experience growing up like fuck my family was full of that shit there's a lot of it it's just that i don't um i take um i i take great suspicion and and i have a lot of critique for narratives that all that have the exact answer for what women need to do but then don't ever don't even bother to think about what men could be doing and how men could fix these problems and the thing is that a lot of men already know this shit they already know how toxic it is and they know that they could fix it and they should and they should engage in this and guess what there are tons of men in my own community, I have a fucking bunch of awesome men in my community who talk to each other supportively and are breaking those cycles, and women too. It's just that um, there was this insistence, and and I keep in mind in the in the discussion I had with the Scrub King, there was an insistence on, me, and and I literally asked him directly. I'm like, do you think that women have, you know, you know, they've got to do, they've got the main thing. And he said on multiple points in that conversation that yes, ultimately, while he wouldn't put the blame, he wanted to be very careful about the wording. Okay. I get it. Ultimately the onus did fall in his own words, majority on women. And if that's the case, I don't agree with that. I don't think it falls majority on women. I think it falls majority in my opinion on men because men have access to halls of power to, um, to, uh by as a class again not in necessarily individual men but as a class they have access to money to better pay to the ability to actually influence things men who can who can um get really who can have a much easier time getting popular as an artist or as a um as a you know streamer and then they can use that that uh, the fact that they don't get harassed sexistly all the time to protect and buff up women in their space to fix this problem that's the thing. If you are a man who's benefited greatly from the existence of patriarchy, just like if you're a white person who's benefited greatly from um, the existence of white of like white supremacy, I think that it would be a good thing to do your best to try and fix those problems so they don't persist beyond like where you are. And I just felt like that was getting contested and pushed back on really, really hard. And also then I was getting constantly – um, ignored, interrupted, and attempted to be dunked on, despite my position being, you know, pretty straightforward. If if people actually let me explain it, so yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I think the the onus should, the, well, at least not honestly, most of the um, <clears throat> the onus to fix the problem should be on the people who are doing the most, the more uh, damage with the uh, w with the situation. What do you think about? Um, because I I remember this was brought up. What do you think about like the? Uh, I remember he brought up um, like your your like your inhibitions. Um, and your decision making being it, like uh, uh, being impaired when you're like horny. What do you think about that? I thought that was okay. I think that was the part that I said that I felt like that was like an incel talking point. I think that was the part where I said, "Man, that sounds like a lot like an incel argument," and I stand by that. Uh, I think that's ridiculous. Um, everyone gets horny. People get horny all the time. It is a natural state, just like you getting hungry. Um, being horny or hungry or angry or sad is not an excuse for doing for doing harm and it's not an excuse for getting out of uh various things there are a lot of lonely and sad people out there men and women included and there are a lot of horny people out there men and women and everybody in, everybody in between um and above and beyond who have ascended the gender um there's a lot of horny people and i just i find it to be um almost like that argument the argument that like like i mean he compared it directly to being drunk or or high which to me is like 
that's ridiculous. Like we don't are you are we don't let people drive vehicles when they're drunk. They we don't let people like operate firearms. I don't think we should let people drive while horny either. I that's feel like true. that's true. I mean, I don't know. Like, I've been really I don't know. clarity is real. I mean, yeah, but like usually when people talk about post not clarity, they're not talking about whether you're gonna go kill somebody. They talk about what you're like, whether you're gonna jack off to like the Doom Marine fucking a, a TG'd a skeleton or what and then you go, ooh, afterwards, maybe I shouldn't have maybe I shouldn't have jerked off to that. Um, that's post not clarity, not hmm, I'm going to have a completely different worldview when I'm horny versus when I'm not. Oh, I think women are objects when I'm horny and I think that I can do anything to them versus when I'm not. That's ridiculous. And I think that's like not only infantilizing to men, but it's insulting. Like it, it, it literally sounds, ex it is, and I'm not kidding you, the argument that like being horny is not an, is like not a rational state of mind is the exact argument that, ch that Christian groups use to tell women that they have the responsibility to not tempt men. It is literally, that is quite literally rape culture. And I recognize, and I don't think that that's a stretch at all. The argument that horniness, especially male horniness, is an altered state of mind in which people then, okay, well then I don't think, if that is true, if I was to accept that was true, then I would have to believe that men should be kept away from anyone else when they're horny. And I don't believe that, that's ridiculous. That's outrageous. So no, I think that's one of the I most ridiculous. I think comparing it to like being drunk or high, or like especially if you're like near blackout drunk or high, I think it's just that's 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 pretty ridiculous. Or saying that we should excuse any uh, uh any like um uh, damage that some some person does in that state is is bad. But I think but I think just saying yeah you probably you probably have slightly lowered inhibitions is when. When you're when you're like highly sexually aroused, I don't think I don't think that's like yeah. A, but I mean, so thing. do you when you're hungry? Like, and to the same degree, to the exact degree that we literally have a word for it, it's called hangry. Like, sure, okay, but that's usually like usually if if somebody fucking punched you in the face or like or like went way over the line when and then they were like, sorry, bro, I was hangry. You wouldn't really think that was a really good excuse. You would just be like, oh yeah, okay, dude. Like like we recognize there are all kinds of things that can affect our moods. All kinds of stuff, but that doesn't – that's not an excuse in any way for acting out. In fact, we don't even excuse people when they're drunk. We don't actually excuse people when they're high. If somebody does something horrible while they're drunk, well, they got drunk and were very irresponsible. You still have a responsibility even when you're in an altered state of mind. And in fact, I can think of – in fact, I actually think there's a Destiny video on this about talking about how he handles consent with drugs. Like this is a huge issue. Now, um, again – I think it's it's laughably outrageous to try and imply that like horniness is an altered state of consciousness. And mind you, you can go watch the VOD. I clear I made sure that I asked him to clarify that position and he stood by it. And if that's the case, which he did, I think that's laughably ridiculous. Because if that is true that men are so horny that they cannot like exist decently around women, well then I think that women that the act maybe maybe the second wave feminists were right, and w the only answer would be to abolish men completely as a class, or else humanity will never succeed. But I don't want to conclude that because I don't think it's true. But if you're going to make the argument that horniness is an altered state in which men cannot be trusted to not harm women, which is what that argument ultimately is, if you're saying it's that equivalent. Well, all right. I guess it's time for male prison island. Um, but I don't believe that. Maybe Discrub King believes that. It sounds like that was what he was arguing for. I don't think he ever thought about it through, but that's what he argued. So I think honestly, I do think he he thought it through because he's uh, he was speaking like not too long ago before I started streaming about how he did like research into it about how it like lowers inhibit. I didn't see his entire argument on, but he was he was talking to like Merrick uh, um, uh, about that earlier, and that was a. Uh, it is an inter I've literally never heard that before in my entire life. It is an interesting point. Okay, well, can but... you both can we both like acknowledge that's like like please can we acknowledge that's outrageous? Like, <laughs> oh, to say Sorry, like I, you're I, I missed what 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 is outrageous? Sorry, the idea ba basically. Oh, you can go ahead. The idea that being like being horny is a significantly altered state of consciousness that could be that could be reasonably equated to being drunk or being extremely high. I, I yeah no I think that that's pretty um <laughs> outrageous pretty absurd okay thank you thank yeah. god because everyone has been acting 
Um, I'm not kidding you. Look, this is this is a little bit this is a little bit me commentating and, and bringing in the outside drama. But oh my god, everyone has been arguing like that is not the most absurd thing. Completely ignoring that he made that argument and me saying that's ridiculous. I think it's fucking ridiculous. I think that's uh, well, fucking ridiculous. To a certain extent, I could say that like, um, it, it's less of an impaired state and more of like, uh enhancing desire but like it, that's like the furthest i would go like you still have a t like like mental autonomy right you still have agency and um you, you it, it's not something like look i i'm sure that uh, like many people in chat uh both in your chat and in my chat and in shark's chat um have all been in situations where like they wanted to go a little bit further but then the other person said no right and like you wanted to but you didn't because you still had agency. Yeah, right? that's what makes the difference between a, um, uh, a a good person and a rapist. And honestly, I don't think that people should be like applauded for not for for not raping someone. That's like being like, hey, congratulations, you didn't rape someone today. <laughs> like, One second, just to address something in my chat: Is it absurd if someone's tipsy or someone's depressed? Wouldn't we consider both compromised in some way? Uh, not to like. Okay, so when we talk about the legality behind like driving drunk or something, you're not you're not putting the drunk person on trial. You're putting the person that was sober and made the decision to drink on trial, right? Like that's like kind of where it comes from. Um, at least like the yeah, uh, we, fuck I don't remember we, some legal YouTube video I saw said that. Yeah. Um, and so like it, it it's not it it is absurd to say that. You're you're judging the person that is not horny and not the person that was horny. Like that's like it doesn't track. I don't know. At like, all. Th there's there's a number of implications of this argument that I could I could lay out. Like first of all, I would argue it is indeed an ableist argument, not directly but indirectly by its implications. But most of all, the most obvious answer is that it betrays a um, almost comedic lack of familiarity with being horny and or drinking and or doing drugs in a way that like almost made me laugh and um no i am not going to budge ground on something that i believe this that that opinion the idea that horniness um is but like definitionally an altered state of mind and men can more or less be um ju justified in behaving different ways because they're horny because they're in an alternate altered state of mind um i think that is by almost definitionally rape culture and I fight against rape culture because I think rape culture is what has led to, you know, a, qu a fifth. Is it a fifth or is it a quarter of all women in the United States having experienced serious physical or sexual assault? It's pretty fucking bad. Yeah, it was. I think we got to deal it, with it that. Twenty percent. Yeah. Um, OK, I, I'm I, I have some people that are uh, DSK stands in my chat okay, and sure. um, they are saying um by by my logic, we should be able to criticize someone for taking advantage of a drunk girl, but not a depressed girl. And no, like again, like <laughs> are are you like uh, this you is this take is why? Advantage oh of my a, god, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, I, I'm, this sorry, is where I start yeah. to do that. This is where I start to like break out the like. Uh, I don't want to say it. I can't say the I word. Can't say the I slur. Everybody, nobody say the I slur. Listen. Yeah, I'll 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 try and take this. If Look, you, yeah. so, like yeah, so when we w you shouldn't take advantage of a depressed girl either i don't know like if you're saying that um I, from your previous comments what i'm understanding is that you're saying that um like women are taking advantage of horny men um i i think that number one i think that the um uh the um, amount of times that that's happening in real life is not as high as people think um there's like this perception that like if there is a, a girl that is nice to you, right, as a, as a guy, there, if there's a girl that's nice to you, then she wants to be with you, right? And then if you're, like, super horny and you think that she likes you and you find out she doesn't, it's not taking advantage of you, right? Um, there are some people, and I think that everyone here would agree, like, there are some people that do want attention from the opposite sex, uh, and want to, you know, just kind of wave, the, wa ride that wave of like attention high, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they'll take advantage of someone that and like lead them on. 
Um, I think that that is a problem that happens, um, but the prevalence of it, I think, is overstated. I don't know to what to what degree it is um, because of the way that men are starved for positive reinforcement. And, um, and also, let me yeah. just weigh in here. Listen, I yeah. I am a woman. I have dated almost ex like exclusively women and femme leaning non-binary for my entire non-binary folks for my entire life um and guess what i've been let on before yeah it happens sometimes people lead you on that doesn't give you like a license to like i don't know make excuses and it doesn't change the facts of society like yeah there are some people who are really irresponsible like holy fuck one of the hardest chapters of my life was just somebody who was so irresponsible with my emotions and it sucked and i would argue that person was a bad person but like that doesn't mean that like i'm entitled to sex with them even if they led me on it doesn't mean that like i am entitled to um living my life as some sort of like um miserly like misand or what's the word not misandrous the misogynist um just because like i don't know some trans women broke my heart like it happens okay like i don't know I think that, like, it's very hard for me to engage in good faith with the argument that with somebody who's trying to say that they should be able to have sex with a drunk girl because they can have sex with their, like, m m depressed girlfriend. Like, holy fuck. Um, that is terrifying, and I really hope that you rethink the way that you look at relationships between men and women and or maybe check yourself into a prison because you sound like a rapist. And What if you don't – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, um, and I was just going to say that, like – um, like, like, uh, being depressed is like, okay, like, this is where I feel like there's like some desperate need for people to actually talk to a therapist or somebody who actually understands mental health. Being depressed is not like an altered state of consciousness. We have a term for that. It's called an altered state of consciousness. It's like what happens when you do fucking shrooms or a fuckload of cocaine, or you get drunk off your ass and you cannot perceive reality the way that you normally would. That is an altered state of consciousness. Being depressed is a, is a minor mood swing. Even severe depression is, by comparison to an altered state of consciousness, a very minor mood swing. Now, if you want to talk about really severe things, guess what? We already have conversations, laws, rules around this. Did you know that if you rape a somebody who's severely mentally impaired, you can go to prison for that? Because guess what? If somebody is so mentally ill that they cannot acknowledge reality, they might be considered legally disabled and you have taken advantage of them. This is the reason why you can't just go and like, I don't know, uh, I don't know, pull a JF Gary Epi and like, and like lure someone who's severely mental ill into your w cabin in the woods outside of America and then abuse them. Yeah. It's, we call this, this is a bad thing. This is not a complicated thing. Depression, like people treat depression. Like it's like, like, first of all, again, this is where the ableism comes in. Do, like, do you know that most Americans right now, most young Americans are depressed? Do you think that means you can't have sex with any person because they're mildly depressed? D that's depression what some people in my chat are saying yeah. well they're fucking i'm sorry with all due respect i'm gonna be a little spicy here no, that's fine. holy fuck that is ridiculous please log off the internet and go have some life experiences i know or you know what log onto a discord and talk to some people and listen to them because that is 100 percent. that is rapey as fuck and i'm sorry i know you probably don't mean it that way but jesus christ this is why i now realize that i'm gonna have to talk about gender issues like Holy fuck, people on the internet have literally no concept of what a normal relationship with women is. And they think that if they think that you can't that that like it's an equivalent between like your girlfriend is feeling sad today versus your girlfriend is drunk. Well, if I can fuck her when she's when she's sad and she says yes, I can fuck her when I get her really drunk. Dude, that is rape. Fuck off. Holy shit. Sorry. That makes me mad, no, but I, I mean, feel like I, I feel like I'm yeah. rational to come down hard on that sort of thing. No, and I I feel so too they're saying that's not what they're saying i i just can't track what they're saying i think mostly um, what they're trying of, to say that, would yeah. be like they don't agree with the positive but they would agree with the negative okay. so if you shouldn't have sex with someone who's very drunk mm -hmm. you should not try to get in a relationship or have a sexual relationship with someone who's having like a really bad like a, a, like depression episode or anxiety episode and you're the person that they go to that is the same that is a comparable level of uh, abuse for that person in their mental state like let's say that you're there's someone that you know is having a really bad like uh, like i don't know maybe like uh, i'm not gonna say like anxiety attack but like it 
in in like a really um a bad state of mind and you're the person that they go to for that if you like lever that into getting sex from them that is that is also very bad. Oh, I would but agree. agree. Like, for example, well, here, here, let me give you an example of one that I think would be bad. I think depression is like a, a hilariously bad example. Um, but like if somebody was having a severe schizophrenic episode, like you had a partner and they were having um, par like paranoid delusions and or um, hallucinations and you used that to have sex with them. Yeah, you would be a rapist. Um, that is not I don't feel like that's a hot take. There you go. That not, has nothing to do with fucking depression. There's people like these people just need to actually know what they're talking about. Okay, what they're what they're saying is, um, if someone is in a in a depressed state and they wouldn't normally sleep with you, but because they're very depressed, um, they they are, and you're taking advantage of the fact that they're sad. Um, of course, I think we all agree that like taking advantage of someone because of a yeah, I think that could be emotional state. Yeah, like it's but, a, a, it's taking advantage of someone's like emotional state, um, to you know right, coerce but, them into sex. I mean, yeah, but I mean the level of coercion, of course, matters, right? Like obviously, yeah. if you're like being really pushy, but like what, like what are you saying? Like I don't know, like I've had I've been really sad and I've had sex with my partner, consensually. No, I, was I don't just think like, that. Like yeah, like I don't, I don't know, like this seems saying. like I don't know what this feels like. Is this feels like a weird, a very strange what aboutism that is like, uh, like like ha that seems to come from someone who doesn't have an understanding of how moods are what emotions are and what like altered states of consciousness are and how different those things are that's all i'm saying like you can be in a bad mood like for example um like i can make tons and tons of rational decisions while extremely horny i've done it most of my life i'm a very horny individual there you go now you know about it um and i make rational decisions all the time it's really simple it's really easy now I don't do – here's an example of something else. Um, unless I explicitly, like, tell my chat that I'm doing that. Like, for example, when I did election night, I was like, I'm drinking and I'm smoking tonight. There you go. You get to have a drunken high stream. Other than that, I do not use drugs or any or alcohol while I'm on stream. You want to know why? Well, because it puts you in an altered state where I don't do my best and I have different thoughts and whatever. Now, those things can be perfectly valuable, but I don't do – I don't combine those two. Um, Yeah. Yeah, on the on the point of the uh, of the original of the original post, mm -hmm. right? If you take someone, if you take someone who has, let's say, like, dude, I don't like, uh, let's say, ethnic incel instead of a cultural incel. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, let's try. Yeah, you know what you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like you have an ethnic incel, right? Obviously, I mean, in this case, they don't pay women or harbor any like. Uh, uh, ill will towards any like other group of people. Sure, They're sure. just a very sad person who doesn't doesn't have good interpersonal skills. Sure, can't really talk to people. Doesn't have a friend group. Maybe even doesn't have like a real family to fall back onto. Mm -hmm. They're just like a real. They're just that that type of person, right? When when it comes to obviously not the uh, not the uh, you know relating back to the relating back to the post. Mm -hmm. Obviously not the physical like so you could be impregnated if you're a girl and someone like uses you for sex, right? Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but even still, if it's like a consensual hookup that, uh, that I think that, uh, that, that problem still exists. Okay. Um, so, so if, so if you have that, would you, would you agree that the, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you can even say maybe not like comfortable, uh, comparable, but when, if you, if someone uses that person in that, in that same state as like someone like leading someone, or maybe not even like leading someone like kind of. I mean, I, I would say honestly, I'd say probably being like a little bit abusive if you know if you know like a, about their life and you like that could be really that like that. That could be basically what you're saying is like if somebody who is like socially like I I inexperienced and they got led on by like a girl or whatever or like um, that girl like like uh, engaged in like a really like one sided friendship where they were taking a lot from um, somebody else or something along those lines like that would be are you trying to ask if that would be a bad thing? Um, if it would be a bad thing, but if if you would, would you would you say that that would be a, a the comparable to using someone uh, for sex? To using someone so for, sex? for sex? Yeah, depending on the circumstance. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fine. Like, I mean, and I agreed to that at the very beginning of the conversation. It's just that as we went on from there, some more like weird statements and really troubling things came up. It's oh, not rape, absolutely not. But no, but like using them maybe. Like if somebody, if like if like a dude like lied and was like, oh yeah, hey baby, like um, I can't wait to see you in the morning, and then they fucked and then he like just ghosted. Yeah, that's pretty hurtful. That could be really hurtful to somebody, and I would say that's 
that's pretty fair to say that's like equivalent to like or or at least very similar in the same ballpark of like a um of like a like a dude getting used as like like a one-sided friendship where the like woman is deliberately um misleading him and stuff like that but the problem was of course again if we not right now but in the context of the original conversation i tried to suss out what those lines were and his line was that a dude would and i and i quote this is as close to a direct quote as i can possibly get from my memory that a dude would be completely and he said that very explicitly multiple times completely justified to assume that a girl was flirting with him if they even so much as commented cute on his photo and i think that's a really ridiculous line and i think that plays into exactly what i'm talking about like if you if girls can't even give a compliment to men without being per- perceived as being flirting and coming on to the man and that's justified in his worldview. I disagree with this worldview. And that's what he said. I I remember that being brought up in the second um conversation you had with him. No, and, it happened in the first um, one. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Did it did he did he not talk maybe maybe I'm just misremembering. Um I I feel like there's um a, a certain level of um like social like of course like we we've already got over the fact that like a lot of this is just, like social conditioning yeah. um but um it, it, if a if a girl walked up to me and just like said i'm looking cute today it would feel very strange um and i i don't know how to normalize that without having a bunch of very negative um consequences at the at the outset yeah. um of you know like we should normalize girls giving um, compliments to guys about their appearance, right? We can't um, right now because of well, right? Yeah, because of the mentality of well, quite frankly, people like the Scrub King. We can't because if you live in a world where even so much as complimenting a man's appearance is considered coming on to them, well, that will by definition be a hostile world, and you will not get that because the thing is, like, I mean, here's the thing. Again, I'm very lucky. In that, uh, I guess, um, in that, uh, you know, I've only been like sexually uh, harassed a, a few times and um, and that, uh, you know, my male friends, I walk up to them and tell them I think they look good all the time. And there's no assumption that I'm like macking on my male friends. But that but that would be different if because saying like, oh, you have a, you have a nice shirt. You look nice today. Wow, you actually did your hair. Yeah, That's incredibly cute today. Your whatever. Face. Do you know that women like I don't know like maybe this is something that men don't know. I mean I think there are a lot of men who just literally don't have any social reaction like interactions with women at all. Um, but like, do men know that like women compliment each other all the fucking time? That like women yeah. are just constantly supporting one another. Like for the most part, not all women, but a lot of times. My my female friends are like super fucking supportive of of what like we all support each other a ton and i think that like also a lot of the men i know after this conversation i reached out to some of my closest male friends and asked like how frequently do you get compliments and they were like these are ones of course that i trust and they're like oh pretty frequently like nobody feels uncomfortable to give them compliments so it looks like once you open the door for it to be safe for them to do so where they're not going to be expected to have to turn you down for a date or have to deal with you macking on them and giving them pressure. Well, hey, looks as it turns out, women are more than willing to give compliments. But see, there's this like there's this worldview that women are just like secretly hiding away all the compliments because they secretly hate men or some shit. I don't know. It's so exhausting. I, and, well, I, I disagree with that because like I wouldn't immediately like, you know, like start molesting someone that said that I was cute. Um, nope, and, I but like, it's not even close to what I was talking about, but yeah. Oh, sorry. But you, yeah. you mean like macking on them or expecting to like, you know, um, it, it would, it would feel weird. And I guess that's like the societal part of it. Um, d- fuck, there was, there was a second part to what I was going to say and I've lost it. Because... Wait, so, wait, so you <laughs> said, so you said women compliment each other. Yeah, all lot, the time. Uh, oh, lot, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, you know, definitely. And I, for me, from, from my, for me and my guy friends, we, um, we, um, my boyfriends. Uh, we uh, uh we compliment each other a, a whole lot. Like, hey man, nice ass. You looking like a whole snack today, right? Yeah, but yeah. then it's for that. It's like a little bit more hyperbolic, even if it's you know. Well, yeah, it is for women too. A like, 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 little bit, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so if you like look cute or something, so I, obviously that would obviously in my head be boiled down to you look nice today, right? But that wouldn't be boiled down to you're cute, like in in like in particular. If I was just like outside. 
doing my thing and a girl like stopped and was like you're really cute um i i what i mean it might i can be like you you look nice thank you or you're really cute too that sounds like an uh, that sounds like more that sounds more of an opening because i because I, I i got complimented the other day um about uh, uh my uh my denim jacket that i was wearing i was at work this girl was like i really like your jacket you look nice i was like oh thanks and and that wasn't that was anything but if she said you're really cute um something like i feel like that'd be a different conversation yeah, but i just i just am like um but i mean that's great we're having a different conversation than the one i had with the mm. scrub king and the way the scrub king went about it was to in instantaneously say that a guy would be 100 percent justified in interpreting that as flirting and i just don't think that's true i don't think they would be and in fact i mean fuck i can think of examples i mean i remember i was once walking in capitol hill here in seattle and a, a guy who was an older guy who like like i think some people might be like kind of creeped out because he was like an older kind of disheveled guy probably homeless came up to me and was like hey i just you think you i think you look really great and i love your lip piercing and i was like oh thank you and it really warmed my heart and he didn't push he didn't flirt afterwards i didn't interpret it as flirting he just came up and he was like hey i think you look really good i love your lip piercing and i'm like thanks that was wholesome. Um, but, that would, but that would be the uh, same thing yeah. as like what I said originally, which is yeah. you just look nice and not you're cute. Yeah. Or like you're I mean, really I don't even pretty. I don't remember the exact wording he said. Like, but people, you want to know another example of this? Um, okay, here's another example. I was in a um, I was in a, a gas station, and again, I am very gay, and like I don't exactly hide that. Um, and I was dressed something similar to this. Like I just had my like, sort of like general like kind of like soft butch outfit on, and I went into um. Uh, I went into um, a gas station and there was this tall ass dude, this tall guy with really fucking clean cut. And I don't again, I don't really like like I don't I'm not super attracted to men or anything. And we were standing in line and I'm really fucking tall. And I walked out and he climbed it and he had a really nice car, too. And he, he leaned out and he was like, damn, girl, you're, you're fine as fuck. And that's what he said to me. And I was like, whoa, thank you. And that was it. And it was great. And I, that was somebody explicitly like saying something very strong, and it would, I didn't interpret it as flirting. Just somebody telling me I looked really fucking good. Yeah. Um, okay. I have I have two quick questions. One from chat, and um, then the second one that I just remembered. I'm gonna do the second one first because otherwise I'm gonna forget. Sure. Um. Uh. So like, do you think that there is a um. A a way that um women don't know how to compliment men because of this. Um, like from personal experience, um, like at, I've talked to Shark about this before. Like I, I've been at bars, and um, I, I feel like because women either like don't know how to like compliment someone or how to do things without like immediately coming off um, uh, like super flirty. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll do something that is uh very like like not like it, it are you, are you on, asking like, like, like um, person. do you do you think that like women don't know how to compliment men because of like this as well right um i mean i think a lot of women know how to compliment men i just think they don't they, like they don't do it because they're nervous like yeah. like do you like i don't know like again i am not a het woman and like i I and I'm also big and strong and like I told this story to to scrub king if you remember this I told the story about the guy blocking me with his van and like that is an experience of me as somebody who's not interested in men not going after men not going and like looking for men at bars or anything like that has experienced I don't blame women for being very scared I don't blame women for um feeling pretty nervous and uh there were no multiple conversations that happened on my discord afterwards with mixed gender uh conversations about how you know men a lot of men who are honest with themselves they don't fucking feel scared out in public women do women get like yeah. you know it, it harassed they get wolf whistled all the time it's a very common experience for women and like um yeah it sucks um i do think that like like that there's certainly a part of it that's on like w like women i don't know that it's that they don't know it's just they don't because again like most women are trying to keep their attention from men most women not all to, to a minimum until they find a man that they trust or that they think is like particularly uh 
hot or, or virtuous that they actually want to and then they engage but that's because of how fraught gender relations are in our society i don't think that that's like because they don't know how i think women do know how to compliment men it's just they know from personal experience that they're going to be constantly constantly getting unwanted attention from men and they don't want to invite any more to them especially knowing that me that there's a ton of men out there who will take any compliment as a sign of flirting which does scrub yeah. king prove yeah no, i mean just, like I any compliment oh, yeah like any compliment is a sign of flirting. Like, yeah, I mean, that's that that's pretty bad. I think I think we've all probably I don't, I don't know, but for me personally, if I'm hanging out with some of my some of my uh, uh, friends, if that ever happens, yeah. I mean, it, it happens sometimes. You um you you we read way way too into it, and that's so you get, hopefully you have somebody to, like pull you uh pull your head out your ass when it when it comes to that. Well, but in in that scenario that you that you brought up, where the dude like poked his head out of his car, and you're like, damn girl, you're fine as fuck. Yeah. That that in no way seemed as like not even an invitation for flirting for you at all no he just he just he literally said that and then he waved and closed the door of his car and that was it and he left he didn't come after me he didn't do anything else that's it i said thank you like i was very very nice he didn't ask me for a date nothing he just said it was literally i'm not kidding you i remember this this was such a random experience that happened to me three years ago i remember this because it was such a positive experience no expectations just someone saying i looked nice on a day that i didn't even think i looked nice so yeah okay. that's actually so, great I, mean, I wish we could have more I mean, of that the... sure. I mean, yeah no absolutely but in that scenario he seemed like he was leaving so i'm not, I'm not even sure if he wanted like more of a conversation yeah, okay. any um yeah, and but... you know obviously you didn't but the, didn't the either, example so that, that i brought up just for the record out. like in, in the example i brought up on um with the scrub king was not even in person it was just you, like a dude sends uh, a, a dude like that has like loose you know knowledge of, a, of another girl they're like you know they don't necessarily they're not friends they're not necessarily enemies or anything like that they just kind of know who each other are um guy sends a picture is like hey how do i look and then she's like hey you look cute and then he said that that example that i gave out was an example of it would be perfectly justified for that guy to interpret that as flirting i don't think that's reasonable i think that leads to a world where we can't say nice things out around each other um and that's not even the again that if that was the only thing we were talking about that would be one thing but if we go into reality it, it, mm -hmm. it there's so much more than this um like uh, most girls don't question, even don't even well, yeah. okay yeah you're good for it sorry no i was uh, just no, saying like um not, yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm dumb as fuck you finish your statement oh, then i'll go <laughs> yeah no no it's fine it's fine i've i've been talking a lot yeah. cuz i've been getting questioned a lot and yeah. stuff but it's fine um yeah. like i was just going to say like i think that um i think that like um that was just like that was just the first of like uh, of of what i had intended to be a couple of questions to kind of figure out where these lines are and to me that indicates that the line is incredibly low if men are if if like men are completely are, are in his own words totally justified in feeling like that was flirting i feel like that sets the yeah. bar really low and i would say okay like and and here's the thing i know from experience that most women if they do do that are not even going to be like bothered if they if the guy ends up flirting a little bit back but it almost always goes worse than that it's so common like fuck sexual harassment is so normal in our society and we have to start pushing back on that by breaking these sort of preconceptions by like breaking the idea that women can't say anything to men without it being interpreted as flirting is especially when there's and again this was within the parameters of a conversation that was 100% cishet. That was the assumption that everyone is heterosexual. What, what, do you think, like, all, like, lesbians should, like, not, like, should expect to be flirted back whenever they compliment a guy? Nah, I just, I feel like this is such a d dystopian I think world. That, yeah. I, I think that in terms of, like, the heteronormative part, um, I, I mean, I'm bi, but I've never been in a relationship with a guy. And so it's kind of hard to, and I'm not, like, a, a huge part of the LGBT community where I am at mm -hmm. or like even growing up. And so like, I can understand why it might be like difficult to think outside of that and think that it's in any way different. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing that I want to ask is like when uh, there, I think that there might be a, a difference in just like terminology and justified um, because I might be able to see what scrub King is trying to say there um, because in justified, it might he might be thinking of it like justified in his emotional response being a a, a certain way because of how they were um sure. raised mm -hmm. right like soci but, society but yeah I, I i think that i could agree with that like mm -hmm. it would be a justified 
thing in terms of how they're thinking because of the way that they were raised. Um, it wouldn't be justifiable in like the greater scope of things, but do you think that's possibly what he meant by that? Um, like, it mean maybe, that okay. but we never got to it. Like, I don't know. Like, we could have had that conversation about what he meant by justified, but he was very strong in that statement and immediately wanted to talk about other things. So it didn't happen. Um, well, now, let's try and go down yeah, that line yeah, then. For like, sure. If, it, if, if he meant it in the way that I just said, do well, you think that that is more defensible? Um, maybe. Like, it depends on how far you take, how far you stretch the word justifiable. Like, for example, mm -hmm. um, I understand and can... Um, like i can i can intellectualize and understand like how a racist might come to the position of being racist but that doesn't mean i think they're justified um like i think that like all people are are the um the and i, I think i talked about this with him i don't remember 100 percent, but um i don't I vaguely remember this yeah, yeah like i don't think uh i i do think that like um um okay so so sorry i lost my train of thought there a little bit um yeah, so, okay, it depends on how far we go with the term justified. Like, I would not say that, like, a, a racist who, like, like a very racist person who had, like, a bad experience with someone of, of who's not of their race is justified in being racist. I would say that maybe it's understandable how they came to that position, but that doesn't mean that it's right. And um, that's, we never, cro we never actually finished that point to determine whether he was saying whether he thinks they're correct in that assumption or whether, uh, and when he says justified, or whether he means like, oh, I can understand how they got there. And we never got yeah. to that point, and that's okay. Like, I think if we're being yeah. charitable, I think that he would agree with what you just said. Um, but uh, the, I mean, the following points did not indicate that. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. The following points, that's where I started to say, I don't even know if it matters if he if he says that, because his following points would indicate that he thinks that they're totally like totally valid in all those things and that he looks that he thinks that women need to like just just more or less buck up and 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 give more compliments like that's how it felt like the conversation went um but even in this context like do i think it's understandable how men would come to that understanding yeah but i also think uh like i can understand how they came there but i also think they're wrong and i think it's important that we challenge people like you don't like like, we shouldn't just say, oh, yeah, I get why they would think that, and that's an excuse. No, you have to say, listen, like, like maybe a parent or a brother or a sister who goes, hey, like, little bro, like, I know that that, that girl said that, like, your, your Instagram photo was cute, but that doesn't mean she's in love with you, you know? And then he goes, oh, really? And then you go, yeah. And then they go, okay. And it's like, well, why do you think that? And then you talk about it, and then you have a talk about it. Like, you have to, like, we can't just, like, say, oh, well, it's understandable, therefore it's okay. It isn't. It's not okay. It's... And especially because, again, especially when we take the step back and we stop using just the hypothetical, because the reality is that men in our society, like rape culture is absolutely still a thing that still exists to this day. And it goes way beyond just men thinking they're entitled to like uh, a lot of men thinking they're entitled to like a, a lot of attention because they got a single compliment. It goes way more than that. Like Lonnie, Lonnie just said in, in chat, like. I got a, uh, she got a, a dick pic from a guy that she hasn't talked to in like, in like three months, just out of the blue. Like that is normal. Dick pics are so common. Like, I don't think, I don't think yeah. a lot of guys like actually know how much sexual harassment women actually get on a regular basis. Arsis, oh, three years. Oh my God. So there you go. Yeah, Even worse. I think that there are a lot of guys that don't really get that kind of, um, frame of reference until they are able to like um make friends that are just friends with women mm -hmm. um because certainly i did not realize how common that was um until you know like maybe like two or three years ago mm -hmm. um but uh yeah that's a uh yeah. that is a really fucking weird uh thing that is very very um common um and I, I i can't say that i've ever been in the in the frame of mind to just send an unsolicited dick pic um i'm very glad i, I yeah I, mean, um, I think a lot of guys aren't in that mind but at the same time i think there is um so many guys who are so entitled to female attention to female um sexual attention specifically um that it is still a massive problem which has been downplayed well, 
in in this entire my conversation. Question, yeah. yeah, my my question there would be mm -hmm. how much of it is entitled to women's attention and how much of it is just like really really like egregious levels of loneliness because I I notice like in the the male friends I have mm -hmm. uh, all the all the dudes like um and you know I'm I'm a fairly nerdy dude. Most of my friend, I'm I'm the Chad of my group, and that's saying something, right? I I'm not like a a workout buff or anything, yeah, yeah. and so like a lot of these guys are like really really lonely, and I don't think they're the kind of guys that send dick pics or anything. Sure. But I um I wonder how much of it is like a feeling of entitlement, mm -hmm. and how much of it is um just like incredible loneliness and in thinking like. Well, maybe this will like it would be an incredibly fucking crazy leap of logic, yeah. but it seems like perhaps it's a leap of logic that is taking place in a lot of people. Well, it's just a to, it's a leap of logic yeah. that is built off of um, that only exists like that that uh, that occurs to people as a product of a society that tells them that's like something okay to even consider, and like I think most the fa fact of the matter is like I think we can all sit here and admit that's really fucking bad. If sending an unsolicited dick pic is pretty fucked. Yeah, no, it, but it's but there's but nonetheless Texas. yeah, but now but there's nonetheless a lot of people who do it. So we have a society that makes that sort of thing normal. We have that that entitlement is again not individual men necessarily are all individually entitled, but as a class, men do feel entitled to the the um, attention of of women. And I think also like um, the other answer I would give to that is like there are many ways to solve loneliness and some of the ways that you try to solve loneliness might make you more lonely. And I like, for example, sure. I think trying to solve loneliness by joining an incel space is probably one of the worst things you could ever do to ever actually have a shot at leaving loneliness in cell spaces. Like sure. What's that? That's just silly to you. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, literally they have a mentality of like lay, uh, um lay down and rot. Yeah, lay down and rot. Yeah, or whatever it's called. Lay down and die or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, lay down and rot. Like, yeah, there are a lot of ways that you can choose to try and solve a problem, and some of them are worse than others. Um, I would argue that um the sliding scale of the ways that lots of there are many men that try to solve their problems with loneliness um are pretty fucking bad and they come at the expense of women who have done nothing to deserve it. And I think we should solve that because I think that's a huge problem. But yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. One um, one thing yeah. that I wanted to, because I was still thinking about like the compliment thing. Mm -hmm. So, so like, so when it comes, so when it comes to that, I, I feel like, would would you say like it isn't? We and we may be working off different definitions of flirting. Mm -hmm. So it, it it wouldn't be like they take that as uh, as flirting, but mm -hmm. more as they they feel like this is an opening to jump to things that uh, that don't logically follow, like yeah. like pursuing this person or outright like asking for like a date or something or like commenting on them like sexually and like these are the or like these are the things that that'd be the problem and not like if someone's uh, is like oh you're cute and then you're and you, then you're like oh you look very nice and that's like an opening for a conversation and then at the end you ask for their no, number No I mean like I don't think like I think obviously like people still have to flirt people still have to have engagements I mean I, otherwise people will just retract away into like a a lonely life of never talking to one another. Obviously, there are some risks involved in mm -hmm. all social engagements, but but again, this was just the first of a question designed to figure out where the lines were, and it was that bar was set right there of just like, oh yeah, yeah, men would be totally totally justified to think that this is flirting. It's like, oh boy, okay, so this person that just accepts that the status quo is fine, that the status quo of all of these assumptions being made of women constantly feeling burdened by their activity, feeling like they live in prisons. And I mean, this is the thing. If you talk to women, um, like if you go listen, listen to some of like the prime Kai's all, all femme presenting panels and listen to how women talk about how they feel about being able to express themselves. Women, many women in our society, most women, you know, probably feel like they cannot express themselves freely ever. They feel like they are constantly um, policed they feel like they have to be incredibly careful with every single thing that they do. Every action they do is being scrutinized. And I agree with that analysis because it's true. And, uh, and the, numbers, the numbers of rapes, the numbers of sexual assault in our society does speak for that. And I just think we have, to, we have to recognize that that's a problem and fix it. And it's uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. But it does mean we have to address it. So it's like, I don't know. Um, when you mean scrutinize, you mean in like a, a, a way that is like 
possibly perceived as flirty or like in some sexual way or... oh all, in in every single way not just not just that but like, I mean, think about this like yeah. th think about the schools think about the number of schools in america this is just a small example of what i'm talking about think about the number of schools in america that have dress codes um that are incredibly strict about what type of clothing women can wear so as to not literally often sometimes written into the dress code itself so as not to distract teachers and students at the school yeah i've had a yeah, conversation with you on fun kai yeah, but that I mean, happened on my, uh, my school. Yeah, and it was um, it it's was called leggings, and you had to like come. We had a good, we got a new supreme, uh, supreme intent, uh, superintendent, yeah. And so she changed it to now w women can wear leggings, you know, big ups. Yeah. They do have to cover their butt with like a like a cardigan or something. And the thing is, like on, on all the posters, it was only women. So I got like me and my guy friends, and uh, we all we all wore leggings that day. And it was, it, it, uh, but that's a that's a story for for another day. It, it was really, it, honestly, it was really really funny. Um, I got yeah, a, but see, to me. That's a positive. That's a positive way of fighting back against sexism. You literally took, like, I mean, it's 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 maybe silly in high school or whatever, but you took direct action to show how ridiculous their policy is. But those policies are nonetheless, and for the for how it refers to this argument, commonplace. And so that's what I'm trying to. That's what I was trying to make clear desperately in that conversation, and I don't think it was ever allowed. And I think now, as we're looking at the, as I'm looking back at the crater that is my timeline and my dms and everything like that i'm just like yeah you can't even talk about sexism without getting um told that you are a active harm to women and by two gamer guys by the way two dudes who've determined that i'm a danger to women and i'm a danger to trans people yeah okay so yeah that's my i don't know i guess we've talked about that i've talked about this for like yeah. five and a half well, six hours now i've been talking about this particular issue as, as one sure. as, as like an end cap to this sure sure what yeah, what what do you think that um, dudes can can go like? How would you uh, say guys can go about um, helping with this? Like, if a if a girl calls them cute and then they're like, "Oh no, guys, this girl she wants my dick." Um, I mean, like, I know how I would engage with that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if if you would agree with it, um, but yeah. like, I, I'd be curious to hear what like your kind of um, prescription for that is yeah what i is mean what remedy? i would say is like i think that dudes should have more frank um and humanizing discussions about women among themselves that when they're talking about women they should make an effort to try and get in the woman's head and just be like hey I'm, you know like don't, don't go too hard on this like let's keep it easy dude it's just a comp it's just a compliment like don't downplay things be like hey that's fucking cool that you got complimented but if they're like oh yeah i'm gonna fucking bang this girl be like oh slow down dude you know what i mean like fucking just have it like i think that men need to reg like make it normal to like i mean this goes as far as like even film right like and this is again this is a little bit of an anecdote but i'm trying to illustrate what i'm trying to say here which is that like um like you know you, the, the the like sort of like meme of the bechdel test that like most women most movies never have scenes of like women talking to other women unless they're talking specifically about a male character um mm. and that's kind of weird right well i mean likewise when men are hanging out with other men or if they're in mixed company like you know what i mean if it's like a group of men and women it really makes a difference if men take the time to actually go out of their way to challenge the ways that our society says that women should be and like hey give humanity to the woman give agency to the woman make a mission to actually be like whoa actually maybe maybe she has a point here maybe there's some assumptions going on here i'm not saying to like fucking always like always squad w or whatever the fuck they say that meme is mm -hmm. but it's like but give it a chance because women get a remarkably low amount of charitability um and are so it is so fast like in i mean mm -hmm. god i can i can't even tell you the examples of this that i have just how quickly men will conclude that oh, she's just a fucking screeching emo over emotional bitch and they'll back each other up on that big time and it's like okay um, well like, yeah that feels really dehumanizing like try to humanize the people you're engaging with it doesn't mean that there's not going to be an at like a horrible woman that your friend engages with but try to make try to see if there's ways that you can maybe you know combat those a little bit and that's one way i would say and then the other thing is the, that there's the like yeah okay. go for it yeah i mean the other thing too is that there are larger systemic ways of fighting this making it um making it possible um for example, for women to fighting for like if we're talking on a broad political scale and not just what like individual men can do, like you can support really progressive policies. You can support laws that make it possible for women to more easily leave their abusive partners. You can support more equal pay. You can support like all kinds of stuff like this, because one of the reasons why like um, like for a long time, like women were controlled in society by the fact that 
well, guess what? You can't leave your husband because you only have food and housing because of your husband. You know what I mean? That has to be completed because you, until that happens, if that's the life that, and still a lot of women live in that kind of existence, not completely, but it still is a big problem. And there's a lot of abuse towards women still to this day um, that the, until those things are like fixed on a, like a slightly larger systemic level, you're going to have a position where women are always or very frequently in the economic weak position and they can't actually express themselves without literally having to, well, okay, I guess I have to think about whether my kids and I are going to eat, you know, I don't know. Right. Yeah. And, and I, and I think that like, you, you would agree, like there's like a, a negative side on the other end of that coin where like men feel like they have to be like the breadwinner, like, like just because we're saying like, um, women feel like they they have to be with a guy because he's the breadwinner like there's also like a negative expectation on men to be like the um the you know like the the alpha like make a lot of money and if you don't like mm -hmm. make all the money and make sure that your wife is able to um stay home and take care of the kids then you're like a horrible person 100 percent agree in fact yeah one of the things i think is really cool that's like kind of like an a a libby id poly um, kind of cringy, but nonetheless, I bet very positive is the, um, like the dad bod fad, like of people posting pictures of themselves with the dad bod with their kids. And like, I'm a stay at home dad. I think we should celebrate the fuck out of stay at home dads because that shows that, Hey, it's actually okay. And it's not only okay, it's super cool. If you're a dad who stays at home, that's fucking awesome. But you know, part of that, excuse me, part of that, I've got hiccups really bad all of a sudden, but you're fine. Part of that does, um, you know, there's, you know, then we start coming up against the far right and all that stuff. But, you know, yeah, yeah I think that we should do things like that. Like, I mean, I make it a mission to like celebrate, um, people of all body types, trans people, um, you know, of all of all body types, men, women, everybody, fucking every single person. I want to talk about how we can be more positive about people's bodies, about people's roles, not just their bodies, but how we can talk about how like, hey. Like, are you a like a femi guy who wants to do art? That's fucking awesome. You can be that. You don't have to be, m you know, a military guy. If you want to be a military guy, it's great. If you want to, well, okay, but you know what I mean. If you want to be, <laughs> if you want to be all that aesthetic of like, yeah, I'm, I'm hardcore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I'm a hero. Like, that's okay. You can do that too. But just like, yeah, like fuck. There's so little support for that. And like, I mean, but again, I don't think that. I, I do think there's a tendency. Unfortunately, for a lot of these conversations to always end up being hijacked about like how what women telling guys what they need to do and guys got to figure it out too. You know, guys got to take care of each other. Fuck, like talk about some of that solidarity. Take care of one another. Mask yeah, people got to take care I, of one another and they don't. Yeah, I, I find it difficult to because sometimes I'll bring up a um, like a negative thing that happens with men and then I'll have someone in my chat that says all right but that's because you know xyz with women and then it's uh it gets turned into like um which is the more oppressed class and it's yeah. like well i would say women but they're like it, it's not just like uh, it's not a zero-sum game or like who is the more oppressed one like it we have to in order to fix the problem we have to go at it from both ends yeah um but Fair. yeah we're dudes who um, say and, that like women have life on easy mode i can't oh no, that uh, happens all the fucking time i mean hell mm -hmm. even in the conversation i had with the scrub king we got onto the topic like slightly of like titty streamers and immediately the idea of like oh they they're just oh they have it so easy they just put their tits out it's like oh you really don't understand what it's like to be a fucking woman in public just shut the fuck up please um like but but yeah no i i agree um like Fuck, hold on. I wanna, I wanna make sure I'm not losing my, my train of thought. Like, mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah, it is complicated, and I do think, I think it's really unhelpful in general for people to make like things into um, oppression Olympics. Um, so I think people, if somebody's talking about like men's issues and they're doing it seriously and in good faith, hey, fucking talk about that. Let let people talk about that and don't fucking like try to spin spin it off into something else. And at the same time happens all the time i think people have a tendency to assume that like oh we fixed all the gender problems but the fact of the matter is that in most places in most of the u.s are still incredibly patriarchal and incredibly sexist and so women's rights still aren't accepted as a norm now in lefty spaces women's rights are so sometimes it can seem like i know like i can remember an iconic vosh thing where he did like this one's for the men he did like a stream talking about men's issues and he was like oh you fuckers in chat like you know freaking out about like oh you you people come in here well, what about the women you know, we're talking about men right now and i think that's perfectly no fine. femoids in chat yeah, God no, damn no it. femoids yeah. in chat or whatever 
Um, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, I think yeah. that we should be careful about that, but also remember that, like, people, um, people get, uh, again, like, I don't think they're right. I, I just think that, like, um, people, uh, often engage in places where women's rights are not, a pr uh, presumed as a norm, and then they come in, uh, you know, and they might be a little bit, a little bit primed to think like oh you're talking about men rights issues oh i see we're gonna start erasing women here because that's what happens a lot it does happen a fucking lot still um but yeah just as this is me speaking as a broadcaster you know gently um give a little pushback to those people because it is important to talk about men's issues it very 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 much is and men should be encouraged to talk about men's issues in a way that's humanizing to women and that's humanizing to men and that's humanizing to trans people and non-binary people that's the way that you should yeah. do it and i believe very strongly in that and i've done that on my stream many times so people again the idea like the fucking manifesto and all this shit that's talking about me being like the worst feminist that you could exist that i the hate men and all this crazy. Shit. of course it is i mean doesn't it feel a little <laughs> weird that like a woman has an opinion online in one debate and then ends up with a manifesto written about her do you see how hostile this is like i can't even fucking go in a, a day without somebody fucking jumping down my throat about something stupid anyway um any other yeah. things you want to drop because i know uh, dr heem doubt wants to come on and i told him i would let him come on so we could talk about this a little bit yeah no I, i'll let you go unless uh shark has something oh no i think uh about uh, about just got uh about everything that i needed also Excellent. hi lonnie um i got to speak to lonnie a little bit a, a little while ago and she seems great if she's still watching so yeah. just wanted to say hi but hey. yeah it was nice speaking to you when we could do it again yeah absolutely it was a w it was wonderful talking to both of you and i'm really glad we ended up having this sort of like full fleshed out conversation sorry if i was a little bit like exasperated no, I, at the I, beginning like i was trying my best but i was just like a little confused as to what we we're talking about but um seriously yeah, yeah everybody follow follow these two yeah. like they're both like uh, fucking sansol and uh, shark this is my first time talking to you it's been extremely pleasant um i'd like to see why you think i'm a lib but um <laughs> but we'll do that for another day um sansol we've had many good conversations uh give give these two a fucking follow and might i say just so you know uh both of you are indeed looking wonderful today both of you have fucking incredible oh, hair can i can i say that like because um oh, actually that was the first comment that people said when you both came out like, holy fuck we got we got two people with fucking good ass looking hair on here yeah. so hell yeah all right Sick. All right. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you I'll so much you later, for coming right? on, Doctor right, Heemed. Hello, Doctor Heemed out. Hey, can you hear me? Just one second. Yeah. Let me make sure my audio is correct. Testing, testing. Hello, hello. Hey, Demon how you Momo. doing? How are you? Uh, Happy uh, New Year. Yeah, thank you. Happy New Year to you as well. Um, what are your pronouns, by the way? He, him. He, him. All right. Let me get your name up on here. Do you want to be on camera or do you just want to be on voice? I can do camera, I don't mind. Okay, sick. All right, let me um, bring you up on camera. There we go. Do, 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 do. Go ahead and turn your camera on for uh, for, for Discord. It's still not giving me the option. Oh, shit. Oh, I know why. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The same problem okay. I had last time. You are now given the content creator role, so you should be able to stream in. Hello. Hey. Hello. How do you do? Good. How are you? Um, you must be exhausted. I am literally so absolutely motherfucking tired. But guess what? This is my life, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm here for it. All right. Listen, I can't complain. I think what you're I think what you're trying to say is you didn't choose the game. The game chose you. True. Yes, indeed. That is true. <laughs> oh shit! More people linking the manifesto. It's at like a thousand upvotes. Number one upvoted thing on on DGG. Yeah, they definitely aren't mad though. Okay. All right, let's talk. What you got for All me, right. Dr. Heem? It's great to talk with you again. We haven't talked in a long time. I know. We haven't talked in a very long time. So, okay, I just have a few things written down. Uh, a lot of things I agree with you on and some things I disagree with you on. Sure. So, first of all, I will say I do think there's a major problem with the way that men um, socialize with other men and with women and with people in general. Mm -hmm. And I, to be honest, as someone who's an immigrant to the, to this country, mm -hmm. I think a big problem of this is with the nuclear family model. Um, I think it's because kids in general lack the um, understanding to read a room, to, I don't know, take social cues, uh, body language, all of these things. We aren't trained to do these things in North America. And I, and I realize this when I see my cousins that grow up in Iran versus yeah. my cousins that are grown up here. And they just they're missing that that 
that connection more, right? Hundred percent. And if you don't teach people this at a young age, they grow up to have a toxic um, mentality that's hard to break. And I think one of the things the Scrub King said that you agreed with him on is that like you're really not going to change people much once they're in their mid twenties or thirties, right? Uh, did he? He remember. said that at one point, yeah. Oh, he I mean, that, I don't like, know. It depends. I mean, I look. I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of discourse that can go on about that. Um, I actually think that people in their twenties um, and thirties uh, do quite a lot of changing. In fact, um, if I look at myself at the beginning of my twenties versus me now, now just having passed and into the, my thirties, um, I have grown mo- faster and more meaningfully in my twenties than I did in my teens. So, I mean, I mean, uh, that that's definitely fair, but yeah. like, I think it's also fair to say that, you know, for most people, some of their core values are, or, you know, especially when it comes to socialization, like these are things that if you're taught these at, a, at an early yeah. age, it helps you a lot going forward. Right? Yes. Okay. That much I will okay. agree with. I think that like being like certain uh, things being taught when you're young, it can be incredibly helpful and can save you a lot of pain in your older life. Yes. I will agree with you on that. hundred percent. Yeah, so and oh. I don't think that Scrub King would disagree about the, any of this. One either. quick question. Sorry, I just realized yeah. I may have spelled your name wrong. Is it is is yeah. Doctor it's, spelled out? No, no, or it's just it's Dr. Just the Dr. Yeah. Okay, so, sorry about that. I'm really really no, sorry. It's about okay. That. Let me fix it's okay, that real okay. quick. No um, worries. Um, speaking of, here we go. Dr. Sorry about that. That makes me feel really bad. No, it's okay. Here we go. Okay, fixed. It has been fixed. Okay. Okay. So, so when it comes to the general um, diagnoses, I think I agree with you that like there's a lot of toxicity that comes from men towards women Mm -hmm. in general that maybe scrub king didn't highlight as much but i don't think scrub king would disagree with you on any of these things i think what he was trying to point out was one specific scenario Mm -hmm. where it's the other way around where it might be the women that are contributing to the toxic um, society but i don't think he would say that this is the biggest problem that leads to toxic masculinity you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, I mean, I feel like at some point in the debate, you were kind of trying to pin him to this position that, like, he thinks that women are to blame for toxic masculinity. When I don't think he would take that position. Well, I was trying to get him to be more clear on it. Um, and like, I don't know. Like, uh, th- the fact of the matter is that, like, what it felt like to me, and again, like, a lot of people have come in and told me what they think it felt like for him. But what it felt like to me is that, um, my questions. Um, like every time I asked a question, he would, he was trying to figure out how to say it in the best, like, like as if he was reacting to somebody else who wasn't me. And I don't know if, I don't know if it was like, I don't know if it was my fault. Like, I don't feel like, I feel like I went out of my way to make sure that like, that he didn't feel like he was being in, 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 like inquisitioned, but like, it felt very defensive. He felt like he was trying to like preempt me. Uh, getting a dunk on him or something but i was genuinely just asking most of the time like i'm trying to figure out where his position is and there was so much defensiveness and so much like of the again the smuggling and then the ignoring and that's where i started to get pissed and i stopped caring um but yeah but yeah i think i think think he probably yeah yeah go ahead no no i was just saying i think he probably probably we probably agree on more things than we thought but he couldn't get there and we couldn't get there and i tried again the second time and it didn't happen now i'm at the subject of an incredible harassment wave so yeah damn it, okay. i wish he so, would have just done that but yeah so so i so the other thing i wanted to say is like he kept bringing up that like eventually we're gonna ha- so i think there was a miscommunication and i was listening to this earlier tonight the f- i've only heard the first part so far mm-hmm. the miscommunication was him saying that women need to compliment men more And you were taking that as this is the advice that he's giving to women, Mm -hmm. where I think that what he was trying to say is that in the end, the final position that we're going to have to get to is that women are in this when toxic masculinity is taken care of and these gender issues are taken care of, men will be getting complimented more by women. How do we get there? He was saying we need to address that societally from men and women. And I think that – Well, I feel like was I was the, trying yeah, right. to get to that. I, I feel like I was the one who was asking that question, like how do we actually figure out what needs to be done? And then he was kind of dodging and – Well, is it a dodge to say that it needs to be addressed societally? But um, it, well, whenever it is addressed, we're going to have women complimenting men more. When, when I asked him very – and again, I know you haven't watched the whole thing. You can you – can No, I watched the whole the, first oh, one. Oh, the first one. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. I misunderstood what you said. I thought you said you watched the first, the first like half. Like, no, oh, no, no, I watched the entire. Okay, first yeah, one. yeah. No, I feel like um, I was being, I was being pretty clear in like, 
in like being like, okay, yeah, you've told me what you think women need to do, but what do men need to do? And like, but I don't think he's saying yeah. women need to do this, right? Well, I do feel that's like that's what, what he was saying. saying. I mean, maybe no, not. I, but. I, my inter- my interpretation was he's saying whenever these society, whenever we address these issues on a societal level, once they're addressed, the final point will be women are complimenting men more. He's not saying that women should compliment men more in order for us to get there. Yeah. Um. I mean, okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't really interpret it that way, but I could see how it could be interpreted that way. Yeah, so I think that's a little – I think and if you were to have a third conversation with him, which I don't know if you will. <laughs> no. If you were – I think if you were to ask him, listen, do you think that a, a way to, for us to solve this is for women to start complimenting men more? Or are you just saying that these things need to be addressed on a societal level and then the solution will be that we'll get to a point when where women feel comfortable uh, complimenting men more? So that's just one little thing that I wanted to bring up to you. Yeah. And then another thing was, uh, so just a little critique that I had. So I think you're a very good debater. Thank you. Um, I, but I, I, and I'm going to give you a timestamp. I, I just like, this is one I wrote down sure. when I was listening to it. At one hour and 19 minutes, uh-huh. um, you guys were talking about calling the police and whatnot uh-huh. um, when women call the police. And you said that, you're, that, that Scrub King was assuming that women aren't able to defend themselves right uh-huh. and that's why the men get arrested more uh, i uh-huh. believe right sure. and then uh he said uh you said there's an assumption that women need to be saved and then he started to ask you if you think that men on average are more physically overbearing uh-huh. and you said it's this your mask off moment so i don't know if like i feel like you rushed to that conclusion of trying to put him in a mask off moment situation uh-huh. when really in my opinion all he was doing was trying to point out that like on average, men are more physically domin- dominant over women. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember that exact moment. I'll have to go rewatch yeah. it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I guess it was rhetorical. Uh, so, I guess it was. So, yeah, I guess so, I put it at the wrong point. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's why I think people may be coming at you so harsh. Damn, I know. Like, like the like, whole yeah, conversation, you know they're gonna fixate on one or two things and just freak out about it. But yes, okay. I, I, I could see, I could see where that particular I mean, moment. To, like, you wouldn't want to be if unfairly said, you, oh, this is your mask off moment, right? Um, I mean, I feel like he was already – at that point, he was already had already been pretty rude to me. But yeah, like um, – yeah, sure. Like okay. I, I feel like that was probably a little probably a little too spicy. Sure. Okay. Um, and then um, – so the other thing about the depression um, – or, you know, you're, you're saying that it's it's not okay to – sleep with someone who's drunk but it is okay to sleep with someone who has depression was that the point yeah yeah i mean okay. depending on the context yeah but well like, you know the, i think the point scrub king you've seen the wedding crashers no what's that oh the movie the wedding crashers oh i've uh, never seen that movie oh okay so in that movie will ferrell one of the things he does so the movie wedding crashers is they go to weddings uh-huh. and just try to pick up chicks sure. and in the wedding crashers will ferrell takes it to the next level uh-huh. and starts going to funerals to to get like grieving widows because okay. he knows that they're like in a state of uh you know grieving and they're more susceptible yeah. so like i am sure you wouldn't say that that's okay right uh no probably not i mean i don't know like uh that sounds kind of like manipulative and shitty um if you if somebody really wants to go and try and pick people up at at a funeral um i don't know there's probably some people who like could who could consensually uh say like yeah, I feel pretty bad right now. Want to fuck? Maybe it'll be successful. Maybe you should try it. I can't, I don't know. It's really hard for me to address a a, 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 a like argument I, that's I just, based off of like a, a fictional movie. Well, well, I mean, you know, I'm just saying that like people can be taken advantage of when they're in these mental states. Yeah, but right? everyone's always in some mental state. We always have emotions going on and off. Like I've been. I mean, I have a diagnosis for clinical depression. Should I never fuck again? No, of course that's not what I'm saying. Okay, but I'm that's saying just. That... I just feel like this is such a like this is. It, I don't know. To me, and and I know you you're not meaning it this way, but to me, like this equation between drinking and depression seems like a um a a like hilariously bad faith comparison. Well, I and I agree with that, yeah. and and I will agree with that. I'm not I'm not equating the two, but I, and I and I think a good defense that you could use is to yeah. say a uh, a hormonal um imbalance has a totally different effect on our mind than um yeah. you know medications like how they affect our synapses and whatnot. So sure. that's actually a, an argument that uh, you could use in okay. 
your defense. Yeah, but yeah, sure, um, sure. I just wanted to point out that, like, I think Scrub King was saying that, like, mental states can be taken advantage of. Yeah. And I don't think you would even disagree with that. No. Um, and as an addendum, I would just say, uh, apparently, uh, according to my chat, um, the Scrub King has since admitted that he has never drank in his life, uh, which would be um, really makes sense. extremely. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. And again, the fact that people think that I was the like I'm the like bad faith dumb person when he's going in making an argument that being horny is the same thing as being drunk as having never drank in his entire life. Okay, okay, people, seriously. Oh, it's yeah, yeah it's definitely there's definitely levels. Um, okay, a couple more things and then I'll let you go because I know yeah, yeah, you've been sure. on this for forever. Yeah. So you said that you someone said you look fine as fuck and that's that was like comp like um you liked it, yeah, it was or super super nice of them. Yep. No pressure. Don't nothing. you think that? Don't you think some other people might interpret some other females might interpret that in a um in a harassment kind of way like it's i think this is a uh, i don't know yeah i'm sure there's all the people can interpret things all kinds of different ways but again like it's like um it's like we, we were trying to determine like reasonable levels and this person was in their own car like was like sitting down in their own car they said it very kindly they closed the door to their car waved and that was it there was no pressure or anything else i think that's a great way to give a compliment to somebody who you think is attractive that doesn't um come across as like um coming on to you yeah there's going to be some people who will interpret literally anything um that way obviously but i think we can talk about like reasonable levels and try to, to come to some sense of that if not then you just there's no you can't have a conversation because there's always the possibility like people there are people who uh will react all kinds of ways and but i think that was a very positive interaction person didn't put any pressure on me they didn't corner me they didn't physically block me off they weren't like imposing on me asking me for anything they just gave me a compliment waved and then that was that and i felt great would you so would you say that how would you compare that to a cat call let's say or whistling like if a, someone's walking by um well because a cat call is like literally dehumanizing it's something you do to an animal you go that's not even close to the same. Sorry, like, sorry, by cat call, I didn't, I mean, like, uh, you know, like, uh, just like, call, like, like, oh, like hey, just, baby, come over. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah well, like I mean, that's very obvious. Uh, one is person, well, somebody get, just saying, I think you look good. And the other one is somebody saying, hey, baby, come on over, get over here, come, come, come hang out with me. It's, it's pressuring you. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, very, very different yeah. context. I think and, lot, and I've experienced both. I've experienced both. Yeah. So I, I do think a big problem is that initial thing I brought up, right? Like that. People aren't getting the necessary training to socialize properly, and uh, oh, agree. It's just mm -hmm. yeah, I think all of it comes down to that. I mean, I do last... agree. Like yeah. just just to, just because I want to I want to like sort of agree with you pretty wholeheartedly on that. Like I am I have massive critiques, and I've I've done an actual entire segment. Um, I did a segment with um one of my friends on here in mods. Um, you know um you know Gayfesh who come on we talked about our experience with um growing up in the same um two different uh branches of the same cult and um and like this is a big cult by the way I, yeah i, I mean it's it's that. it's still going yeah oh absolutely they're still going strong yeah um they're very very they have a incredible amount of money they're i don't know if you I, talk about it yeah i've talked about it yeah pretty extensively yeah um but yeah i talk about it all the time um i'm very open about it i've had a couple of streams that i've done um but recently i've had one discussion about it since my channel started taking off so a lot of people don't know the story anyway i grew up in a cult that was highly patriarchal very much fixated on the nuclear family and though and basically they believed really strongly in nuclear family structures and then nuclear families ultimately becoming subservient to the church so um there wasn't even really like a good church community it was very very um uh, controlled and if you if you stepped out of line you would be you know kicked out or left left you know you would not be uh you would be shunned functionally not, even though they didn't actually call it that you would just be like all of a sudden people would stop interacting with you you'd suddenly be lonely and i agree that like uh, i have huge critiques of like the american family structure of like the american obsession with nuclear families i think it's horrible i think it leads to a um a type of society where if you lose the dice roll um if you lose the um, the dice roll and you happen to get an abusive parent, you don't get to have like an extended family that might be able to come in and help you. Exactly. And ex yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like well, I no can't one even can critique your no one can critique your parents' parenting. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, I can't even imagine what my life would have been like if like I had lived in like a um like if all of my family lived in the same town and we spent a lot of time together. People probably would have seen the way that like um I mean 
explicitly my dad particularly my dad was able to get away with so much shit because so much of it happened out of the public eye where other family members weren't able to talk about it or were too scared to come forward and he did that by like keeping everybody separate to a certain degree um anyway i 100 percent agree with you on that i just wanted to voice my support that i uh not to be like one of those lefties who sounds like abolish the nuclear family but i think nuclear family structures are basically designed to put power in the hands of the family patriarch which is very bad sometimes because if you happen to roll the dice and get a bad family patriarch you are going to be chained to that person and they will be able to completely destroy your life if they want to so yeah or even or even just it doesn't even have to be like that complicated it could just be both parents are working yeah, yeah. so hard that you're, they're not there to, to tell you hey like don't be an asshole or hey like be nice to people or say hello when you go to someone's house or you know have manners and stuff yeah, yeah. little things like that which are very important um listen i'm gonna let you go before okay. i go though i wanted to let you know that you know i'm a big fan of destinies sure and i know that you are not a big fan of destinies uh right now in particular <laughs> if you are open to it i would love to um moderate a conversation with you guys because i think that maybe i can bridge the gap um and i will offer that if you're interested in it yeah you, maybe give me want. give me a give me some time to think on that um, yeah, anytime if you anytime you want that's a big ask yeah that's a big yeah. ask for me especially given the current the current um storm that destiny has whipped up labeling me as harmful to the thing i care about most in my life um yeah so right now maybe if destiny decides to stop trying to act actually cancel me and harm my career and also if destiny decides to apologize for those things maybe we'll talk but for now well wait, before wait you yeah. said before he apologizes aren't you interested in knowing his position um like if he thinks that you're think... harmful, if he thinks you're harmful to the trans community, aren't you? Don't you want to discuss that? I guess um, and defend yourself. Do I don't know. Like, do you think that I don't know? I, personally, I don't really believe in giving a, a fuckload of credibility to somebody who just uh, I gave them the opportunity to have a conversation last night. They had me on their show. I went on. They screamed at me for eight minutes, and then um and then told everyone that i'm a harm to women and a harm to trans people that is a harm like they're actively currently like he is actively currently doing harm to me by labeling me that way to his audience i don't really think he's rational so i don't really feel like i should give right him now or overall oh um with regard to how he engages with me overall i don't even so know I... I don't know if he's rational i don't know what's up with him right now like honestly it feels like he's like i don't know really fucking pissed or something i don't know but i i just don't really feel like i owe him um anything at this point oh you don't yeah, sure. yeah. and yeah. i i really especially yeah. given that literally currently as we're speaking right now the posts that um the posts that destiny um has helped make possible um and his community is currently fostering and currently upvoting are actually threatening to my career and my future yeah, no, no, no. I think maybe um, maybe if Destiny cools his head and comes and decides to um, think about what he said a little bit and how absolutely unhinged and unreasonable it is, um, I don't care if he thinks like I'm a um, like a stupid dumb fuck or that's whatever, but what, what he's labeled me is so far across the line, it's actually wild. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. He's, he's super, well. super – this is the thing, I, and I said this originally after my first conversation with him. I believe very strongly that D Destiny is incredibly – um, incredibly combative and abrasive and rude and all also goes across the line all the time um, going so far as to like not even put people's names up so that they can have like a little bit of cred for being on his show and providing content for him he doesn't even give the basic human respect to other people um, and uh, and then there are like a fuckload of his um, fans and personal friends who will defend his actions I think it is a borderline like I don't know I don't want to go too spicy. Uh, I would love to I would love to, to have to moderate a conversation with you. I feel like I feel like a lot of it comes it will come down to misunderstanding and just I don't think so. I, don't I think Destiny is a I think you're both pretty I think you're both pretty rational people. Oh like, sure. I mean, he might be rational on some things, but I think that Destiny when he gets mad about something or if he has an emotion like if he has an emotional reaction to something, I think he becomes completely irrational and is unironically one of the most abusive people um I have ever witnessed in the, in the online spaces. I'm not kidding you. The way that he's interacted with other creators I know, the way that he's interacted with my personal friends, the way that he's interacted with me 
I think that he's a serially abusive person in these spaces. And, uh, you know, I don't blame I don't blame nearly every person who he's ever interacted with his entire life from distancing themselves from them from him over time, because I can't imagine what it's like to try and upkeep a relationship with someone who goes that fucking balls to the wall all the time. Despite the fact that he makes a career on like doing dunks and stuff, if you dare dunk on him, he'll go so far as to label you as a threat to the community you care the most about. Nah, I'm sorry. I think people are so fucking charitable to Destiny, it actually is concerning. But yeah, maybe someday I'll, I'll maybe maybe someday you know he'll get his um you know his his army of people to massage his fifis back into order, and then he can have a rational conversation. But I don't know. Right now, I'm really not interested in it. I'm not even interested in like I don't even I can't even believe that people are asking me to do that. I mean, not that I'm really mad at you or anything. It's just like I – it's galling to me that it's like a guy is actively currently punching me in the face. And it's like, well, don't you want to understand why he's punching in the face? And I'm just like, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be great. I would like him for him to stop punching me in the face first. But yeah, sure. Hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's fair. Um, I guess – yeah, I think I brought up all the points I wanted to bring up. Uh, I think the biggest issue was just like that you tried to rip the Scrub King's mask off when I don't think uh, – I think maybe it was too early. And uh, I'm not convinced asked. about that. I feel like my instincts were pretty accurate. But, yeah, maybe people – maybe okay. maybe I maybe – I, uh, maybe the optics were bad of me trying too early, but I think I'm 100% right. The dude fucking wrote a manifesto on me, has been tweeting about me all day. What, is now what are, when you say manifesto, what do you mean? Oh, it's fucking. He literally. It's called the Demon Mama Manifesto. That's fucking weird. Like, DGG and just. Post? Yeah, it's a it's Reddit post. Reddit. I haven't even read it yet. He called it a manifesto. You want to know what the last manifesto that was? It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny that like the term manifesto is like strongly associated with um, I don't know. Listen, I'm negative just negative shit. Not just negative shit. Like um, but like. Elliot Roger had a manifesto, the Unabomber had a manifesto, and they called it that? Like, what the fuck? Like, I know what a manifesto is, like, a thing, but holy shit, that's fucking weird. I'm sorry. Especially when it's sharing space with another post on DGG, largely upvoted by DGG -er, DGGers and Discrub King fans, um, that is say that is called How Do We Deal With The Demon Mama Question, a direct reference to the Holocaust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fucked. That. But do you realize how fucked that is? Do you realize how fucked that is? But I 100% agree. That's super fucked up. And then when I went into Destiny's uh, Discord once, I was like, hey, because I watch his, his content on YouTube only. I don't have time to fucking watch eight-hour streams and shit. So I watch his videos on YouTube, but one time I went into the Discord to, like, say, hey, like, I want to talk to Destiny. Is there any – what do you guys – like, I don't know. I said something. And right away people were like, what do you think of incest, right? And I know the yeah. incest memes. So I, I, I know, okay? Yeah, but to yeah. a lot of the other people who don't know, they're going into this community right away and they're getting yeah. fucking – these weird questions asked to them so they're like they're probably thinking what the hell is wrong with this community this is so weird well they're i mean the destiny uh, and, and communities... i don't know what do you yes. what do you think to what how do you how do you control like a when your community's that big um all these little interactions i guess what do you think? i never i would never ask for him to control every single action but i just i i the level of coddling that destiny gets this man is incredibly rich he has a full mod team he has a legal team and you think that he can't keep this under control also just so you know a day and a half ago, I sent an after getting heckled by multiple people. Like, Yo, you're you're full of shit. You're just lying and making it all up. If if you didn't, you'd post receipts. And I was like, I'm not posting them publicly because that's that could be damaging to those individuals. But I would like, but but if there's a mod that anybody can give me, then I would love to communicate with them. And I did. I sent a whole bunch of them, including a link to the post that was called the Demon Mama question. Hasn't been touched. They don't fucking care. That's the reality. At the end of the day, Destiny and DGG don't fucking care. And like I said earlier in the conversation I had earlier, I don't know if you saw it, but people asked me if I thought I could do a better job um, if, if the roles were reversed. Absolutely. And in fact, there's a whole bunch of other communities that are exactly as big and bigger than Destiny that do a way better job. Destiny's just piss poor at it, and everybody defends him anyway. He's just bad at managing a community. His community is easily the most toxic one I've ever encountered on the web, without question. Have you so, can how what other bigger communities have you encountered? Um, just out of curiosity. Wait, you mean like like within streaming? I mean, of course, I'm referring primarily to streaming here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. I have engaged with. Uh, let's just, see. Because I, yeah. I don't know. I feel yeah. like it's once your numbers get that big, like you're gonna get some. Uh, I think that's a, I think that's a cop out. Um, yeah. I I think you're gonna I think you'll get some. I mean, I even said that to Destiny's face. I'm like, I don't expect every 
every single interaction to be perfect, but I've been directly raided by the serfs on multiple occasions who aren't nearly as big, but are still considerably larger than me, never had any issues. I've been raided by Vosh, whose community is as big as Destiny, never had any issues like this, not even once. I've never, I've been, uh, I've engaged with, uh, not directly, but like Hassan's community gets engaged and stuff all the time. They don't fucking do that shit. I'm sorry. There's, there is no community as toxic in the streaming world as DGG that I can even think of. Besides, maybe if you want to go to America first, but they're on D Live, and that's kind of like the, like the mutant prison where we lock all the Nazis in. So yeah, maybe if we want to go that far, probably they are pretty bad. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. Like it's really, really, really bad, and people just don't say it because, like, well, guess what happens when you do? And so have you, I want like this is one thing I wanted to mm -hmm. ask Destiny and I forgot I, I, I chatted with him once and I, I wanted to ask him like hey what do you think about your Discord acting this way when because he just had a disagreement with Jack AM mm -hmm. I think yeah. right I don't know if you listened to that I did that was and, very very interesting yeah and right away Jack AM was like as soon as I went into your Discord people were asking me weird questions like what I thought about incest and stuff and like I don't like yeah I don't know fucking, but it's not that's, just that's that right not a like, good look. Yeah, it's not it isn't a good look. It's really fucking weird. Okay, so this connects to a couple different things. I've talked on this a little bit today already. Um but like um I had I did a video that I believe was in very very good faith that was called uh the Destiny versus DSA Drama Mama Investigation. And my Drama Mama inve Investigations, I take a drama, I try to get to the bottom of it as as um healthily and as like, you know, you know, even-handed as like, yeah, it. you know, I try to get everything. I get all the receipts and everything. And in that one, one of the things I talked about um, was like, hey, like, um, I'm I'm perfectly fine with people being edgy online. You know, I love Vosh. I've watched a lot of Destiny's content in the past. You know, I, I'm perfectly fine with that sort of thing. But you have to recognize that once you enter the field of politics, um, and when you go beyond like the politics space, um, like, if if you had like a like a discussion like a discussion about incest or 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 necrophilia or something. And, and like a Republican oppo research team that's paid to just go find dirt on people found that, you could be a complete liability. And therefore, political groups might have to distance themselves from you. And that's not a personal slight. You know what I mean? And likewise, I don't think he disagreed with that, though. Yeah, but I, I mean, but I, like, but it goes yeah. beyond that. It's not just in. It's not just only political groups. Like that applies to other streamers as well. Like, and and keep in mind, it isn't just like incest jokes. That would be bad enough. That's already a bad enough look of like how like weird and and awkward and uncomfortable and unhinged like his community can be. But again, front page. Uh, how do we deal with the demon mama question? All right. Okay. I see how this is like, that's yeah, really yeah. problematic. That would never exist in my community. I don't know of any other person who would allow that sort of thing to exist except for destiny, but sure. Oh, and, oh, and America first. Yeah. So, yeah. Sure. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not as well versed on discord communities as my own is the only like first one I joined when I started streaming, but, uh, I don't really know what the, the Discord etiquette is uh, in most communities. Well, I mean, yeah, we don't. I'm, I'm telling you now, we don't have fucking yeah. people get bombarded with incest questions when they come to my Discord. My Discord is a very cozy. It's like a, I know, I know, it's like a meme, right? Like, you know, it's a meme. Yeah. Same, but, same uh, way that, same way as JQing is a meme on on poll as well, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's a weird one. Anyways, um, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, thank you nice for coming on. I really appreciate your incredibly good faith uh, critiques and, and approach to the conversation. Listen, um, I'm always good faith. I, 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 I even if we it. have disagreements, I, I think I'll try to always at least represent your position in the fairest way I can. Yeah, I appreciate uh, that. And I yeah. uh, you know, appreciate you coming by and, and uh, hope to talk to you again in the future. Thanks for, for coming by. Can I? Can I just give a quick uh, plug before yeah, I Yeah, absolutely. Please do. Yeah. Sure, yeah. So I saw somebody commenting on my beard. If you guys come check me out on my on my uh, stream, I actually have a beard cam. So a whole a whole cam dedicated to my beard. Yo. Um, and I stream I stream Monday to Friday, uh 5:30 a.m. to 8 a.m. Eastern. We do a quick morning show before I have to go and uh, do my research uh, for my PhD. So come check me out. We have a good time. We laugh. And uh, it's always a good time. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, go go give Dr. Rahim Dowd a, a follow. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you so much. Ch uh, good luck with the drama. Happy New Year. Take care. Brush your hair. Don't forget to sit in the chair. Bye, everyone. Bye. Ah, oh, that was nice. All right, let's see. Uh, did we have another person who wants? Oh, boy. Hello. Oh, oh, hello, hello. Hi, how's it going? Decent. Oh, all right. Um, hold on. Let me just read this. Um, don't know.
Well, actually, it's not going to read because it has a swear in it. Um, as uh, Here. <clears throat> Hold on. Cover your ears. Cover your ears for a second. I'm going to say a slur. Um, as a fag, this guy is beyond trash. What the fuck? I remember feeling nothing but despair after Orlando. I got a tattoo because it hit me hard. True! I am also incredibly gay and fuck Pogo. Okay? There we go. So there we go. All right? Sorry. Uh, you can uncover your ears now. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Good to be on the show. Yeah. Um. Yeah, what's what? Uh, let me see. You, you okay with being Torminator One? And what's uh, what are your pronouns, by the way? He, him. He, him. Okay. All right. Sick. Uh. What do you what What do you What do you got to hit me with? I'm primarily on about the whole scrub argument. Oh. Okay. I feel that scrub came in a little unfairly, I would say, Fair due enough. to the fact that he engaged with. The whole t started the discussion of the whole topic with that garbage Twitter meme, true, which did not yep. give a sufficiently nuanced view of his thoughts on the issue as a whole. Okay, when he started to engage initially with you uh -huh. in the debate format on his Twitch channel, etc. Yeah, yeah, he was came off as somewhat smarmy at times, but at the same time, I can't help but feel you somewhat ex exacerbated that with the lack of charitability you've had towards some of the arguments that he was making maybe yeah i mean i think that's probably fine i did i've, I've admitted this like literally said it in the debate that like i got kind of tired of dealing with him um when he started doing the thing where he was like ignoring me to chat to his chat and then you know like asked me a solid question and then um acted very confused after i had just explained it to him but he just didn't even care to listen so that did um, that did definitely irritate me a lot, and it, it lowered my um, willingness to be charitable. Like in my opinion, like all people get some level of charitability, but you can lose that charitability if you be a dick. And I think he was being a dick. But yeah, that's fair. Yeah. You know. What behavior did you perceive was in bad faith on his part? Oh, I mean, I think a couple of parts were um, like I don't know, like. I don't know how it depends on how you mean by bad faith. Like, I think the second conversation was completely in bad faith. I think he was just emulating destiny and didn't have any actual intention of having a meaningful conversation with me. Just wanted to get clout and dunks out of it. Um, and OK, um, but the first conversation, I feel like he engaged in relatively good faith um, most of the time. But I just think he got really rude and disrespectful as time went on, especially in the around the like, I would say, like, I think it was around the 40 minute mark or so when he um when there were two times where he asked me a question and i tried to explain that and then i immediately heard this i immediately heard and i explained the thing and then so i don't know if you could hear those that keyboard typing in the background but i heard a whole bunch of typing and i saw his chat go i saw him talking in his chat while i was explaining the thing i said dude like um uh, and then he came back and then he did it again shortly after I was like, okay Like this is the second time that you've just straight up ignored me talking to you and I feel like that's like not only is that like Actually super rude, but it's also like super 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 bad um, like stream professionality and um, Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's dickish like I feel like it's perfectly fine I feel like somebody was doing that kind of shit and also then he started doing all this smuggling and trying to go for um dunks like smuggling being um, when somebody says something, you go, <laughs> that is like smuggling. I consider that to be very rude. If somebody did that to me IRL, I would be that would be offensive. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I can see how that would come across as offensive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. My other issue with the whole boondongle that it currently turned into it is, is that Scrub feels like he's being portrayed as an incel as a whole. Mm -hmm. That's his he's, fault. He's the one who wrote in manifesto about me because I disagreed with him. He's the one who ran and told Daddy Destiny, who then immediately b barreled down my throat and accused me of being a harm to all women and trans people, to, to all social justice causes that I could ever touch. Um, yeah, he, he, dug, he made his bed, and now he's lying in it. If people conclude after all of that engagement that he's, like, like incelish, I don't blame them. I don't blame no. anybody for coming away with that. That's ridiculous. I can I can understand why you feel that people would come away with that impression. But going back to the whole thing, Scrub's very long manifesto, I've unfortunately or fortunately read it. I don't think he tried to speak for the trans community in that manifesto. I would argue that he approached it from you are, as in you, as in Demon yeah, Mala, yeah, yeah, yeah. is detracting from 
women's rights. He never sure. seemed to touch on the yeah. subject of I mean, he trans rights. He, he may not have done that in his own little thing, but Destiny said it, and also a fuckload of people in the comments are saying it, and they're not getting pushed back on it at all whatsoever. So even if he didn't, even if he didn't personally write that into his manifesto, the effect is nonetheless the same, and he's implicitly signing off on Destiny's messaging about this. So yeah, don't I'm, I don't really feel like I need to be like super super granular with my like charitability with him when he's engaged in all of this and is taking gleefully taking part, celebrating how much attention he's getting as a result of this. I mean, he has definitely gotten a massive spike in attention from this. Yeah. Check his Twitch analytics. Oh yeah, absolutely. There... Do you think? Uh, do you think he's gonna? Do you think that's gonna last, or do you think that this is just a little thing of like a uh, virtue signaling where they're gonna follow him and nobody will ever actually watch his content because this is just ultimately dancing for the DGG crowd? I think the bump will last him for the rest of this month. I'd guess. Yeah. Damn. With limited knowledge. Yeah. But you want to want to know what's as funny, a whole, though? my bump. What? My bump is never going away. It's funny. Fair enough. I, I know this because it's already happened once. My Destiny bump never went away. Destiny bumped huh. me above 120 um, viewers, and I never went back below it. Now I pull. Now I'm pulling fucking 200 people just on a normal ass stream. I don't know. We'll see. I think that if you engage in good faith and you make actual original content and have meaningful conversations with people like I do, um, that it actually builds a following of people who actually care about your content as opposed to just trying to, you know, uh, brigade in and ride the latest, uh, like, little, I don't know, chew toy that the, that's been tossed in front of them. But, yeah. No. I can see why you'd be, want to be less granular in your analysis of Scrub's response to this drama. However, Know Nothing also raised a pretty salient point on Twitter where Scrub posts manifestos on the Destiny subreddit about things all the time. Okay. This isn't a Scrub has it out for women and his incel tendencies are coming out or something. This is just something that he does. Um, can I would... you imagine? Okay, let me give you a. a um, I recognize that, and I don't really care. Um, no offense, that's not that's not me being mad at you. I just don't really think No Nothing's argument is particularly compelling. Can you imagine if um, like there was some like irrelevant Andy, um, just random person who posted like a, a crosshair on like a random photo of somebody, um, like a crosshair on somebody's head. On they they posted that photo to like a subreddit, and like they did it a whole bunch of times, and then one time. They like had an, they like were um, I don't know they went to like a like a presidential rally and they screamed at the president and the next day they posted a crosshair um, on the president's head and posted it to a Reddit and how even if they had done that many times before that could be interpreted in, in different uh, in a different uh, light. Yes, yeah, so I see the yeah. analogy you're going for with yeah. the crosshairs, but yeah. that's not a one for one representation. It's not the it's symbol of a crosshair is inherently a threat towards someone. Yeah. It's I'm planning to kill you, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know However, who do you know who are some like like um not notable people? Um I mean we all know Karl Marx, but that was quite a long time ago. Do you know who like most people who write manifestos these days? Neo Nazis, I'd assume. Uh or no mass uh, shooters. Mass shooters, yeah. So it is kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. It makes me feel very weird. Now, I do recognize that back in the 1800s, the term manifesto was used in a political term. But um, the last, like, m m you know, notable, if you search manifesto right now, you're going to end up with the New Zealand shooter. You're going to end up with the Tree of Life shooter. You're going to end up with Elliot Roger. You're going to end up with, like, the Unabomber, Timothy McVeigh. I don't know. Like, I I'm, it's not like I think he's going to actually kill me. I just think it's really fucking really, like, stupid unbelievably unfathomably stupid optics and it's the exact opposite thing than what i would do if i didn't if, if if i wanted people to not think i was an incel i would do anything except for the thing that he did which is publish a manifesto about a woman who he disagreed with online and then his daddy came in and, and like openly and publicly like straight up just shit on and then accused me of being a harm to everything i care about so that's whoops. fair i'm i'm not arguing that the whole manifesto thing helped the optics of him yeah, scrub sure. coming off like yeah, yeah, an insult. Yeah, for sure. Definitely made him come off like some type of school shooter. Yeah, yeah, it does. The yeah, agree. Thing is, though, that I was getting onto is the manifesto, I would argue, is not – it's not a direct threat of violence, and I feel mm. like you're trying to force that one to fit. Oh no no well, no! Scrub. For the record, I'll just I can t I can I can say this flat out, and I don't think he's threatening violence against me. I don't think he's threatening violence at all. Um, in fact, and there, okay. like you can take that one, and you, this can be the clip. I don't ever think that. I just was trying to give a a a parallel that's clear. Like you know what I mean? Um, I okay. do think, however, 
um, it, while it isn't threatening violence, it is absolutely cancel culture. He advocates for people to not engage with me. He's advocating, he's telling people, a community that is very serious about politics, that I am harmful to not only their politics, but to the communities that I and many people in both of our audiences care about. He's, this is absolutely a perfect, like, case in point example of cancel culture. And so I would, I, I find it funny that all of Destiny's fans are eating it up so much. I guess they've just, I guess they have uh, just changed in the way that they actually look at cancel culture. But yeah, I don't think he's doing violence against me. I just think he wants to end my career because he's sad and his fifis are hurt. Definitely can see where you'd get that his fifis are hurt from. For sure. However, I'd also like to point out that, mm -hmm. hmm, sorry, apologies, I'm blanking on this point no, for no, a minute. you're perfectly fine. Um, take your time. This is my last thing, just okay. because you're obviously tired and you've been streaming for a while. <laughs> Listen, if you have more, you can you can tell me more. I'm enjoying this conversation. This has been a pleasant conversation. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it pleasant and focused. You're doing but a anyway, good job. You're doing a great job. The framing of the whole is Scrub and Incel thing is dubious, because at one point in the VOD, Scrub claimed that you his chat was being raided by your viewers and they were calling him an incel, and you waved it off as essentially jokes i'm not saying calling someone an incel is equivalent to calling them a slur or mm -hmm. some sort of serious death lethal offense against you as a person sure. but it isn't conducive to the overall discourse and the conversation that you were attempting to have yeah. you never did directly call him an incel in the mm -hmm. first debate i've noticed that however from the framing that you used as well as the title of the video i'm probably the fifth person to harp on that today but the title of the video all of that le leads the viewer to make some very uncharitable conclusions oh, about yeah. Scrub. Um, sure. I mean, um, yeah. No, I have no problem with that. I, I do that. I, I, my video titles are meant to be interesting and to get people to click on them. Of course, just like anybody else. Destiny does this too. I didn't claim anything about Scrub. It was certainly inflammatory. But I mean, again, the context of this is that um, that post, I posted that video up after the fucking blowout has happened. So, yeah, I don't really, um, I feel like the, like they have been, like, I've been, um, a little, like, uh, like, I've been a little bit, um, what's the word? I've been bantering with them, you know, a little bit of, like, back and forth, like, ha, hey, fuck you, dude. Um, and they and have responded to, like, like, just fucking spicy banter, um, to, with, by saying that I am a, a harm, like, again, like, I, I've gone over it many, many times. There is no, equivalency in the way that i've in and engaged with them to the way that they've engaged with me and it just uh like i mean hell like i can even think i remember when vosh and destiny had their first like debate this was before like the drama got really bad when vosh and destiny had their big debate both destiny and vosh posted the most unflattering image you could possibly imagine of each other on one another's thumbnails and were like making fun of each other in the title of those videos it's a totally normal thing to do when you debate somebody to make like a little spicy jab at them but we're talking spicy jabs of just like hey fuck you dude haha you're like you know what what do you want like a like a government mandated compliment every week like little jabs versus um them going to the point of saying like oh demon mama should be deplatformed nobody should engage with her etc cetera, etc cetera. this is just clearly and very obviously um completely different um levels of engagement and um, i'm hearing some reports that it has got only gotten worse since uh, today so we'll see yeah but yeah I do sense? feel like, yeah, I understand your point with YouTubers using inflammatory title because yeah. you need to drive views. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like I go that living. hard. I mean, I go way harder on right wingers. Have you ever seen the titles I do for fucking right wingers? Like Jesus, here, let me just read you some of my titles here. These are, these are funny. You might might get a laugh out of them. Right, let me bring it up. Let me just uh, here. If you have another point, like uh, you can you can bring that up while I try to find some of these funny titles and and like. Of course. Uh -huh. Well, the. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just, it's late in my oh. time zone and I'm just blanking. You're but good. Like, the uh, whole government mandated GFs thing, I feel, yeah. now that you've helped provide context, was slightly exaggerated on his part. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, I mean, I literally said to... it was a joke in the conversation. I was like, dude, 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 it's a joke. It's okay. Like, I was just kidding. And then, like, uh, yeah. I mean, I literally, it's in the VOD of me. He started getting mad about it. I'm like, I'm just kidding, dude. I was just kidding. I was just making it like an actual joke. And I said, I said it explicitly. I'm not actually saying you advocated for that. But since then, he said I did, even though it's literally in the VOD of me saying that was just a joke, my dude. 
So I just really I feel like that was one of the most uncharitable things that started this whole thing was him just straight Definitely. up lying about what I actually said in the VOD. And it's amazing because I know that thousands of people watch Destiny, watch the VOD, and then proceeded to repeat a narrative that is patently and obviously and demonstrably false. It's like a, it's like a this is like an experiment in groupthink, in my opinion. I will admit that larger Twitch streamers always tend to have a almost like an absolute tier field of groupthink about them, and they just their fans just seem to swarm almost mindlessly at times. Wait, did you say absolute terror field? I mean, I thought of I was thinking of a area of effect, and then I went with AT field. No, that's and... awesome. I'm sorry, that was the coolest as fuck analogy. I love Evangelion. That was awesome. Okay, I love that. All right, that was based. I'm sorry. Thank you. That made me smile. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So then we have Scrub talking about the discussion of the benefits of patriarchy for women. Mm -hmm. Would you th say that patriarchy has some benefits for women? Not that it helps more than it hurts, but does it benefit women in um, some minor ways? Uh, I think it benefits um, some women in some minor ways. And and actually, it benefits some women in, in like a lot of ways. Um, like, for example, I would argue that, like, um, uh, like a trophy wife, for example, uh, somebody who's perfectly capable of, like, and okay with living that life, somebody who's comfortable being a trophy wife probably has an incredibly comfortable life under patriarchy. You know what I mean? They're fine with being Definitely. subservient. Um, they might even like being subservient because some women do like that. Like, they might, like have like a do like a dominance thing and their husband is super domineering and they love it. There are definitely women who benefit from it. But the problem is is that the way that patriarchy is is that it makes that a norm. You can't exist any other way. And so women who aren't like that get punished. So that woman herself might have a perfectly fine life, but there's tons and tons and tons and tons of other women who have to um, suffer at the hands of that. Likewise, I think patriarchy um, benefits men as a class, but most men don't really like um most men aren't really happy under patriarchy and they do benefit in some ways like for example um basically all men um are going to benefit from the fact that like men are taken more seriously in fields of work which is hugely important the fact that men by default just by being a man regardless of your skin color or any other factor that you're going to be mo in most cases taken more seriously um uh, in in a job means that you'll have an easier time getting a job which means you'll have an easier time being financially independent these are like this is kind of like talking about um like white privilege like you know what i mean i bet i don't like i don't feel like i'm like the soup like some inheritor of the white race like in fact i feel like my benef benefits are very low from that because i don't really i think that white supremacy is a ridiculous thing but nonetheless i don't have the police follow me when i don't have police or security follow me when i go into a store that is a benefit my life is easier as a result of that. And I don't have any problem acknowledging this. You know what I mean? So, yes, uh, long. it's kind of a long-winded answer. But, yes, I think that there are all kinds of people who benefit. I just think the structures are very bad, and they could be benefiting considerably more people in considerably more effective ways, if that makes sense. Definitely see that. Hmm. Did you? Would you say that some women have some role in reinforcing the patriarchy? 100%. Absolutely. Hmm. Of course they do. Um, in fact, I, I again, I was more than willing to engage in this. It didn't happen in the Describe King, but in the, I don't know if you saw some of the other conversations I had today. We've talked about this extensively. For example, um, my, my go-to example of this is always uh, one that everybody knows about right now, Abby Shapiro. Abby Shapiro's entire channel is dedicated to upholding patriarchy, 100%. Her whole channel is all about be modest. You should respect and submit to your husband. Her entire channel is in service of patriarchy. And it's kind of sad to see. Maybe she is very happy under that, that sort of structure. But that is a, she's a woman who is deliberately going out of her way to uphold a structure that I think she doesn't really – I mean maybe she personally benefits from it. But her, her uh, other women definitely are harmed by it. Do you see how that makes sense? Yes. Yeah. I can definitely see how – Women can see, be seen to uphold the patriarchy, and somewhat some women benefit from patriar patriarchal systems as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's 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 you know there's quite a few. Obviously, like we can get like, I feel like this is a huge conversation. We can have all kinds of talks about like um what types of, like God, I mean fuck, I'm I'm just trying to think of so many things, but like I don't know, like I think of people um God, I know people in my life who like technically have some benefits of patriarchy, but also like some of the worst parts of their life are a result of patriarchy. For example, like think about like 
like um like just slightly like tomboyish or like um you know rough and tumble like women who like like say like a woman who um would do really really good in the military but like the military culture is so patriarchal that going into the military um actually like ruins their life like and this is actually something that happens like i know people who um like i don't know if you know this but the sexual assault rates in the military for women are like like galling like it would make you it almost makes you want to throw up yeah i've seen the rapes yeah they're horrific so like there are a lot of women who would love to work with like heavy machinery and they might even be like like kind of femme sometimes they might like to go get their nails done and stuff like that but they might really like to work with like that machinery and like and like fuck around and like joke with guys and, and and other girls and stuff like that and have that tough personality and they can't or or they have to pay a great cost in order to engage in that so even though they might benefit a little bit from patriarchy in that like hey like um you know there's this macho culture that exists the downsides are just massive you know what i mean so yeah it's one of those things no yeah i'd like to just quickly acknowledge something i saw in your chat oh, oh catherine oh said i was going through the points on the manifesto i'm not i'm just trying to touch on them indirectly while engaging in good faith just so i can see what you think about it versus what scrub thinks he got out of the discussion sure yeah yeah it's fine i mean i don't mind if you want to go through them like again i'm very much i'm <laughs> I've enjoyed I've enjoyed every single well except for that one person at the very beginning that really fucking angry person who I talked to I don't even remember their name synth or something um, that person was really unpleasant but every other conversation I've had today has been more pleasant than any of the conversations I've had ab about the originally in the original conversation holy shit yeah this has been very pleasant to talk with you and also I feel like we've made some good interesting talking interesting stuff to talk about yeah yeah hopefully so anyway I really don't have much more to bring up except one final point. All right. Scrub's core argument, it was a little bit incoherent, but okay. to me it seemed like he was pointing out that when he got off, essentially stopped trying to defend the edgy position he laid out with the meme he posted mm -hmm. on Twitter, yeah. he seemed to move on or evolve his awareness mm -hmm. to make an argument about the fact that men should do the work to make a space that is safe for women to so women can feel that they can compliment men without feeling like men will come on to them for yeah or romantically hit on or hit on them because they're being complimented sure so would you argue that who's doing the labor in that case um i mean well a lot of people right but like um it depends like right because like Sorry, I, I want to make sure I'm answering this accurately, but I'm, I'm just a little confused. When you say that, like, like if if men fo if men are like m taking like deliberate action to f to make spaces safer for women, that would be that would be men doing the labor in that case, which is great. Yeah, yeah, that would definitely be a good thing. Yeah, and I, I feel I, here's the though... thing. I actually think that here's here's the hot take. The thing again, another thing I never got to talk about. I think that if men started to do that, and in fact, I have a couple of of examples of this that they would see. The, the, the immediate results fantastic example of this is communities like um like for example um like uh, prime kai's uh i i use prime all the time because i really think highly of prime and, and a lot of the ways that he runs his show um prime kai's made a has made two things that i think are really cool he made an all black panel where it's just black people talking about black issues fucking awesome and then he's also made the amazon lily femme presenting um panel uh like like Prime took the uh, the initiative to make a space where women could talk about their issues, and he's been greatly rewarded by having the trust of a lot of those women and also having a fuck ton of really passionate female creators and femme presenting creators approach him and want to be a part of his community. That's awesome, and it came like that. That's how fast it can change, but it does require, like— and this is why I think it's important, like, I've been so, like, willing to talk about this to an extent. I do think it requires challenging some of the preconceptions about the currently existing structures. Like, none of us have control over the fact that for the last, like, I don't know, like, six, what, what, what let's see, what, like, like, 6,000 years of, like, history uh, since, like, I don't even know, fucking Greece or per maybe even before that, women have been, like, very, very, very repressed in a lot of the world. Um, like we can't help that none of us like we all inherited that it's just we have to recognize that like there are people who because of that system are the beneficiaries of uh, whether they want to be the beneficiaries or not of, of some level of privilege 
and they should leverage that to fix the problem because it makes the world better for all of us. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I feel like this has been a productive conversation. I've gotten some clarification of your viewpoints, yeah, and I feel like I've hopefully been productive for you as well. Oh, one hundred percent. Terminator, this has been an 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 exceedingly pleasant conversation. Um, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, thank you for coming on in front of all my audience and, uh, and, and voicing your questions and critiques, uh, in such good faith. Thank you so very much. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and did you want to like, did you have any promo or anything like that? Do you have anything to drop or do you want to, mm. you want to say anything? I have the a chat? Twitch channel, the Tormator one. I'm planning to be more active and to do more in the political sphere. So Twitch.tv. But... Yeah. Twitch.tv forward slash Torminator1. There you go. There you go. All right. Listen, you may not have gotten a whole lot of stuff on there, but, you know, hopefully we'll talk again in the future. That was a very pleasant conversation. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. What a great conversation. Hey, that was so wonderful. That was so nice.